year, his journey came full circle as a coach on The Voice, even taking home the trophy. Niles' highly anticipated third album, The Show, is out today, and he'll be heading out on a global tour. But first, he's kicking off the new release this morning, right here on our plaza. And here he is with the single that earned him the biggest streaming day yet. Give it up for Niall Horan! Strange how it falls around you You flow across the room Your touch is made of something Heaven can hold a candle to You're made of something new Let's not get complicated Let's just enjoy the view It's hard to be a human So much to put an answer to but that's just what we do star and a lot more music. But first, this is Today on NBC.
with the global sensation himself, singer, songwriter, Niall Horan, who just released his third album today. What are you giggling about? Carson, when it's Where's a Where's this global sensation? Oh, you were looking around <laughs> for Niall. Well, this is daily. Well, this is the big day, Niall. This is the day of the release. How are you feeling on this day, putting this out into the universe? Uh, I couldn't be more excited. I haven't released music in a few years. And I worked so hard on this record over the last couple. So it's, it's just good to be back making music, being out, seeing the crowds. Just it's, it's a big day. It's a big day. Well, the first thing before I get to my question, I want to acknowledge your band. John, Emily, Jake, Louis, Alex, and Danny. Yeah. Thank you so much for, for getting up this morning. We yeah. appreciate it. Um, I mean, when the second record came out and the pandemic hit, you were here and you had you couldn't even promote it, mm -hmm. and you went back home. I think the show was the first track you wrote for this record, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, what did you discover lyrically? Because this record sounds so much more mature and so much you have so much more to say, mm -hmm. as you say, looking left and looking right than you ever have. Yeah, I think I think being at home during the during the pandemic and stuff, it was the only time really in since I've known you guys <laughs> that I've been able to like sit still and like do nothing for a while so I thought that was like very thought provoking and like made me had a like a bigger outlook on yeah. things that I didn't think about before because in my early 20s I did this much thinking <laughs> <laughs> as you should and, uh, and as it's gone on I've just thought about things a little bit more it comes with maturity as you know Carson I'm very mature you are very mature and I know this because you spent a lot of time uh, we spent time together on The Voice you won your first time being on The Voice congratulations and, and if you have for you from, from your father figure on The Voice, your friend Blake Shelton wanted to send you a little tape. Take oh, a no. look. Oh. Hey, now, it's your old uh, hero, Blake <laughs> Shelton here. I just wanted to say uh, good luck today on your Today Show performance. Uh, I miss you, buddy. And uh, now that it's over with, I can finally tell you that I wrote it into the script that you were going to win The Voice this finale. <laughs> so congrats, buddy. Good luck on the tour. Good luck with all the new music. I'll see you down the road. That's cool. Look at you. Good old pops, huh? Good old pops. Little Misty. All when right. I, when I won the voice, the only thing he said to me was, I thought you everything you know. <laughs> no, no, he just gave me a hug and said that in my ear. All right, what are you going to sing for us now, now? I would like to do uh, the title track and the first song that I wrote Let's for the record. Right. Sure. Take it away. No. Life is like a board game some other time Mistakes and heartbreaks and no crime But there's a light creeping through under broken skies You got plans, better hurry cause time flies Hold tight, get ready for the ride If everything was easy, nothing ever broke If everything was simple, how would we know? How to fix your tears, how to fake a show How to paint a smile, how would we know? How good we have it though Dancing with the stars over the night The gravity comes and wraps her arms around you again It's all fun and games until the party ends All tight, get ready for the ride if everything was easy, nothing ever broke If everything was simple, how would we know? How to fix your tears and how to fake a show How to paint a smile and how would we know? How could we have it though?
you're still not ready for the ride. If everything was easy, nothing ever broke. If everything was simple, how would we know? How to fix your tears, how to fix your show, how to be your smile. Niall Horan, and he's coming back with one of his many favorites. Do not miss it. But first, this is today on and Enjoying new music from Niall Horn all morning long. And now you ready to throw it back? Yeah. Let's throw it back. His three times platinum certified hit, my personal favorite, Slow Hands. Mm -hmm. Here it is. Once again, Niall Horn. Put it on the show. Got me now in a kitchen. No, I 
and gentlemen, hey, that Niall, was great. Niall, <laughs> Niall, that was insane. What's up? That Thank was insane. You. Now, there are, okay, these Hello. two girls who were just wandering up here, <laughs> you know what, when, you, when you're in line, not this morning at eight, not last night, they were in line the day before at oh. eight in the morning. What's, huh? Come here, come yeah. here. Turn around, turn around. Come around what, what's way, your so name? You My name is Ellie. And what's your name? Azul. And where'd you guys come in from? So, we're coming from California, but we are actually from Argentina. Oh, wow. Wow. Wait. Oh. Number one. Number one. There, there's a, a young lady who landed in Amsterdam this morning and came directly to see you right back wow. there. I see you. I, there are people who came from far and wide, honey. You bring them in. Wow. That's amazing. It's, it's are incredible. you freaking out? Let me do a picture. Hold on. Hold on. Thank you, girls. Ready? One, two. Wow, that's a moment. Thank you very much. Oh I really appreciate it. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank th you very much, Thank guys. you guys really so, so it. much. We I really appreciate it. One more selfie. Okay. Wow. <laughs> We're on live TV. <laughs> All right, guys. All right, guys. By the way, you came again, from that, that new album, it's called The Thank Show. You guys. <laughs> it's streaming everywhere right now. Don't go far. now has got more music coming up. In the third hour as well, we may have a little surprise here in a moment. And the tour starts when, bud? I start next February. I'll be in Madison Square Garden on June 14th. All right. Oh, we love you, Niall. Thank you so Good much. You, more Thanks coming up on the third right, hour, buddy. but first, your local news, some weather, and these quick messages. All right. No! Yes! Good morning. Welcome to Today. Every day. We are adding to the star power in our studio. The biggest names. Only on Today. See, we're coming in this early, right? Everybody, it's Today. Like I won the lottery. How do you feel at this age, this stage? Liberated. We're just getting started, folks. Ain't no stop with us now. The boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. The miracle. This has been fantastic. Everything and everyone you're talking about. Only on Today. Good morning, everybody. Here's what's happening in your neck of the woods. Oh, you deserve to be celebrated. Way to go, Reynolds. Oh, Al. Al, you're all of our heroes. Yeah. Y'all love Al Roker. <laughs> This morning on the third hour of today, Fearless Team. Meet the eighth grader who fought off a shark. I hit it with my other hand, like hit its nose or its face. Why she's already jumping back in the water just weeks later. Plus, we've got a trio of huge stars. Craig getting an invitation to Reba's place. If it'll help other people, I was forward 100%. How the country icon helping transform a small town that's close to her heart. Then, Oscar winner Gina Davis sharing memories from her iconic roles and the cause she's dedicated her life to. And it's time for the show. Music superstar Niall Horan is throwing a party on the plaza and we're all invited today, Friday, June 9th, 2023. Live from Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza, this is the third hour of today.
Oh my oh gosh, my come God. on down. Oh. All right. Bonus song. Give that it up for Nile again, guys. guys. A lovely bonus. That was so fantastic. Here's what I, I, I don't get. Yes. Your album, the show, just yes. dropped yes. a few hours ago. Yeah. And people during the concert have been singing along. They already yeah. know the lyrics. They were up at midnight listening to the thing. They already know all the words. <laughs> Crazy. So they were up at midnight. You were up at three o'clock this morning, oh tweeting my everybody back. Yeah. I mean, what is it like for you in this type of environment? You know, I mean, you get to connect with your fans yeah. like so up close. Like I haven't been in front of fans for like four or five years, and I got last toured in 2018. So wow. to be back in front on the plaza again, in front of all these people, doesn't it's get amazing. any better than this. There are so many amazing fans here. You guys know it's Father's Day coming up, right? Right. And so I found this dad who said, Niall, can you say hi to my daughter? And she tried to disappear. Where's my dad? I think his name is Chris. I've seen that too. Chris! Yes! Happy Father's Day. I am the best looking 55 year old man in the <laughs> yes. That's because you're the only 55 year old guy in the crowd. His daughter, he, you wanted to get a shout out for your daughter. First of all, your daughter's turned beet red and started hiding. But I was like, you know what? You're, you have an awesome dad. Tell us your daughter's names again. This is Zuri and this is Carson. She's at Clemson and she's in high school at Rubble. That's awesome. So would you like to ask Niall again? And this time he's going to say Hello. hi. Niall, could you please say hey to Zuri and Carson? <laughs> Hello, ladies. Oh. <laughs> That's it. That's just done. Your dad is like, he's sorry, <laughs> but he's not so sorry at all. Right. Yeah. Ha happy Father's Day. I love happy that. Father's Thank you, guys. Day. All right. So we're going to check, we're gonna check in with awesome. Niall again coming up. And of course, we're not going to let him go just yet. So you don't want to miss one more song from Niall coming up a little later this morning. Oh, they're hugging. That's really, really sweet. All right, but before that, we do have a lot to talk about this morning, and we're gonna start in South Florida, where, talk about rock star kids. We have a rock star 13-year-old. Her name is Ella Reed. She fought off a shark, and she's already diving back into the water. Look at this. NBC's Gotti Schwartz is live to tell us more. This is one brave teenager, Gotti. She sure is. The first time we all met Ella Reed, she was uh, telling us about how she kept her cool while fighting off that shark that was chomping on her stomach and arms. And if you were impressed with her back then, well, wait till you see what she's up to now. Grab her top in the door. Dangling over the side of a boat, clipping a tracking device onto an eight-foot tiger shark? It's really cool. Hardly the place you'd expect to find Ella Reed. Like but for this rising eighth grader, there's no place she'd rather be. I'm super excited in the water. Wow, because just about a month ago, Ella was having a very different shark experience. It went under her and straight to me. Ella and her friend were sitting in waist deep water at Fort Pierce Inlet State Park near her home when she found herself in the jaws of a four foot bull shark. Right as it bit me in the stomach, I shoved my arm like where it was biting me so it didn't get my stomach and, and it got my arm instead. And she kept on fighting back. I hit it with my other hand, like hit its nose or its face or something. Ella escaped but was bitten on her stomach, arm and leg needing 19 stitches. I was pretty freaked out in the beginning. Ella, however, undaunted. And just 11 days after the attack... I got back into the water like the day before I got the stitches out. It's that spirit that led Nova Southeastern University to invite Ella on their shark tagging trip. We thought that maybe that first interaction wasn't quite the best. We would like her second interaction with the shark to be a much more positive one. When I received the invitation to go shark tagging, I was super excited. And why not? Ella's dream is to become a marine biologist. I'm hoping to learn their behavior and more about them. And that brings us to this moment. Well, the tiger shark kind of felt like, like leather and sandpaper. It was really weird. And the nurse shark kind of felt like sandpaper too. Ella, less than a month after fighting off a shark attack, was in the water petting another one that was even bigger. Now that she's able to see what marine biology, how you can put that to work and how you really can make a difference. And I just hope it, it helps guide her in the area that she wants to go. As for Ella. Tagging the sharks was like super fun. It was a lot better than the last time I had an experience with another shark. <laughs> A much better experience with a scholarship offered at Nova Southeastern University to boot. And if you're wondering about that tagging, not only does it help scientists see where the sharks are moving, they take tissue samples, they study their genetics, their diets, all shedding more light into those incredible creatures that Ella might tell you are probably the most misunderstood. Yes. I mean, coming oh, from her. I know. Yes. Exactly. Hey. Gotti, thank you. I mean, you'd think sure. she would have some PTSD, but, but I Once guess not. Back into the water. Yeah. Yeah. Resilient. Kind of like the hair of the dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
from uh, right in. from yeah. sharks to horses. We're going to talk about uh, horse racing's biggest weekend. One of them, at least tomorrow, of course, the Belmont Stakes, the final leg of the Triple Crown. Looking forward to being there tomorrow. Today, the 50th anniversary of Secretariat's iconic hmm. Triple Crown victory. There, Our Harry Smith joins us now with a look back at the horse that ran into the history books. This is one of my favorite sports stories of all time here. Yeah, I'm happy to join you this morning just to explain. I'm at Camp Southern Ground. We're going to be hanging out with Zach Brown a little bit later on this morning. But first, let's talk about a horse the likes of which we haven't seen since. Would there were a Hall of Fame for Hall of Famers, Secretariat would be a unanimous choice. For what that horse accomplished is quite simply incomparable. Victory and record time at the Kentucky Derby. Victory and record time at the Preakness. And yes, victory and record time at the Belmont Stakes. And as for those record times, each still stands. No horse since then has run faster at the Derby, at the Preakness, or the Belmont. The ultimate Triple Crown winner. Former jockey Donna Brothers won more than a thousand races. Most of us know her from her exemplary role on NBC Sports. What we saw from him throughout the Triple Crown was that he was a horse who just liked to win. And it didn't matter to him if he got a slow start or if he was mid-pack or if he was in the lead, he just liked to win and leave other horses quite literally in his dust. Watch him at the Belmont Stakes. The champion horse was also a charmer, loved the spotlight, the attention. The secretariat was so smart that he could tell when the red light was on on the camera. And then he would just put on a show for the videographers, for the photographers, and run around the paddock. When Hall of Fame jockey Ron Turcott first saw Secretariat, he sensed they would make a great team. I'm very proud that I had a lot to do with schooling the horse, but he had, he had the ability and he was the one carrying me. After being aboard the champion for the three races of the Triple Crown, Turcotte declared God had made Secretariat the perfect horse. I rode 20,000 races and I never met one like him and it'll be a long time before we'll see another one like him. And you want to hear something absolutely amazing? 16 years after they had to put Secretariat down, 16 years after the horse was retired, the horse needed to be put down. They did a necropsy, all right? They found out that the horse's heart weighed 22 pounds. Oh, it's goodness. three times bigger than the average heart. You know, you talk about an athlete or, oh, or a, a, an oh, animal gosh. having heart. <sighs> Literally. That might have been wow. part of the secret. No question. Wow. Jeez. I still can't believe it's a record that is still holds to this day. It still that stands. Yeah. All three, all three track records. Can you imagine that? that 50 wow. years later. Wow. Thank you, Harry. Wow. Tell oh, Zach. Say hi, Zach. Good to yeah. see you. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Harry. Uh, when we come back on a Friday morning here, a town's transformation with a little help from a country music legend. How Reba McIntyre is bringing hope and inspiration to a place that is very special to her. And then a little bit later, we're going to catch up with Oscar winner Gina Davis. Yay. Gina's here. We're going to talk Beetlejuice, and we'll talk about the important event that kicks off next week, third hour of today, right back after this.
So tomorrow night on NBC, we hope you're going to watch a new primetime special, Inspiring America, The Inspiration List. It's dedicated to amazing people who are taking action to make their communities better. Well, Craig sat down with one hometown hero you are definitely going to recognize. Yeah, a few weeks ago, I met some, some folks who are working hard to save a, a small town in Oklahoma and helping lead the way there, none other than country music legend Reba McIntyre. There's a town called Atoka in southeast Oklahoma that's seen better days. For years, cars just drove straight through, rarely stopping for business, until country music legend Reba McIntyre decided to help. She grew up on a ranch nearby. We had friends down here, the movie theater was yeah. a very popular place for all of us to go. I read that you were, at one point, Miss Atoka. Miss Atoka Ford. Oh yeah, it's just right down the street. But over the years, as Reba's career soared, Atoka's fortunes sank. Factories closed, jobs disappeared. So, in 2020, town officials pitched Reba a plan transform one of the oldest buildings downtown into a Reba-themed restaurant. If it'll help other people, I was for it 100%. Especially after the Choctaw Nation, a tribe known for supporting local businesses, agreed to be her partner. This is our roadmap. Mama always said, surround yourself with people who are smarter than you and who are good people. And that's what we have here in Atoka, Oklahoma. Her first visit to the building was perhaps more than she bargained for. A lot of pigeons were living here and a lot of pigeon poop. And the second floor stairs collapsed. We were hollering out the windows and I said, how are we gonna get down? The local fire department came to the rescue. It only made Reba more determined to help rescue Atoka. She announced the restaurant at a concert on a Friday night. We're excited about it. So now y'all come on up and have a hamburger with us, okay? By Monday morning, Atoka's economic development director, Carol Irvin, says the town was on the map. I called that the day Atoka sold. I mean, I had realtors calling me saying property that I've been sitting on for six months just sold. Just the announcement alone. Yeah. When it opened, thousands of tourists flocked to Reba's place. Thank you all for being here. Appreciate it. Thank you, Reba. Looks like it's working pretty well. It's working awesome. Chief Gary Batten says the tribe plans to reinvest its share of the profits back into community services. This is a return on vision. That's what excites Chef Curtis Mortensen, too. It's good home cooking. He has opened dozens of restaurants around the world, but says this is different. I feel like I'm trying to work for something that's bigger than myself, and that's really worthwhile. The restaurant's strong paychecks and tourism dollars are already rebooting the local economy. Server Christy Green Pittman has noticed new stores opening. It's brought a lot to our community, a lot of positive change that's going to impact our kids and our, our town for generations. Reba says she's feeling the impact too. Alice always said, oh good, now you'll be coming home more often. True. You know, I, it's, I got a business, but I want to see my family too. What do you hope that this helps turn a toka into? A family place. I hope people get back in here and to revitalize downtown and the surrounding areas. It's it's already happening and it's fun to watch. Mm, it is already great. happening. And here's the thing, Toka's economic uh, development director there, she estimates that the economic impact of Reba's place could add up to as much as $20 million this year. Wow. And then the town's got more plans. Mm -hmm. They're gonna sort of use the, the, the restaurant as an anchor but they're going to build a hotel, this outdoor mm. stage, just behind uh, Reba's place there in Atoka as well. So oh, it's, 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 it's literally, if you build it, they, they, will, will, they come. will come. I told you, my father and his friends were just there. My father grew up in Claremore, Oklahoma, and he sent me a selfie from the restaurant. And right after you announced that you were he going to He just went there. there as like a destination he was just there last to go. Week? Well, he was hoping wonderful. to see Craig in that orange sweater. I mean, or maybe that burgundy <laughs> that, was, that was sweet. There were a couple. The Thank Craig you. Melvin sweater collection. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you're in Atoka, check out Reba's. And tomorrow, check out our special. It's called Inspiring America. The Inspiration List, it airs at NBC at 8 p.m. Eastern. Hope everybody right. watches. Yes. All right. All right. Well, coming up next, we're going to catch up with Hollywood great Gina Davis, looking back at some of her iconic roles and talking about the big event she's got coming up next week. And then later, it's Superfood Friday. Joy Bowers got some little bites that could give a big boost of energy. Third hour today, I'll be right back. What's the little bite?
this morning. We are so excited to welcome a Hollywood icon to our studio, mm -hmm. Gina Davis. Won the Oscar for her supporting role as Muriel, a dog trainer who captured the attention of a travel writer back in 1988's The Accidental Tourist. That same year, she starred as one half of a haunting couple in the classic yes. film Beetlejuice. Oh, yes. And of course, 1991, starring in Thelma and Louise, about two friends who literally took off on a life changing <laughs> road trip. Well, now Gina is focused on making show business more inclusive. And next week, she is kicking off an event dedicated to that cause. It's the ninth annual Bentonville. Film Festival in Arkansas, and Gina is here with us this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning everybody. So tell us about this festival. You know, we're coming up on almost a decade now. What what have you experienced and learned from from chairing it? Well, uh, we we started it from the beginning uh, to uh, champion women and diverse voices, mm -hmm. and uh, and so. We, well, this year, w w the directors are 70% are female mm -hmm. or, or gender um, nonconforming, and 55% uh, are um, LGBTQ, mm -hmm. and 60% are BIPOC or Pacific Islander. And wow. so it's incredibly inclusive. diverse and uh, inclusive and, and uh, intersectional, you know, mm -hmm. it's, that doesn't add up to 100%. Right. <laughs> I wasn't but doing the Nobody was doing the work. But you do um, one thing at the festival, it's called Gene and Friends. Yes. And you recreate movie scenes that were m male scenes, but with right. women. Yes. Oh, that's cool. it's, So tell us more about that. It's so fun. Yeah, yeah. I had that idea. We, we've done it since the beginning, and it's a big favorite of everybody. Um, myself and, and uh, some other female actors act out scenes mm -hmm. that are uh, were all males, you know, mm -hmm. we do Reservoir Dogs oh, or cool. MASH or, or Toy Story. We do every mm -hmm. kind of uh -huh. scene and, uh, and people love it. It's like funny, but it, I think it also makes you think like, well, why couldn't yeah, why they? Not? Why couldn't they? Right. Why not? Yeah. 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 In fact, it sounds like it's kind of a natural extension for the Gina Davis Institute on Gender and Media, which you started almost 20, 20 years ago. Uh, and, and what are some of the headlines that are coming out of that? Uh, so. I started it because I found out when I had kids that kids entertainment stuff made specifically for them, like even preschool shows, seemed wildly un imbalanced. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wait a minute, we should be at least showing kids that yeah. boys and girls are equal. So, uh, and then it became a whole thing. <laughs> and uh, so we do research uh, all the time. And so just recently we found that we have reached parity in the female and male characters in mm. both children's TV and wow. movies made for oh, kids. Okay. Yeah. Trailblaze yeah. in that category. Listen, you have contributed to some of the most memorable films ever. Before you came in, everybody was talking about their favorite favorites. And I was just reading a sequel to Beetlejuice is expected in 2024. Right. Um, you said you'd like to be a part of it, but maybe there would be a tiny little issue. Well, yeah, because they've been talking about a sequel for mm -hmm. 20 years or something. and uh, But now they actually are doing it. But all along I've said, I don't think I'll be in it because I think ghosts don't age. Oh, ah. you say yes, that's true. Although there's CG. CG yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. We, we can, we can make it work yeah. if you want to. That's right. I mean, speaking of sequels, Dumb and Louise, uh, when's that happening? How well, could oh. how could that happen? <laughs> you, I, I mean, you could you could in, in Boy, movie you, you, you could come back. You just talked about that ghosts. would have been a, that would have had to take a heck of an air. You just talked about ghosts. <laughs> we are pancakes <laughs> on the bottom. <laughs> no, don't say that, Gina. You could, you, no, bad, no, I'm sorry. Stranger it, things have it, happened. No, unless no, it's a Roadrunner cartoon. Oh my God! Actually, so many people have asked me, yeah. "Is there going to be a sequel?" I'm like, uh -huh. <laughs> it just wouldn't work. What do you think? Yeah. You, yeah. Could, you could do it. That's well, right, here's the right. thing. My favorite Gina Davis movie is The Long Kiss Goodnight. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and I, I what, what, would you, you, and you said you and Sam Jackson have said you'd like to do a sequel of that? Oh, yeah. We were just talking a couple of weeks ago, and, and uh, I said, well, I, I wish we had made a sequel, but we still could. You could. Yeah. And uh, he was like, it's always the right time to make a sequel to that movie. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> so that's the one sequel you would do. Okay. Yeah. yeah that's the only one. Right, yeah. It's so Thank fun you, to Gina. have you here. Thank you so Thank much. You. This is the first time I'm meeting you, and I 
I just feel like you're just Hollywood royalty. So it's it's so wonderful to have oh, you here. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me more. I love that oh, stop it some Tell more. Me. All right. Up next on Superfood Friday, Joy Bauer is going to spill the tea and which cup you should reach for, depending on how you're feeling. And then later, music superstar Niall Horn is celebrating his album release with us, and he is performing one more song you don't want to miss. We'll be right back. back on the third hour of today with another edition of Superfood Friday SOS. <laughs> today, nutrition and health expert Joy Bauer is here to answer your superfood questions. Hey, Joy. Hi, Joy. Good Hi. to see Hi. you. Fridays. Okay, we've got our first question okay. from Lily in New York, and it's something I think we can all relate to. Lily? I seem to always hit a wall around 3 p.m. and start feeling so tired. What are the best foods and drinks to help with the afternoon slump? Thank ah, you. Good question. Mm, so we've all experienced the yeah. dreaded mm -hmm. afternoon slump. Um, it's frustrating, but it's quite normal, and there's a scientific explanation. It's all about our circadian rhythm, okay. which then triggers a drop in blood sugar, smack in the afternoon, and it's typically right between when we wake up in the morning and mm -hmm. when we go to sleep at night. The good mm -hmm. news is there's a few things we could do to perk ourselves up. First, sip some water. Hydration is very important. Right. And also consider a gentle hit of caffeine. You don't want to drink too much because it's going to interfere with sleep. So you can either do a cup of coffee that's a mix with mm -hmm. regular and decaf, okay. or I'm showing a cup of tea because that has half the caffeine of coffee. And definitely power up with energizing snacks. Okay. So these snacks are great for focus. They mm -hmm. keep us feeling sharp and sustain energy. It's an apple with string cheese, mm -hmm. or we have a rice cheese. cake mm. with some peanut butter or yogurt with berries. All right. Here I'm showing my fudgie. These are energy These are bites, delicious. and I have two different versions. So this is a chocolate peanut butter, okay. mm. and this I gave it an extra kick with some espresso powder. Oh. So if you want a jolt from the caffeine. Just the powder? Um, yeah, I add mm. in the powder with a whole bunch of things like rolled oats, and I have chia seeds mm. and nut butter, mm. and it's so simple. And it's the good, good thing is you make a great big batch. It lasts in the refrigerator for mm. weeks and weeks, good. and it'll lift it you like up. Candy. I know, it's it good. It tastes Almost a little like bit like a brownie. Mm -hmm. All right, so next we have a question for all of the tea drinkers out there like myself. Take a listen. Joy, this is Melanie from Denver, Colorado. My question for you today is about tea. I drink a lot of tea and there are a lot of options. Green, chamomile, black, and I'm wondering what you think is best. That's a good question. Thank you. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know the question. difference. It's a great question. And truly, it's impossible to pick just one sure. tea because there are so many great varieties. Mm -hmm. But here are the standouts. So black, white, and oolong tea are packed with antioxidants, and they help to fight inflammation, which means that it's also going to reduce the risk for a laundry list of conditions like heart disease, cancer, type 2 diabetes. Chamomile tea is great if you're feeling frazzled because it helps to mm, ease stress and anxiety. Ooh, green tea is which one am a I drinking? super food in its own right. I don't even know. I don't either. Um, but green tea has all of the tea. antioxidants that black tea has, but also this it can help to protect and promote 
skin health. Oh. And some studies show that it has a modest assistance with weight loss as well. Hmm. And then we also have turmeric and ginger. Fantastic if you're dealing with aches and pains from exercise or arthritis. Okay. And the last one is peppermint. I love peppermint that. is great oh. for IBS. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Peppermint can help with gas and stomach discomfort and you distension. Try that one, wow. But not with heartburn. As Ted Lasso says, I used to think tea was just brown, dirty water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much is. All right, we got two minutes. <laughs> we love anything Ted Lasso says. All right, what's this next one here? This one uh, for you, Craig. Oh, yeah, we've got a question here from someone who's trying to get in shape for the summer. Hey, Joy. My name is David Rodriguez from Miami, Florida. I work out a few times a week for about an hour per session, and I was wondering, what are the best foods to eat before I exercise? Thank you. Okay. So That's contrary to what a lot of people think, you do not need to eat anything before a bout of moderate exercise. And I would mm. define that as an hour or less. So it's really a personal choice. Wait, an hour of exercise is moderate? Yeah. <laughs> yes. So if, <laughs> That's if your joy you Bauer is. <laughs> if you feel energized and strong without eating anything on mm -hmm. an empty stomach, go to it. But if you feel jittery and you need a little bit of mm. umph, mm -hmm. the name of the game is keep it light. So yeah. one of the most perfect snacks, I'm showing a banana yeah. because it's totable, it is easy to digest, mm -hmm. and it also contains a lot of potassium, which is an electrolyte that we tend to lose it's through good. sweat nice. when we exercise. Mm -hmm. And I also have a cup of coffee because 30 to 60 minutes before, mm -hmm. a cup of coffee can actually help you work out longer oh, and oh, stronger. It gives you the energy, right. yes. I imagine, yeah. Uh, right. This next one is um, from Marcy in Connecticut, having to do with acid reflux. Okay. Yeah. I suffer with acid reflux, and I was wondering if there are any foods that might soothe it or any foods that um, I can avoid. I really need some help, so if you have any information, I'd really appreciate it. Hmm. There are no magic foods that can help minimize acid reflux, but there are a lot of things that you could do to make yourself feel better. Okay. I think the first thing is to eat smaller meals because mm -hmm. larger meals puts pressure on the stomach walls, which increases stomach acid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The second thing is to not lie down after eating. Right. Um, so wait at least three hours after eating dinner because it's easy then for the food to travel up. Mm -hmm. And in terms of trigger foods, okay. you want to avoid bubbly beverages, mm -hmm. avoid alcohol, avoid caffeine. Yeah. Sorry about the mm -hmm. coffee thing. And also acidic foods like we're showing here, tomato sauce, mm -hmm. the citrus fruits, mm -hmm. heavy, uh -huh. rich meals. And ironically, I'm showing peppermint over there because peppermint and chocolate can relax the sphincter mm -hmm. in the esophagus mm -hmm. and make it more likely that the food is going to come up. So peppermint so is good for IBS, but not for reflux. Really yes. okay. Check these with things. your doctor. Yes. Yeah, these Definitely guys. check with your doctor. And there's great medications that uh -huh. help, obviously. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Joy. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy. Enjoy. Head to today.com slash food for the recipes for Joy's chocolate peanut Those butter, cookie bites, Ooh. and the espresso bites. Yes. Ahead from superfoods to a superstar. Ooh. Look who's inside. Now, already just dropped that <laughs> brand new album. Wow. Niles going to tell us about Nile times two. <laughs> he's, gonna, he's also going to perform some brand new music that's going to put a smile on your face. We will be right back. Thanks, good. Next week on the third hour of today, some talented actors stopping by Studio 1A. Hank Azaria, Justina Machado, and Annie Murphy all live. Then don't miss this chance. Chance the Rapper live on our plaza for a summer concert. Next week on the third hour of today.
The City Concert Series on today is proudly presented to you by City. I gotta tell you, it has just been a terrific morning. With uh, he's a global superstar, but just a nice guy, and has been a friend of the show, <laughs> Niall Horn. It's so good. all around yeah, nice. Good guy. to see you. Yeah. Uh, Niall has landed seven songs on the Billboard 100, and oh by the way, he sold more than 80 million records. And today he is out with his third studio album. It's called The Show. He celebrated with an epic Plaza concert, and he's going to perform one more song. But first, he's here to catch up. Good morning to you. Hey, Niall. Hello. Hey. Oh. Yeah. When, again. When Craig just said 80 million, I mean records. Is that all? <laughs> <laughs> You've been slacking off. Well, listen, I, for, we should say congratulations. I mean, this album release date, I was just reading, it's been three years in the making, but it's finally here. Yeah. What no, does that feel like? Yeah, it's an, it's probably the biggest cliche in music. It's a very nerve wracking time. Mm -hmm. It's like Christmas Eve excitement, but. Like, I like the songs, I wrote them, my inner team, you know, we all like them, but you don't know what the masses are going to think around the world, yeah. so... Everybody was singing along to every song, yeah, that even was though cool. it's not yeah. out yet, yeah. so... Or just, it just came out. Just came out well, like that's the nine part that ago. I didn't understand. I looked over at Dylan and I said, well, how do they know all the words already? <laughs> Super fans. <laughs> this is great. How, how is this album different, Niall, than, than the previous two? Mm. Um, I would say it's probably the most mature work, probably just simply because <laughs> I'm getting a little bit older. Um, <laughs> and your, your tastes and your influences kind of change and yeah. your yeah. sound matures over time. I think during the pandemic, as I said earlier, I think during the pandemic there was, there was a period t where I could sit still for the first time in my career ever, yeah. like actually for longer than probably like 10 or 12 mm -hmm. days at a time. So it was nice to be able to sit, sit still, reflect, look forward to the future, think about your outlook on things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that played into what I was writing about straight mm -hmm. away. You know what's funny? I, you know, a lot of these albums are coming. So, oh, I had a big breakup. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, man. He's a harsh critic. Yeah, yeah, critic. Right. <laughs> this, you're out, this is a positive. I know what he's talking about. Buddy. This is a positive outlook. It's just, it's, it's, it's upbeat. No, it is. I think, I think I've always, like, I'll, I'll write about things that are, you know, you know, like the anxieties of the world and stuff sure. like that. But I've always tried to like stick a bit of a silver lining on the end of it. Bit of hope, you know, yeah. for, for all well, the, for all the self, madness If you ever have there. a breakup, just when you come, just I'll just do this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So listen, Maybe we should leave him out. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Next exactly. time I come back, if there's a breakup. <laughs> if there's, if there's a, a breakup, breakup I'm, I'm, out. I'm out. I'm not planning one. Okay, okay. good, okay. good. Uh, so this summer you're hitting the festival circuit uh, before gearing up for a world tour. I heard you say yeah. you're going to Madison Square Garden mm. soon. What is it like to gear up for these tours again? Oh, it's amazing. How long like, has it been? September 2018 was the last time I did like a wow. full show, um, which is considering how much touring I did up to that point. Yeah. Um, it's crazy to me. So I am looking forward to it. This was in Boston uh, hmm. last week. So it's been uh, it's been amazing to go and do the festival, see if I can gather some new fans while I'm out there. Mm -hmm. um, and then the tour next year, put on the show that I've, I've kind of always wanted to put on. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we're playing the garden at the same yeah. time. So so one of the things we've always enjoyed about you, Niall, is, is you've always been fashion forward when mm -hmm. you come here. <laughs> and we noticed here at the show that there's this trend that you've, you've really been promoting. <laughs> the, the cardigan. The cardigan. You're bringing yeah. Back to cardigan. Yeah, the cardigans are coming back. <laughs> what, is well, there a backstory there? Uh, winter in London, I think. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Uh, uh, just a Roker made this by I, I, I was making I, this this weekend. I was knitting it for you. <laughs> just a little cardigan you, for you. Thank you very much. You made that suit. Yeah. And then just had a bit of time to Wait, knit this the suit together. Look at this. Let me oh, see the back. Oh, today. Yeah, that's right. Oh, that's cute. Look at that. I'd actually wear that. Will that's you wear that? Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Right. Okay. Very, very nice. Thank you, Mr. Roker. Kyle, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Meanwhile, yeah, Lyle, our wardrobe guy who actually made it, is over That's the right. court. Wait, Lyle made it? Wow. Lyle. Oh, yeah. Lyle, 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 Lyle come on over. Where is Lyle? Yeah, where is Lyle? Lyle. He's so shy. Lyle hates being on camera. Oh, he's not very tight. It's also his birthday. Oh, we forgot. I go to what? Lyle's in the witness protection. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there he is. There he is. And happy birthday, Lyle. Happy birthday, happy Lyle. birthday Lyle. Lyle. Thank you so much. Up next, now is performing a brand new song that we guarantee we'll be playing on YouTube. Get the camera off him. Quick. Oh, there he is. Don't wait. I'll be right back. No. I'll be dead next week. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> you went there. How dark. This is a family show.
Holm. He has been putting on quite the show for this packed crowd all morning long. But he's not finished yet. Niall is bringing us a brand new song you are going to be singing all day. Performing Meltdown off his new album, The Show. Here's Niall Horn. In the bathroom, losing your mind in the mirror that you have to. Ooh. Screaming in your car, in the driveway, spinning out, think your life's going sideways. Ooh. One broken glass and two back after this.
So our Start Today June Challenge is all about keeping a walking streak okay. going. So let's shout out some of our Start Today members. There we Kristen go. from Texas got a head start on her streak probably at 30 days. Good Kristen, job. Kristen. Watch out for Suzanne and Stacy on their nightly walks in Florida. Suzanne and Stacy. Stacy. Julie from Illinois is aiming for a 365 wow. day streak. Wow. Julie, go. And Michelle is doing us proud getting her daily steps in from Ohio. Go, Michelle. And Carla from, o uh, from Iowa consistently walks over 40 wow. miles a week. Carla. Carla. Go. Job. All right. Keep it up, everybody, and be sure to join us this June. Sign up for our newsletter by heading to today.com slash start today. All right. Monday on the third hour of today, Hank Azaria is live in studio. Uh, coming up on Hoda and Jenna, your weekend watch list of new movies and TV shows, and your shows tomorrow morning. Yes. Yes. We'll Earth Odyssey and Wild Child. Have a great weekend, Have a great everybody. Great weekend. everybody. Hope you'll come back Monday. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Good morning, everybody. Here's what's happening in your neck of the woods. Oh, you deserve to be celebrated. Way to go, Reynolds. Oh, Al. Al, you're all of our heroes. Yeah. Y'all love Al Roker. <laughs>
You're free. You're free. You don't have that. And so that there's nobody heartbeat. in there to kind of get involved. Hovering over you. We're over the helicopter parenting. No, I because think Because we're that, not helicopter no, parents. No, we're not. We're not. Um, but anyway, now back to PDA. Sorry, girls. Okay. okay. The answers varied from hand-holding to food. I think food feeding's fine. Ew. What do you mean? You want to taste this? Food yeah. feeding? Yeah. Hey, oh, do you want to try my cake? Can't the person take their own fork and I'm eat the shocked. cake? I'm shocked that's what you're saying right now. I, food feeding to me, I actually couldn't even believe that I was reading that. But food feeding... Of course. Do you uh, want to try it? Saliva? Here, try try your, mine. Try. No, thank you're you. You're kissing. This is... Wait. Uh, no, thank saliva? you. Saliva? I just would rather take my own fork and have a bite. I don't know. That grosses if me out. If Henry took a big piece of chocolate cake and said, try it, and it, then I, held your chin... <laughs> old person like your baby oh <laughs> no i like, don't like that when you, you want a date if you were yeah. on a date with a new person oh, and now they you're... took your thing and oh, tried to well, feed you. well if he said do you want to try it and then you said then yes you took wait, your... wait 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 and then i said yes and i didn't make a move for my fork i would appre i would expect him to take his <sighs> fork what is wrong no, with you? No, if you go on a date and I'm somebody so does that, shocked. I want you to call me and talk about how okay, it feels. So, okay, so that's a bridge too far for Funny. you. Okay, but what about kissing in a restaurant? I've kissed in a restaurant. Okay. But not like, I feel like there's a difference between yeah. pecking, yes. which is such a strange yeah, word, yeah. but whatever. A, yeah, like a normal. As opposed to like. Really kissing. Yeah, how about you? Okay, yeah, I don't think that that's. Have you place. ever had like real PDA, a real yes. PDA moment? Uh huh. Yes. Was that with that Australian? <laughs> no, <laughs> so someone else, and it was in a furniture store, and it was in it a was, furniture yeah, store. It was really bad. What? And I thought, I thought I was going to get fired from my job because I mean, you got caught. No, because there were, you know, I didn't. You was know, this a recent time? Not, no, no, not that recent. No, not that. Were recent. you on a bed? <laughs> Was it at a mattress giant? Would you please have some empathy <laughs> for Mila's friends <laughs> who are here? <laughs> oh anyway, my but, gosh! But you know when you're like, that was really dumb. But however, you enjoyed I it. I enjoyed it. Okay. Um, is that it? No. <laughs> I wanted to hear more about that, but how much more can we dig? Uh, All right. Camp Longhorn. <laughs> okay. Wait, how did you just do your hand? I don't know, like this? Yeah, that's right. That's what I did. Good job. Okay. Um, okay, so you may think Tom Brady is tough, mm -hmm. but it turns out when it comes to rides, not so like, much. Like, oh, in amusement parks? Yes, at the Disney World. Okay. Because... <laughs> The Disney World. Okay. Well, it's officially okay, called the Disney see. World. Those He's are his children. Yeah. Okay. They went to the happiest place on earth, but in the Instagram photos... He posted about going to the Tower of Terror. The Tower of Terror is... Oh, his wow. daughter looks Look at totally his daughter. composed. Oh, my God. She's like this again? Look at him. Wait, is he... Uh-huh. Okay. Until you realize your kids were lying about the Tower of Terror being mad chill. Um, okay. I, we went to Disney World a yeah. couple years ago, mm -hmm. and I just Googled best rides at yeah. Disney World. I didn't look it by yeah. age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we happen to go to Tower of Terror first. What is it? A roller coaster? It's a hotel oh, a that it's. I mean, it's supposed to be a hotel yeah. that's like an apartment building, and the ride just drops and then goes back up and oh drops and goes gosh. back up and drops. Holy moly! But I got it confused with like the haunted mansion, <laughs> which right, is not right, scary. Right. And Puppy was four, <gasps> and she looked at me like. I was abusing. Oh, you took her on like, it? She was like, what? what? Like, you do this? <laughs> you took her on it? I took her on it. I didn't know that it was, I mean, Tower of Terror. I know, but sometimes you think kids would like it. Yes, she had. Do you know what the scariest ride I've ever been on is at Universal? It's that Harry Potter ride with the motorcycle. That's what the is it scariest called? Ho Have you ever been on that? Yes. Hogwarts? Hag Hag Hagrid's. The one that goes straight up. You're on a bike. You think that's scary? Have you been on it? Yes. Go to Tower of Terror. <laughs> I prefer a universal ride. Ooh. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Teacher's pet. Dang. <laughs> well, but, me too, but actually one time yeah. I went with Gavin to Universal. Yeah. And did you go on that? And we rode the... Who rode sidecar? Oh. No, no. We went on the Hulk. Yeah. Which if you think that... Little motorcycle do you, ride. Do you understand? What I'm, I don't think you understand what I'm I talking did it. about. I did it with you. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, you're right. But you were on the bike and I was the in the sidecar. the green side one, car. and right. I made poor Gavin go with me because I didn't go for the show, was and I was, terrible. like, squeezing <laughs> him. But who likes rides like that in your family? Like who? Me. You and who else? And all of them now. They all do Except now. for Hal, because he's yeah. too little. Too little. How about you? Um... I like it, and Haley likes yeah. it a lot. Haley loves it. Hope not. Hope well, he's she's not little. so much. She yeah. Might. yeah, she might learn she to might. love it. All right. <laughs> so we have some important information. Artificial intelligence is, as you know, in every aspect of our lives. Every time you turn around, there's something. So the folks at cats.com, <laughs> <laughs> who decided on this story, used, to, uh, used it to turn celebs into different cat breeds. Wow. Are you excited for this one? Yes. I know how much you love cats. Okay. All right, so we're going to see a photo and then guess who it is. Okay, that is Jennifer Coolidge. Oh, my gosh. No. Okay, good guess. Um, is it Taylor Swift? Oh, it's it Taylor is. Swift. Good one. She loves cats. She does. I Karma know. Is my Olivia cat Benson. purring in my... Oh, you know the name of her cat? Of course. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Okay. okay, next one. Here's the clue. It's an actor who thinks the internet... Wait, who the internet thinks is the ultimate daddy. Oh, it's the guy. Pedro yeah. Pascal. Mm -hmm. By the way, it does look like him when you look at it. Isn't it I weird? don't know, but he, I would date that cat. <laughs> <laughs> is that weird? Yes. Yes, it's weird. Okay. All right, next up. This is a reality Kim K. star. It's who's Kim K. Wow. It's obvious. Oh, oh, you knew that was Kim K? Oh, yeah, K? look at her eyes. I wouldn't have gotten that. Is that all of them? Oh, let's see the next one. Let's see. Okay, his acting resume includes the movies Dune and Call Me By Your Name. I know. Oh, who? Timothy. Oh, Chalamet. Chalamet. Yeah. All right, and here's the next one. Jenna. No, that is not yes, me. Yes, it it's you. <laughs> it's you. That's you. No, it's you. It's Hoda. No, it's not. It's you. This cat's one of... <laughs> You're so cute. I would adopt you. If I went to an ASPCA, I would adopt you right away. Wait, I want to see one other cute cat. Is there one more? Oh, yes. Come on. Y'all didn't make me into a cat? Well, you no. made yourself into a cat. <laughs> okay. All right. Coming up next, are Hoda and I best friends forever? Question. We're about to find out how well we know each other. Coming up right after this. That's funny. That's cute. You're so cute. today. So happy to see you guys. Would you like my boost? Yes. Back. Here we go. Boom. Sometimes we just do things to help. That's our Hoda. <laughs> happy birthday. We got an awesome crowd, y'all. All right, this week marked National Best Friends Day, so we decided it was a perfect time to play another edition of Hoda and Jenna's Best Friends Forever. Okay, Donna, here, you look so yeah, good. Hi, so do you. This, no, look, this, this, is, Barbie, this is your look. Barbie Barbie again. Again. Yeah, I, I actually did. I yeah, was inspired by your Barbie combos okay. earlier this week. Okay, so here we go. It's your third friend coming to test you besties. Okay. Earlier this morning, mm -hmm. you two answered questions separately. Mm -hmm. We now have those written on cards in mm -hmm. front of you. So okay. here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to okay. ask you each question, and then at the same time, you're going to reveal the answer. Okay. We'll see how many you guys... <laughs> Get yeah, right. I'm are. scared. Are you ready? I'm a little scared. I'm just going to be honest. I didn't. My answers. I didn't know the answers for myself. I knew your answers. Okay, so let's, so let's see. see if we're right. Okay, good. Okay. So the key is just wait until I say go Let at the same time. Okay. So the first question is, what is Hoda's secret hidden talent? One, two, three, go. Spinning. Yes! Yes! yes. You knew it. Wow. I knew it. Okay. We are off to All a right. great start. 
part okay. two. Okay. Okay. Okay, this one was not easy. Now, I told you. If Jenna could only listen to one song for the rest of her I life, what song outfits. would it be? <laughs> and I just do reveal. Me out mix. Oh. oh! I do love Jolene. I did Jolene because I was going nostalgia. For I went, like, and by the way, song. I couldn't even think of the exact song. It's because you're still on that Swifty high. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right. That was fun. Okay. All right. Question three. This is a good one. <laughs> Who is Hoda's celebrity crush? Put. And reveal. Oh, I said no, no, that's not true, Kieran. I said Blake Shelton used to be Blake Shelton. <laughs> now Josh Lucas. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It, well, Blake well, was the one that comes I think to mind. I said, but I said that, but I didn't get it on my thing. Okay. And your right. earliest phase so, of life, it was that yes. that cop. What's yes. his name? Chip. Oh, Ponch. Or, or uh, the uh, <laughs> from uh, Eric Estrada. Yeah. But thank it you. Was, <laughs> hey, hey, am I right? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's Unfortunately, a good one. Right. We, uh, by the way, remember when you got him too. to say <laughs> that maybe he'll do us? No, I, we didn't Alabama remember what he said. No, we just looked at his eyes. He said it depends on Reese. Okay. Here we go. Rising. This is so easy. Question four. What is? I couldn't think of it. What is Jenna's favorite item of clothing? And repeat. The easiest layup of all. That's so easy. Easy. Am I right? Sweatpants? You're probably right, but no, really, it's sweatpants. That one pair that I eat a taco in. <laughs> okay. okay. They're, they're kind of both accurate. Okay, last one. What was your favorite moment on the show this year? And reveal. Oh, oh, we got two. You know what? First and last energy, that's all people remember that anyways. Mean best that means forever. you're best friends forever. forever. Exclamation forever. point. Forever? <laughs> Thank you, Donna. Thanks, Donna. Coming up next, a dish that's perfect for your picnic basket or your backyard barbecue. Katie Lee Beagle shows us one of her favorite pasta salads. Coming up right after this. Good morning, welcome to today. What's shaking eggs and bacon? Hold what? on, I'm just gonna say it. What? Badass. Oh, thank you. So do you think you'll act forever? <laughs> Boom. <laughs> We're gonna have lots of fun yeah. this morning. Yeah. Okay, if you've got a backyard barbecue this weekend, we've got the perfect dish that could be a main course or a delicious side. Well, that's because our friend Katie Lee Beagle's here. She's got a delicious grilled chicken pasta uh, salad. It has more than 600,000 views on Insta. Everybody, what, what is it about this that everyone's so crazy you know about? This salad is one of those things that like you can have it for dinner or you can just keep it in the fridge and eat on it all week. Oh, okay. And and it's it's like, like addictive. That. You want to just keep eating I kind of like mean, that. Any kind. pasta salad to yes. me, it's like yes. carbs, I'm happy. Yes. Yes. Um, okay, right. so we right. start with the chicken. Yes, so we're going to marinate some chicken. I'm using chicken tenders because we usually have these in our house yeah. because yeah. my daughter likes them. Yeah. And they also cook a lot faster. So mm -hmm. we're going to just do a quick marinade olive oil, mm -hmm. lemon juice you want to get in this, there, Hoda, just the whole pepper? pepper, salt, there's mm -hmm. garlic powder and dried oregano. Okay. Just whisk that together, pour it on your okay. chicken. It needs at least 30 minutes up to a couple hours. Mm -hmm. Does it, like, if do you it do it fridge. for 30 minutes, does a couple hours make a difference? Do you know what I mean? Um, you know, I think it does get in a little deeper, but you don't want to do it too long because the lemon juice will start to break down the chicken. Uh, oh. so, so it's one of those things where it's like two, maybe three hours is your max. 
Mat. 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 Got okay. it. So this right. is going to go onto the grill or a grill pan if you're inside. Mm -hmm. Let it cook about five minutes per side until it's cooked all the way through. Okay. Then you're going to chop it up into little chunks. Okay. So now what? Now on top of the pasta salad for a little added crunch, mm. I like to do some toasted breadcrumbs. Yum. To me, this is the step that makes it. So don't skip out okay. on it. Okay. Okay. So I've got butter and olive oil. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. olive oil just raises the smoke point of the butter. The butter gives you the flavor. Yes, We're going to add panko That's breadcrumbs it? to it. Panko. Yes. We're and both garlic from the south salt. Where butter is king. Yeah. Yes. You know what I mean? We got to have our butter, mm -hmm. right? And so you just let these toast up. No, you could put them in the oven, but to me, that's just one extra step. It's I like easy doing to do them it this way, just right? in the skillet. And mm -hmm. just keep an eye on it because they go from okay to, to burnt okay. like right really away. Okay. So just keep an eye on it. So those. how long? Like 30 seconds? About three minutes. Oh, three this minutes. is what I do. Okay. All right, so now our salad dressing. Okay. I've got olive oil in oh, here. You want to do the lemon? Can I this thing? Because I just want to show you this. It's Wait, what we that's call not it. how you do your flip. Oh, it's right. called a yeah. lemon strainer. You know what, Katie? And just because no, no, but I, I just was, want to show you. Jen's now, can I take my job? I was telling. No, hold up. I was, hold up. I was telling hold Jenna up. that there's a hack where you take a hold skewer, up. stick it in the end of the lemon, and squeeze oh, it. Oh, I've seen that that's on TikTok. Hack, yeah. 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 Let me just what? explain like, something. Why do you want to go out and like get the skewer? She disagrees. Negative. No, may I just show you something? See this? The seeds and the pulp are kept. Yes. How much Tight. did this cost? This. Well, but you can use it over and over again. That's right. Okay. All right. We've all right. got our it's good for the environment. Lemon juice, our salt, more dried oregano. Okay. We've got What's garlic. What's the vinegar? Would you stick in there? Uh, red wine red vinegar. Wine. Okay. I like having both the lemon juice yeah. and the red wine vinegar. Okay. I like a lot of tang and some pepper. So just okay. give that a whisk. Whisk, it. whisk that up. And then I made some uh, cavatelli. You can yeah. use any short pasta for this, but I really like the way this has all the little Texture. grooves in it. So yeah. you can carry the yeah, dressing and, it gets and all that. Yeah, the dressing all, the all in, there. in there. So you want to pour the dressing on the pasta, and then we're gonna yeah, go for it. You do and the then we're gonna add in our chicken. We've got parsley, basil, feta cheese, yeah. grape tomatoes, cucumbers. Yeah. So a lot of freshness going in here. I think the herbs okay. are really important. Is that basil yeah. you said? Sorry, I basil and okay. parsley. Do you have a garden and where you grow all that? I don't. I I See, don't. That's why we like Katie. You know what? <laughs> I kill everything. Yeah. Same like, with us. Yeah. Somebody sends me an orchid. It's dead in like <laughs> yeah. two days. They're hard and to keep alive. So I would rather just support the farmers <laughs> and buy it. So give it a good toss. Yeah. And then I've got some of those breadcrumbs oh, down here. Oh, that's the magic. And those go right on top yeah. of it. Oh. I've got one done down here. Let's put them right okay, on top. Let's try. Do you want to have get a bite? Here. And if you want to make this gluten-free, you can use gluten-free oh, pasta, gluten-free breadcrumbs. So tailor mm. it to your family's needs. Mm, I love this. What do you this. think? And just put it in the fridge. And, and then the it's brunch, like we've got great the leftover. You know that. what? Mm -hmm. I th I, pasta mm. salad, to me, the key is not creamy. Mm. Right. Do you agree? Right. I'm not a creamy pasta salad. Mm -hmm. I'm a vinegar. Mm -hmm. By you the way, that is so yummy. Fresh and delicious. delicious. And mm. you can substitute beans for chicken if you want to make a vegetarian. Delicious. Get this recipe today.com slash food. Happy summer. Thank you, Katie. Thank you. Coming up next, get ready to be blown away. Kate the chemist with some fun experiments for your family that you can try this weekend maybe after this. everybody here's what's happening in your neck of the woods what? you deserve to be celebrated way to go reynolds oh al, al you're all of our heroes y'all yeah. love al roker 
Okay, we have got our lab coats on, which can mean only one thing. It is time for Kate the Chemist. Kate Bierberdorf is the host of the podcast, Seeking a Scientist and Associate Professor of Chemistry at the University of Texas at Austin. We're so yes, happy you're Kate, here. We always love when you're here. And should we just give a reminder, an adult should be present when kids want to try any of these things. And science by kids, experience. they mean me and Jenna. Uh, yes, okay. Yes, yes. All right. We're happy you're here. Uh, congratulations. Yeah, your podcast. I know. I'm so excited. Oh. It's so cool. It's called Seeking a Scientist. We're turning scientists into rock stars, giving them the standing ovation they deserve. How it's cool. So cool. The first episode was on reversing aging. Like, that's actually happening. Scientists are doing that right now. So if you want to hear about it, check out Seeking a Scientist. Oh, How my cool. gosh. Oh, okay. Right. So the first um, experiment, yes. we're going to do science smoke rings. Yes, smoke exactly. Rings. Okay, okay, I already like this. Yes. Okay, so the first thing we have is a plastic container, and mm -hmm. I have a rubber, uh, like a rubber band, or like a balloon, or balloon. something latex, something there mm -hmm. on the bottom when you tape it to it. Okay. What we're going to do is add about a cup of water to our container. Should we put on our gloves? Uh, first, we're going to add some food coloring, though. So add okay. just a little bit, just I have fun. purple. I was hoping I was going to get it. I have pink. turquoise. Just a little squirt. You don't need a lot. Okay. We're just going to mix it up. Okay. Once you've just got squeeze it, it, squeeze it. Yeah. There, there we go. Okay. Once you've got it, we're gonna just dump it right in. Oh yeah, you guys are stirring. That's good. You should mm. do that too. You need about a cup, so like just add as much. The as water you hot? In. It's warm. Yeah. Feels Definitely. good. Definitely feels good, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're gonna put our gloves on because this is where we're going to use dry ice. And you have to always wear gloves if you're going to touch yes, dry ice. Right? Yes, yes, dry yes, yes, for can be sure. Dangerous. Dry ice is really can cold. Burn you. Mm -hmm. It's very cold. It is negative 77 well, look degrees at your Celsius. Little thing you I mean, what did you cool. just do? What Take did you just do? Ice. And what are you doing? You're putting, putting it in. Putting it in? That's in your it? Water. That's it. Yeah, we're going to see some sublimation right away. What's sublimation? Isn't that cool? <laughs> You love sublimation, uh, right? I love it? sublimation. <laughs> How much do you put in? As a much lot? as you want. Um, I like lots, so I put in a lot. Oops. And then the fun part is the bottom part. You're going it's to hard go. once you put it in and it starts smoking. <laughs> <Are> you... <laughs> but what you're going to oh do. Oh, my God. What you're what going to you do. Doing? Now tap it. Tap, tap it. it. Tap it. Tap it. it. Oh, my gosh. Rings. So you can, like, shoot them at each other if That's you want to. That's a fun to. party trick without the lung cancer. One finger. Just look up top. Smack it. Look up top. Look up top. Oh, yeah. Remember when people used to do this, but. Oh, with cool. Really? <laughs> really? No, without the lung cancer. <laughs> oh, I way, love it. Isn't that cool? Fascinating. And, like, if you really hit it, really hit it, you can boom, slingshot it right. <laughs> Is that cool? I love it. Okay, so you want to do it bigger? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Bigger. 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 Oh, better. I want to stay here. Oh, okay. you can. Okay. You can. You can bring it over here. Look how cool. You're now pretty. We're going to do this, but on a bigger scale. Okay. And so all you need is a box. I really like these long tubular boxes. And what we're going to do is take a fog machine, and we're just going to fill it with smoke. Wait, a fog okay. machine? A fog machine. You can buy yes, that so we're cheating. On Amazon? You can buy it anywhere you want. I am sure you can get it on the Amazon. So you just tape this. You just What's in that fog machine? It's water and then some glycol. And so what happens is we get it really hot. It turns into a gas. It's pushed into some cold air. It condenses, yeah. basically forms a cloud. Easy cool. Yeah. Okay, so Easy. once we have enough, let me see it's dying on me. Hold on. There we go. That's got to be enough. What I'm going to do uh -huh. is kind of shoot it out. Oh! Okay, so you want to put a little fog in there? Yes. Put some and fog. then do you want to try to knock over those? Oh, you yes. Can't. Yes. We do. Who wants to do it? Go, you go. Me, to I want to. Oh, I want, want to. Okay. Give me that. So box. grab it, smack it as hard as you can on hard, the side. Hoda. Hard, Wait. Just... Hard. Yeah, like that, like that. Oh, you got it. Harder, Hoda. Like, you don't need hard. Hard. How do I hold it? And just like this, just like this, and then go. Oh, oh, yeah, I, oh, want oh, oh I want to try. Oh, do it. I want to try. Bang it. Yes, nice. Lower, lower, lower. Yes, go, go, go. You got it. Yes. That was so fun. How do that? You what know, is she more. Newton's first law. I love it. What? Is Newton's, Newton's first, first law. law. What was Newton's second law? <laughs> uh, F equals MA. Force oh. equals mass acceleration. I was going to say that, that, and then I you forgot. Knew it. Because you knew I studied it. it. I studied it at the University of Texas, a great school, but I wasn't the best. There you go. Go, there go, you go, 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 go. Go, go, go. Got it. That was cool. Isn't that cool? Yes. So all really you need cool. is a box, and technically you don't even need the fog in there. So, like, if I want, can I do this at you? Yes. Okay. Oh, at her. Jeez. <laughs> wow. Is that, Why is that you, so? No. Do it, you do it okay. Jenna. Ooh. Can, can you, like, feel that? Wow. Yeah. It See, feels like the force. A, the fo exactly. The it's force. The force. Is all Newton. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> okay. Should um, we move over to this thing? Let's do the last one. Okay. And so this is really fun. This is a Van de Graaff generator. And so essentially what a Van de Graaff generator does is it converts mechanical energy to electrical energy. So we're essentially trying to build up some static charge. And so static. what I'm going to try to do... Look, it's kind of working. It to work. Shake vigorously. Essentially, we build up charge. It's going to go into my body. I see your body, hair. I and see your hair. You know hair. what? You can jump on a trampoline and the it? same thing can Look happen. Look at your hair. Look what's happening over here. Yeah. Oh, ah! 
I shocked you. Really? you I'm okay? sorry. It's okay. Can you feel it? Yes, it's like her hair sticking. is sitting. Ow! Ow. Oh, are you okay? Girl, this is real she static. Warned, yes. I warned she did you. warn us. I warned you. Wait, okay, but when so you touched yourself. Oh, oh, careful, oh God, don't careful. charge yourself. It's, oh, I'm used to this. I just don't want you ladies to be hurt. Okay, so now this is the fun one. What are you plugging wait, in? Wait, I'm not on. sure if wait, it's don't a good idea. No, this is the easy part. You can do this part. What's and going so on? And so you can actually see Look. the lightning. You can see that static electricity. We've got movements of electrons. We can see science in motion. It is so cool. Look at that. That's so cool. That is wild. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. We made lightning on the Today. Show. But we don't want you to get shocked. Wait, that's making lightning? Yeah, little you baby see it. lightning. Don't put your fingers on. Uh, oh, I'm used to this. You, you, are? you want to feel it? No, I don't. No, no. Feel what? Just Go. bring your what hand you toward feel? a little bit. You don't even have to touch it. Just bring your hand Wait, toward. but she can has start to feel. Her bracelet's on. Does that matter? Okay. Can you feel that, like, static? Oh, I can feel it now. It's jumping yeah. from my body to your body. It's trying yes. to. Yes. Can you feel it? Yeah. Isn't that neat? That's wild. Okay, we feel? love you. Hey. We love how excited you get about science. Thank you. The way that you love science is magical. Seriously. Your podcast is going to be huge. Yes, and thank this you, was scientists. A... Check it out. Yes. Oh, well, okay. Thank, right. thank you so much. Coming up, guys, we're going to take our fun outdoors with the ultimate backyard lawn games. Coming up right after this. Thank you, Bye. Kay. Thank you. Awesome. Hey, I y'all it's time for backyard barbecues outdoor parties and all of the fun in the sun so we've got some of the best lawn games that will get everyone outside this summer Lori Schacht is chief toy officer for the toy insider and she is here with her top picks we wait for Lori. these at the beginning of every summer we and Lori. they are here and we have such fun games and i want to start by saying there's no batteries there's no plugs it's old-fashioned oh, play old school. right we're in old-fashioned so we're going to start with the classic you guys are going to play wait. you and as I, I, I apologize wood. if Wait, I hate US you. U.S. Wood. USA Wood Cornhole. This is by East Point Sports. Go ahead, start throwing okay. it. So normally these boards would be oh. a lot further oh, away. You know wow, you one, just got two, three zero. points. You got one. So when you hit the oh, board no. and it stays, you get one point. When you get it inside, it's three points. The first one to 21 is the winner. I you know what? Great. And got I a love good that cornhole. these legs fold up for easy storage. And by the Under way, it's made in the USA. Awesome, How cool. awesome. All right, Jenga. So another wood game. So this isn't just Jenga. This is giant uh, Jenga. Oh, my gosh. Jenga. J S. Seven. So it's all wood, precision cut. You guys need to get in here and try. Wait, oh, okay. this oh, no. power. I don't know. Give it, do it, do it, do it. Do it, do it, do it. Do it, do it, do it. Go, go oh, on it. Come on, you want to take the By next way, one? By the way, these guys, you guys are interns? Yes. yes. Oh my God, how much Happy fun. Thursday. Okay, you got to do so you Oh, that guy. Oh, and yeah, you know what I love that. about yeah. this game? This makes every single gathering a party. Everybody loves this game. Everybody wants to play. That's you do not want to be the one to knock it over. Can you this, tap? Are you allowed to tap? You're allowed to tap. You are allowed tap. to tap. It's oh, yeah. a great strategy. Go ahead, help her out. <laughs> All right. And well, it comes with a great carry bag to take it with you, too. If we'll you hear a yell, we'll know someone knocks Yeah. <laughs> Keep going, guys. Thanks, We guys. trust y'all. All right. Now something brand new. This What's is this? Cross Strike by Jack Specific. So go ahead and toss a bag. So this is really cool. It's about rotating Whoa. the planks. Oh. So And what I What's love, the goal? the goal is to either get all blue or all red. It's one to four players. Go ahead. And uh -huh. you guys should try this, too, because it takes skill. 
and accuracy. So you try to, well, you the top? she seems to do oh. it very easily. Did you, you play sports in high school? Have. Not at all. Really? Well, it seems like you might have. <laughs> okay, let's get all red. Oops. And look, oh. you also have cards to change oh, out so the challenge. Out. So you try and oh. get the cards to match what you could do up here. Look how cool that is. By the way, how it's fun. mesmerizing. Mesmerizing. It's a great, fun game. Awesome. All right, Thank let's you. go Thank talk you. about Koosh. Remember Koosh Ball? No. I do remember Koosh. I do. How do you Koosh? not remember Koosh? You don't remember Koosh? Koosh? No. You remember? So it used to just be the Koosh Balls, but now Koosh came back and we have some great things like this is my favorite. Go ahead. I want the Wait, two uh, of you to play. These two interns are going excellent. <laughs> you know, just like, you see, then we came in and So this well. is our double paddle Koosh game set. Okay. So go ahead. Okay, we'll, we'll challenge you guys. Okay. Do you guys go have ahead. Okay, Let's ready? see who Go. So two. I love oh, this no. because it's really Wait, light. You can play it on. in the backyard. Take it anywhere. You oh, guys no. with two sets can play together. <laughs> you can practice by yourself. Wait, how are y'all so good? $21. So okay, easy. You guys so played fun. Did you? No. Are y'all tennis players? I cheer. No. She was a cheerleader. That's, that's by the sorry. way, that's a real sport, too. No kidding. All right. Good job, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Now, by you the know, way, I just real quick, things. can we pause for a second? Imagine being an intern. It's your first day in your life. And call <laughs> Let's go play Okay, what's, what's this right. one? So, you know, I love things that fly. And again, we don't need any chargers or batteries yeah. for this one. It is our Zumo Turbo. Uh, Show us. Show yep. us. So we take this. It comes with three discs, yeah. our launcher, and a zip cord. Okay. This goes up to 100 feet. We just let it <laughs> rip. Wow. So it's great. The kids are going to want to get in on this one, too. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Don't. Oh, you did it nice and easy. Uh, okay. Come on. Oh. <laughs> Okay, practice makes perfect. Okay. But okay. these are a lot of fun. Parents are going to love it. Kids are going to love it. You can launch it and chase it. You can launch it and let the kids chase it. Oh, yeah, that's fun. It's fun. <laughs> I like it. Um, okay, all right. All right. All right. And finally. You're a golfer? Well, I wouldn't say that. All right. <laughs> okay, today. I have to try this. So this is Go Sport. It's battle chip sure, versus golf. Oh, okay. all right. okay. So what you have here are two boards. They would be on the other, each, you know, opposite sides. And it comes with these games. Look at that. Foam golf balls. Now, you need oh. to BYO your own club. So you have to bring your own clubs to this one. But you're trying to get it on the board. If it stays on the board or hits it, you get a point. The bottom basket, the largest one, is two points. Three points. The top one is five. Give it a try. Okay. We, let, Jen and I are going to go we're ahead. We're watching James. <laughs> now, we're going to try. Okay. All right. Come All right, on. Let's see how you guys Wait, do. I need some room. This thing's Right? So you normally you would hit? be much further apart. Um, and you'd be facing, up, you know, the boards would be facing oh each other. Don't hit me. I'm trying not to. <laughs> oh, wow. wow. Oh, much. did you get it in? Yes, I did. Oh, did it? Wow. Yes, okay. I did. I mean, so, I'm and for this game, girl. you're going to play nine rounds. Whoever has the most points at the end of the game, of course, is the winner. Oops. Okay, nope. <laughs> Wait, we're not my game. game. Good way to practice your golf, right? I'll go back to court. <laughs> okay. um, well, that was you, fun. Lori. And we want to say thank you to all of our interns, too. Yes, Y'all did welcome. good. First day of school. <laughs> Y'all did good. All right. Check out these long games at today.com slash shop. Coming up next, the Hollywood blockbuster is back in theaters. And a popular series returns for its final season. Yeah, we've got all that and more covered in our weekend watch list. And right after this. Playing. I cannot. Are you a golfer? No. Do I want to like actually golf? I actually want to be a golfer. Yeah. I think you could. <laughs>
Okay, go ahead and give yourself a round of applause because you made it to Friday and we've got all kinds of entertainment to add to your weekend watch. All right, here to break it all down, the movies and the shows you've got to see, Fandango correspondent Nikki Novak. Hi, Hi Nikki. Nikki. We love when you come to see us. Oh, it's good to be back. Okay. All right, let's start with the TV series. What should we be watching? Never have I, I ever. ever. Everyone's talking about it. This is Mindy it. Kaling show? Uh -huh. This is Mindy Kaling show, um, and it stars Maitreyi Ramakrishnan. Mm -hmm. She is a revelation. I know she's been on the show with yeah. me. Yes. This is the fourth and final season. We've followed her, her through high school. For those who have never, ever seen the series, it is about a first-generation Indian-American girl, and she's very gifted. She really wants to go to Princeton, but she also wants to find her prince, as you can see there in the clip. Um, this is the fourth and final season. I'm giving this one an A++. It's so cute. I laughed. I cried. Will she get into Princeton? I cannot tell you, but I can tell you she mentions the Today Show so in the series, wow. they, they always do every Aww. season, and they did it again. Sweet, sweet. Um, okay, we want the summer blockbuster. Yeah. What's going to be the biggest movie of the summer? Yes. So we had a survey at Fandango, over okay. 6,000 ticket buyers. What's your most anticipated movie of the summer? Transformers, Rise of, of the Beast, yeah, of course, course. Be the one. was yeah. one of the top ones. And look, I mean, if you look up the dictionary definition of Transformers, mm -hmm. Optimus Prime, there's a photo right there. You don't <laughs> need to know a lot going into it. If you're really not into Transformers, you don't know it. This one's actually set in the 90s okay. before the events of the first one. So you can go right back to where they started. It stars Anthony Ramos and Dominic Fishback. But what I love about this one is, you know how the Transformers are normally like these cars and these vehicles? Yeah. This time around we have beasts. We have these animals. Oh. And they're voiced by really great uh, voice actors. Oscar winner Michelle oh, wow. Yeoh voices a falcon. She's very majestic. How cool. And Pete Davidson gets a lot of laughs. He voices a Porsche and somehow it works and it's so perfect. Porsche, you said? Okay. A Porsche. Okay. Yes. All right. Not to <laughs> do home cooking, but let's. So Peacock has something everyone's buzzing about based on a true story. Based on a true story and it's actually not based on no, a true story. Not. So many movies and TV shows are, but it's an eight episode series, like you said, streaming on Peacock. It stars one of my favorites, Kaylee Cuoco. And if for anybody who loves like only murders in the building mm -hmm. and they love mm -hmm. true crime, mm -hmm. but kind of with humor, right? This is so funny. She's married to actually Chris Messina's character. She's yeah. married to him. He's a former tennis star. Mm -hmm. um, he is out of work now because everybody loves pickleball, if that gives you an idea <laughs> of some of the humor in it. The pickleball jokes are worth tuning in. I sat down to watch this, and I watched the entire thing in one sitting. Oh, amazing. It's killer. It's truly okay, killer. Okay, I want to see that. And she's dying. Dying. And she was pregnant when she filmed it, so they wrote it into the series. But it's about a serial killer that they bring into the fold, and they blackmail him into doing a podcast. It's How so hilarious. Really good. Okay, I know Hoda just chatted with Eva Longoria, oh, yeah. and she adores her. Yes. This project... I am dying it's to see. It's called Flamin' Hot. Yeah. yeah. If you want a hot, hot, hot movie, <laughs> this is the literal version of it. It is about the creation of the Flaming Hot brand of Cheetos. Cheetos. I, I know. I'm dying. A janitor. Yes. Yeah. It's the story. Yeah, exactly. You know, because you spoke to her. This is her feature film directorial debut, does. which you know that, Hoda. Mm -hmm. It's the story of Richard Montanez. Mm -hmm. It's a rags to riches story. Mexican-American started out working as a janitor at Frito-Lay in the late 70s, early 80s, mm -hmm. worked his way up to become this huge marketing executive, really knew what was missing in the Latino community, mm -hmm. revolutionized the chip. Now, he claims he created the flavoring and that. Yeah. That has been disputed. Yeah. Eva doesn't, it doesn't matter. She really wanted to tell his story. Yeah, totally. It is truly is a triumph. He became this huge marketing executive. And it's just, it's a feel good. If you like cheesy snacks and cheesy movies, this is the That's one. That's the one. Yeah, All right. exactly. So how about something the whole family can go to? We need one of those. Okay, so I always bring you both a rom-com and a family movie. Yeah. And this is one all rolled into wow. one. This is Elemental from Pixar. Okay. And it is set in Element oh, City. And it is the story of these little beings, a fire and air and Ooh. earth and a water. And this guy, Wade, who's a little, wa he's, you know, he's a go with the flow kind of guy. Uh, he is a water being. He falls in love with a fire. Uh, a fire uh, character, yes. and we know the elements don't mix, mm -hmm. but there are tons of puns in this oh, one, I by the way. This. Opposites this react is the tagline for this. It is so adorable. Oh, we well, both know Pixar. Yeah, so, we yeah. do. This looks yeah. like so yeah. much it's fun. Really, cute. really, really cute. Um, okay. okay, thank you, thank you. And we should mention, based on a true story, is from our streaming service. Yeah, Peacock. Peacock. No. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. Again, Nikki. We'll be back right after this.
going to do it for us. Next week, we have Michelle Pfeiffer. Plus, Neil Patrick Harris stops by. And Tia Mori and Chance the Rapper hits our summer concert stage. Have a great weekend, y'all. Bye. Bye. Over the years, I have been lucky enough to step into the Today Show kitchen and watch the best chefs from around the world teach us some incredible recipes. And we had made that pesto, which was, oh, exactly. darn. Oh, you know, I almost got that, out of this one clean. Cool. Turn it down. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I had one job. None of which I've mastered because, well, I didn't know the first thing about how to cook. But those days are behind me for good, and I'm starting to find a little confidence in the kitchen. Now, culinary superstar Bobby Flay sharing his love of seafood from coast to coast. Today, we're going to be making crab cakes with an orange chive tartar sauce, and then try a West Coast-inspired crispy fried fish taco with a mango black bean salsa. I love tacos. I have a lot to learn about seafood, and I cannot wait to give this a shot. So let's get started. Bobby Flay. Bobby Flay. It's really Bobby Flay? It's really Bobby Flay. I mean, we have a long history together. Yes, we do. We've, we've, we've made lots of food on the Today Show together. We have, and you've even been called in to try to teach me to cook a long time ago. Yes, and we're, we're back. We're back. <laughs> okay, guess what? It didn't stick, but now it is. I'm learning a few things. So I've been brought in to teach you, um, you know, a couple of things. Seafood, but also frying seafood. Okay, so what, what, what's our plan today? So the, so the plan today is, first we're going to shape the crab cakes. Make the tartar sauce, fry the crab cakes, make the mango black bean salsa, prepare the batter and fry the fish, plate and serve. We're gonna start by cutting a shallot. My instinct would be to cut off these edges. Yes, exactly, cut okay. off the edges. And then exactly. I know, I've learned that you should, when you have a round thing, you need to give yourself a flat edge. Yeah, so cut it in half. We're gonna make cuts in, in two different directions. First, oh. we're gonna go like this. Are we mincing? We're gonna, yeah, we're gonna make them very fine. Okay because this is actually going to be in the crab cake and we're not going to take it out. So we want it oh, to be good um, little easy bite to, size. Exactly right. The one thing I always tell people when, they're, when, they're, when they have a knife in their hand, don't daydream. Just think about exactly what you're doing at the very moment. Why exactly. would I daydream when being with you is a dream? Oh my goodness. Okay. Ding. Crab cake is over. Okay, I know. <laughs> I would, so I did that and now I may just chop chop. Nope, nope. Oh. And then you're gonna and then you're gonna take your, your hand. Oh and, right. Do you remember this? This kind of this thing, right? Hold yeah, it together. Exactly. I hate this. You hate <laughs> I hit too hard. And I have to hold it like this because otherwise it's splayed yes, out. That's ex that's okay. Exactly. And you and that and that's how you're gonna create a like a the fine little, dice. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. This is so unnatural. It is? You look, 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 look how beautiful. Seat. It's gorgeous. Cute. Now, so if, if, you know, a couple of months ago, if somebody handed you a shallot, do you think you could get it diced like no, that? No, definitely yeah, not. Yeah, exactly. So we're going to put our shallots in here. Okay. So neutral oil, like canola or something, or vegetable? Canola oil, vegetable oil. You know okay. what I've been using? A lot of avocado oil. With. Whose big bit is this? I think that's mine. It's definitely yours, Bobby. I'll it's take not credit mine. for it. Okay. Okay. There's two different um, ways to saute. Uh, so, like in this case, we're sautéing the shallots. Yeah. With color is sautéing, and sweating it is cooking it without color. Okay. So what we what we want to do is sweat this. Okay. So we're 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 softening the shallots. Mm -hmm. We're bringing out all the natural flavors. You can smell how delicious it that smells is. so good. Because. Dumb question alert. How do I know it's soft if I can't touch it? It's too hot. Well, you, you're feeling it with your. Yeah. Um, you can also you can also taste it. Oh yeah, they're big on tasting. <laughs> they're big. Really opens up the pores. It still tastes hard to me. Okay, so then keep sauteing that. Okay. And they're starting to get a little color, so let's be careful. Okay. All right. I think that's fine. Okay, cool. I'm turning it off. Great. All right, so we're going to 
put this into our bowl. Mm. Oh, we forgot to have a toast. Oh my goodness. Bobby! We're drinking already. I know, that's how we do on this show. Ginger beer margaritas. Okay. Mmm. Mm. Whoo! Got a little kick to it. Yes, I like it. Does. it. Yes, I it like does. It. All right, now that we're liquored up, what do okay. we do next? You, how are you with zesting? Well, I mean, I think, I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> okay, just be careful. You don't want to, like, zest your fingers. This is an ongoing thing. I don't know if I'm right or left. Can I, can I, can I show you? Can please, I show you something? You okay, please? yes, okay. So you can do this one of two ways. You can actually do it like this. Oh, I've never seen that. And what happens is the zester then captures the zest there, and you can go just go oh, like that. Oh, I like that. You like that? Yeah. Okay, let me try that. Try that. Well, just be careful with it. They are sharp. <laughs> this is painful for you, isn't it? No, it's not at all. How much? Can I be done That's testing? Enough. That's okay. enough. Well, now we, we need lemon, lemon too. Okay. Yeah. Can I be done zesting? <laughs> oh I've God. had enough of zesting. Zesting. <laughs> Death by zesting. Has the, the zester ever killed anyone? Okay. I don't know. All right, that's enough lemon. Okay, good. <laughs> I can't watch it anymore. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? Avoid all recipes with zesting. There will be no zesting. Who okay. needs zest? No. Okay. Now, um, we're going to take all this mayonnaise. Okay. And the mayonnaise obviously is going to give it some richness. Mm -hmm. Every like mayonnaise always tastes good, and yeah. also it's going to help uh, bind the uh, the crab cake itself. Okay. We're going to take one tablespoon, which is that measure yes. of of horseradish. Okay. Horseradish has a good zesty flavor to it. It does. Make sure sinuses open up. Exactly does. I love horseradish. Me too. Uh, How much of that? The one tablespoon of uh, whole grain mustard. Okay. And the thing I like about whole grain mustard is obviously it's going to have that little mustard bite. Yes. And um, <laughs> I just. I, you know what I love about you? This is like the measuring is a guide, which honestly, I, I actually like that because we're not baking, so it doesn't have to be well, exact. That's funny because that's one of the hardest things for me to get used to is that it doesn't have to be all perfect. Especially when you're not baking. Yeah. Okay. okay and half then, tablespoon of whatever this is. Uh, what it's is actually this? Half, half tablespoon of Calabria chilies. They're hot. Mm. Yes. Toss all this crab in here. Oh, okay. Exciting. Okay. Now, where did you get this at the store? This is uh, Maryland Jumbo Lump Crab Meat. Mm -hmm. It's already cooked and it's already clean. Okay. It's, it's not cheap, but it's it's a great product. Yeah. We don't want to mix it yet okay. because we want the crab to stay, you know, in, in pretty big pieces. Okay. You know, you paid money for that texture. Yeah. We don't want to destroy it. Okay. All right. How are you with seasoning? I think one of the things that separates a home cook from a professional cook is how aggressive they season. Oh. And, I, and I'm talking about just salt and pepper. Okay. Okay. So this is kosher salt, which is what I always use. Mm -hmm. And when you pick up kosher salt in your fingers, you mm -hmm. can feel it. Yeah. And when I season with kosher salt, I crush it in my fingers and then I just go like this. Okay. Should and I add more? Add some more. Exactly. Ooh, and more then, or no? And then pepper. pepper. Okay. And like. How's that? More. Oh. Now we're going to take two tablespoons of Wonder Flour. Now what is Wonder Flour? What one, is so it's one draw. Oh, it's one not wonder, wonder. Wonder. I wonder what wonder yeah. is. There you go, wonder flower. Jump it in. Yes. So wonder flower is kind of sprinkle it around. Wonder flower is um, it's already steamed and cooked, so it's oh. going to dissolve a lot easier than say all-purpose flour, which is still raw. Oh, okay. Okay. And this is what's going to help bind our crab cakes. Now we're gonna we're gonna you can you can start to fold it in, mm -hmm. and I want you to fold as opposed to stirring. All right. I remember folding from baking. Exactly. See, this is starting to look really good. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things about these crab cakes, Savannah, is that we walk a tightrope in terms of whether or not they're going to hold together. And what we're doing is we're giving up the idea of adding lots of breadcrumbs and lots of filler mm -hmm. and keeping it about the crab. But at the same time, we want it to stay together. So we're not using those crutches. We're not using the crutches. So we want flavor. So this is where um, we're gonna get we're gonna have to get our hands dirty. How do you feel about that? I, I feel good if I'm wearing these gloves. Oh my goodness! Bugs it's not me, very so. glamorous, but I'm gonna go with okay, it. Okay, no, I see, I know. Okay, so I'm just making a little ball. So yeah, so you, so you make a ball like, like this. A round ball. Okay. To I start. It would be flat. Almost like a meatball, but then what I do is I I make it into almost like a burger. Oh. Okay. How's that look? Should I make it a little flatter? Like yeah, yours? like that. See if you can make it like that. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like that. Okay, let's see if we can tell who is this who's. Okay, that's definitely the professional. Yes, we can. Yes, <laughs> yes, we most certainly can. When did you start cooking? How did you learn? I started cooking when I was 17 years old. Huh? I dropped out of high school. Wow. And I went to work in a restaurant because I needed a job. And I've been doing the same thing every day. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> it's 10 years later. <laughs> wow. It's been a decade. You look so young. <laughs> Thanks. Do okay. these cook 
or chill or what? They're gonna chill. <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna chill. Okay. So they, and, and chilling them is actually one of the things that's gonna help hold them together. Okay. Okay. So you want to put them in the refrigerator? I will. They look so good. Okay. All right, tartar sauce time. Let's All right, do so, it. so chives are in the onion family. Mm -hmm. um, I love chives, and I like to I like to cut them, like I like to cut the edge off. What edge? Like I just I like to cut the edge off like yeah, this. Yeah, I don't like those friends. And then okay. and then start here. Okay. So then you have a nice 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 even edge. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then again, just kind of that rocking method. Mm -hmm. That's what I gotta work. On. I'm trying just to hide my fingers like you. Very about. very as fine as you can get them. Okay. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're doing a great job. Okay. Don't daydream. I know. Trust. That's really good. Thank you. And also incredibly consistent. Oh, good. I'm so delighted. I mean, look at that. Okay. That's really, really good. I love it. And do we have enough? Um, yeah. Okay. Between the two of us, I think okay. we have plenty. All right. Just throw it all in? Yeah, toss okay. it in there. So sure. now we're going to stir everything okay. together. So we're going to start with some orange zest okay. now that you're a professional exactly. zester. Exactly. Uh, we have some capers that are chopped up. Mm, okay. Okay. Good, nice, salty flavor. It seems chunky and, for a sauce. But it's a, it's a, it's a tartar sauce okay. and, and, and it's, it, it has texture, which is great. So these are the um, cornichon or oh. gherkins as you like to call them. Gherkins. They're, they're pickles. They're oh. baby, baby pickles. I love a baby yeah. pickle. Chef's, chef tax. Orange oh, juice. Orange, orange juice, really? Orange juice, yeah. Okay. And then salt and pepper, always. Oh, okay. Sprinkle, sprinkle technique. Crush. Crush and sprinkle. Two tablespoons of that vinegar. Mm. Just do it by eye. Okay. I can't do it by do eye. It. Do it by. You do can you do promise? it. I promise. I, I'm right. I'm standing right here. Okay. Perfect. That's one. A little more. That's two. Good. Really? God, <laughs> I feel like a pro. Killing the game. So you're just gonna mix this all together mm -hmm. um, until it's well incorporated, mm -hmm. and then. You know, we'll, we'll let this sit for like a half an hour. We have a lot of flavors in there. They, we just want all the flavors to kind of melt together. Looks Here, good. You, you have to taste this. Okay. Oh, yeah. You make sure you're happy with Especially all the seasoning, seasoning. etc. Okay. Oh, that's good. Ooh, it's got a little, that thing. Yes, exactly. That, that's, the, that's the pickling, uh, that, that's the, um, as you like to call them, the gherkins or the cornichon. <laughs> we can leave it at room temperature. Okay. Um, you just put a little in the, ser in the serving bowl mm -hmm. so it looks nice and pretty. Yeah. And we can save the rest for later. Okay. If there's any leftover. Well, that's great. All right, perfect. Let's make some crab cakes. Okay, should I go get them? Please do. This is so fun. You're doing so much of the work. <laughs> we're gonna take some Wondra flour. Wondra, okay? how much Wondra? Let's make sure we have I wonder how much Wondra. <laughs> okay. Salt and pepper. Okay. And, and this, this is something that you should know in general. When you're doing a dredging station, like yeah. if you're making cutlets of chicken where it's like yeah. flour, egg, Breadcrumbs, mm -hmm. you season every layer. Okay. Otherwise, it's going to be bland. Okay. Exactly. Interesting. Yeah, stir it around so it's just seasoned. Mm -hmm. And then, so basically, what we're going to do is now, this is, you have to be very gentle here, Svenna. We have the crab cakes, they're nice and chill. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to kind of go like this. Very, just top and bottom, or should I get the sides? You can get the sides too. Okay. Okay. You're going to drop it right in there? We're going to drop it right in. Let okay. me show you. So basically, a good, a good way to do that is like this. Okay, and they're gonna fry. The so you wanna do the same thing. Out. So very like, gentle, yeah, gentle. very gentle. Treat them with kid gloves, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Okay, you does know? that seem good? Yep, put it on there and just very carefully. 
Don't drop it. Don't be mad. Beautiful. What we're trying to accomplish is creating a nice crust on the outside on all parts of the crab cake. Okay. And it's going to take about three minutes on each side. Okay, I was going to say, I'm going to have to flip these over. because. Yeah, at some yes. point. Okay. We're going to flip this in a few seconds. Okay. Now, again, you want to be careful here. And what I, what I like to do is kind of like turn it away from me. Oh. So if it splatters, it goes that way as opposed to this way. Okay. And see, look, nice and crusty. Looks nice. And we didn't, it didn't fall apart. No. Or, yeah. If this falls apart, I'm gonna die. In no, shape. it's not gonna fall apart. You just be a good crab cake. Right. Hey! I know, but you right? did it right at you. Oh. Just be careful. Okay. Go, go, you know. Oh, okay, okay. All right, so move, move this one over here. Okay. Okay. Okay, now this guy. So this guy, here's what you can do. You can just use this guy mm -hmm. as the as the, uh, as the as the background. Okay. Right, exactly. But, okay. Use him to flip it over. Okay, and then, well, oh, come on now. Now they're friends, they right. don't want to get apart. Okay, now flip it this way? Flip it. This way. Yeah. But I find that to be harder. Okay. Oh no, it's falling apart. I knew it was too good to be true. Oh, Bobby, we got a loose crab piece. No, it's okay. What do we do? There's one little crab piece, All don't right. worry about it. You know what? Whew. Here's the thing. They'll know they're homemade. Yes. That, and that's really good. That's a really good thing. That's true. All right, so basically now we're going to start to take these out and we're going to put them on a paper towel yeah. so that they just drain a little bit. Drain it. Okay. Should I go for it? Yeah, go for it. I can't lose another one. Gorgeous. This is Bobby's. The good one. The good one. Put this on your plate. Nice. Can I use my fingers? Yeah. And then this is the number two. Yep. Yeah, hold on. Nice job. This is the problem child. Okay, this guy wants to fall apart. Don't do it. Don't it fall apart. It looks great. It does. It looks it's great. It's gonna taste good. All right. A little salt and pepper on top mm -hmm. while it's still while it's still warm. I'm doing your is that too much? No, doing your... That's fine. We have crab cakes. Um, and then we're gonna put them on here. Okay. Come on, bring them on over. Nice. Gosh, these look really good. Don't they? Yeah. Nice and crusty. Oh, and hot. Look at that. Okay. I'm going to put this Gorgeous. on the table. Gorgeous. Yes, put it on the table. Are you so proud of us? I am very proud of you. We're gonna fry some fish, but before we get into that, let's make our black bean mango salsa. Prioritizing what you do first, second, third, etc. Mm -hmm. in any meal is really important. But we we know that we can make the black bean salsa, the black bean and mango salsa ahead of time. Let it sit, have it done, because the fish when we cook it, then we want to eat. We're gonna start by uh, dicing an, uh, an onion. We need half of a red onion. Okay, that's gonna be good enough for government work. Here we go. 
Exactly. I'm not gonna beat Bobby Flay today. No, you're not, but these look really good. Well, let's do the mango next. Okay. Mango yeah. is a very tricky fruit. It's a very tricky fruit. Um, first of all, when you pick a mango, you want it to be ripe. You want it to have some give as you kind of okay. push your thumb into yeah. it. Making these stand up is really important. And then you're gonna go up down both sides of the mango so that you get these two lobes. One like oh. this, and then one like this. No pit, no pit, no pit. Yeah, the okay. pit is in there. Okay, and then you, I'm trying and then, to avoid the pit. And then of course you can, you can go around the sides to get these little pieces as well. Yeah. You don't want to lose. I can't see where that. Pit and then basically, this is like the pits in here. But I just eat this. Oh, mm. I like that. So good, so ripe. Mm -hmm. We're gonna make like a, almost like diamonds in the in the in the mango. You don't want to mm -hmm. cut all the way through, just to the skin. Mm -hmm. Then you're gonna turn it, and you're gonna go this way. Oh, I'm making like a little. I actually cut an avocado sometimes like this. Yes, exactly right. You can scoop the you can scoop the mango. Mm -hmm. Right with a spoon. Oh, look okay. at that. Okay. There's a handful of different ways to cut a mango. I think this is the, I think this is the prettiest way and, and the easiest way. That's now cool. some of my pieces are kind of big. And Don't worry about it. Okay. We're making tacos. Everything's gonna be fine. Exactly. I use canned black beans all the time. They're always cooked perfectly. Good. Strain them out. Throw them in there. Good. Because I didn't want to make beans. Okay. okay. <laughs> I didn't want to make beans, so you're not gonna make beans. Okay. Okay. So we pour have... the margarita. No, I'm no, no. Okay. <laughs> well, Might close. Good. Yeah. Close. The lime juice. Lime juice. Okay. Yes. Okay, now now a couple of more things we're gonna mm -hmm. put in here. Some honey. Okay, how much? Um, I don't know, open it up. Let's do this. Oh boy. Let's do this. Uh, pour some in. It's gonna... Pour some in, yeah. what does that even mean? That's good, right? A little more. Really? Yeah. Okay. That's good. Whatever oh. you say, honey. I've actually, I forgot one more thing. Oh. We, have, we, have, we have to put the, the jalapeno in there. Oh, okay. We have, to, we have to dice that. Okay. Okay, let's cut the stem off. Cut it in half, lengthwise. Okay. okay. You're gonna take the inside pith mm -hmm. and the uh, and the seeds out. So now we just have the, the flesh of the pepper. Mm -hmm. And then you're gonna turn it upside down. Yeah, flatten it. Mm -hmm. Push it down and then yeah. you're gonna dice it. Put some olive oil in there. How much? It says one quarter cup. Fire What's away. That? Can I measure Go. it? No. I want okay. you in the bowl. Okay, okay, I'm in I the bowl. I want you in the bowl. I'm present. Exactly. Because that seems this, like, okay, that seems like a, is that enough? A little more, because you feel like you're doing it, okay? Yeah, That's good. good okay. And then and then you're gonna season this with salt and pepper, because we season everything with salt and pepper. Yes. Look okay. at you. Look at I'm doing your technique. A little more? A little, little something salty, and then, and then that's good. Okay. And then some black pepper. Okay. And stir. Stir this up. Okay. This is looking good. All right. Some of my big mango chunks are a little aggressive, but it's good. It actually looks very good. I'm gonna add some cilantro. How do okay. you feel about cilantro? Um, I like the flavor. I've never chopped it or anything. Okay, so let's do this. Okay. Make a little room on your board. Mm -hmm. You're going to take the flowers off the stems. Okay. Like all these leaves, you mean? The leaves, yeah. That's the part of cilantro that you want to eat. Okay, that's good. Okay. So then just kind of make it into a pile like mm -hmm. this, and you're going to coarsely chop it. So you put your hand on top of the knife and you just kind of rock back and forth, right? And, you, and then you kind of go this back and forth That's this fun. way. This makes me feel like I'm on a cooking and just, show. And, and, get, and put it back into a pile. Mm -hmm. Okay, oh, it sounds good. That's coarsely chopped herbs. Okay. As opposed to finely chopped, okay. nice and coarse. Throw them in there. Okay, mm -hmm. so we're gonna, we're gonna stir this up. Stir it. You okay. taste it and tell me what you think. Okay. Mmm, I like it. Do you think it needs anything? Need. I, I think it needs a little more salt. Okay. And this is the way you cook. If you're not chewing, mm -hmm. you're not cooking. Mm -hmm. It's also beautiful. It is. It's gorgeous. Gorgeous. Okay. Next step. Next step. Let's let's fry some fish. Let's do it. And what I like to do before I deep fry, what? take a big deep swig. Okay, let's do Should it. Should we do it? Yes, absolutely. It's the deep cheers. fry swig. Okay. So instead of the deep <laughs> beer batter. I love that you drink first and then cheers. Well, <laughs> I didn't know we were choosing. You, you were prepping, okay. Like a bad okay. Form. So let's let's get let's start okay. with rice flour, okay? okay. How much? So we're gonna do equal parts. We we'll do one cup, two equal parts of water, and you're going to okay. whisk. Lee, what we're trying to achieve here mm -hmm. is a very light batter, mm -hmm. so that it has some crispiness, but you can definitely see and taste the fish. Okay. Okay, that's the key. Now you told me that fish that fried doesn't have to be bad for you. But I mean, isn't frying like just terrible? Well, well, f frying can be bad for you if, if, like, for instance, the the oil is is not is not hot enough, mm -hmm. and it and it seeps in throughout all the protein. Oh. But if it's just crisping the outside of it and repelling it, then mm -hmm. it's totally fine. Okay. Now, how's that? Okay. So that's fine. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little bit of 
of this of this rice flour, mm -hmm. and we're going to use this as a dredge, kind oh. of like, you know, like, we, yeah. we don't even have to measure it. All right, we, just, we can just, and then we're going to season every, every layer, as mm -hmm. we said. Remember? Look at my heavy hands. I know. Are you seasoning more now than ever before? Yeah, especially with your eyes on. I, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble. How's that? It's good. Uh, season now, the fish I, too. Should I? Do I need to whisk? Oh my season gosh, the fish. Really? Jeez. Yes. We don't want we don't want bland foods, man. No, I do not. Jeez, that's a lot. I would be, I would just be afraid it'd that's be good. like over salted. That's good. No nope, pepper too. Yep. Okay. That's a that's a thick, dense piece of fish. We okay. want it, we want to taste it. But I didn't have through. to do both sides. That's fine. Side. That's okay. totally fine. So okay, so we're gonna dredge this, mm -hmm. meaning we're gonna take the fish, make sure and, and hit it on all sides mm -hmm. on the flour, on in the flour first. Flour first and then. Oh, yes, I would have done this then this. No, because this is actually going to hold on to this. Okay. All right. So should I use tongs or just do? Use your hand. Okay. Right, so roll dredging. it around. Yeah, roll it around. All sides kind of yep. deal. Okay. okay. And then, and then, pat it so that you get the excess off. Mm -hmm. That's enough. Like that. Yep. And in here. Yep. I want to be careful. Okay. Let's just do this. Yeah, with me. Okay. okay. Three hundred sixty-five degrees. Okay. Let's, there's that thermometer. Now you can okay. do the you can do the rest okay, of them. Okay. Let me do. And this is going to be a very, very light batter, mm -hmm. nice and crispy. I hope you don't like that shirt because I'm okay. getting flour all over it. No problem. Okay. Well, send me your bill. I'm just going to keep drinking. <laughs> That's what I recommend. I love coming to your kitchen. There's always alcohol in it. <laughs> I know. Savannah's Syrupy Kitchen. You're doing great. I love the technique. Okay. And also, like, you're, 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 you're moving really well in the kitchen. All right, so we're going to let this cook for about five minutes okay. total. And then we have a wire rack there so that the oil drips through to the bottom. Okay. Just be very gentle and also be very careful. It's very hot oil. You can't even see anything. I don't even know if I'm getting one. Okay, wait. wait. Yeah, see? Okay. See, it's like a stealth-like batter. Just yes. touch that. Okay. Nice and crispy. Right. Let's, did let's I get enough on there? You did great. Let's get the fish out of the pot. Okay. <laughs> it's been five minutes. Does this Beautiful. look right to you? Yep, put it on the uh, tray. Looks great. Look okay. at that. That's gorgeous. It Ooh, I didn't stick the landing. Down. So great. Okay. It so looks light nice. and crispy. It really does. Here are your two favorite friends. Oh, geez. Here we go. A okay. little salt and pepper. Okay. Just on top while it's still hot and the oil's still warm. Oh my gosh, I really overdid that one. Well, that's a salt. It's okay. And also, when you season, you want to season from up here. Why? Because otherwise, you're going to have clumps of salt. Well, that's what I did. Too get. close. You're right. Exactly. Well, that's what happened. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Nice. Can we Done. eat? Yes, let's eat. You get okay. the fish, I'll get the salsa. All right. Let's do it. But it's not it's not just your TV. I actually learned something I know, today. I know. How are you gonna do create your fish taco? Okay, so we have some tortillas here. Yeah. Nice and warm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that looks like a nice tortilla. Um, I'm gonna teach you a secret. Don't okay. take the one on the top, take the one in the middle oh. because it's more pliable. Oh, how interesting. You see it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I take a little avocado relish. Mm -hmm. And then you can take a piece of fish. Mm -hmm. Fish on top. Mm. Oh my gosh. A little mango salsa. Mm -hmm. Thank 
you. Oh my gosh, this is so good. Right? Yeah. And then what I like to do is just kind of squeeze a lime on top. Oh, yeah. That's good. And then you can take a little cilantro, mm -hmm. maybe just a sprig, and put it on top. You can just pick up your tortilla. Mm and you have a fish taco. Oh my gosh, this is a big bite. Turn the camera away, it's not well, you, pretty pretty. Taste, taste the fish, you know, it's okay. like. Okay. Mm. Oh my God. <laughs> it's so good, don't look at me. It's but so good. It, it's light and crispy, mm. you did a great job cooking the fish. And this is obviously great for, you know, to make a taco. But also like, you can also do like, serve it as, you know, fish and chips. Oh, my kids would love that with this ketchup. Yeah. Just remember this. Flavor is very important, but contrast of texture is, is just as important okay. in, in eating and cooking. All right, I gotta try this uh, crab cake mm. now. Mm. That is so good. It tastes like crab. It tastes like crab. And that's the cake. I gotta say, that's the best crab cake I ever had. Best crab cake you ever made. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Only <laughs> crab cake I ever made, but yum, that is delish. Mm. And I love this chunky tartar sauce. This is delicious. I am so proud of myself. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. Thank Cheers. Thank you. You've been on a long journey with me, Bobby. Savannah, invite me back anytime. I'm here to teach. I Over the years, I have been lucky enough to step into the Today Show kitchen and watch the best chefs from around the world teach us some incredible recipes. We had made that pesto, which was, oh, exactly. darn. Oh, Again, I almost got that, out of this one clean. Cool. Turn it down. <laughs> oh my God, I had one job. None of which I've mastered because, well, I actually don't know the first thing about how to cook. But I'm putting those days behind me for good. And I'm starting to find a little confidence in the kitchen. Today, Chef Jet Tila is going to bring the heat and teach me a few tricks for an easy at home barbecue. We'll be making pulled pork sandwiches with an Asian apple slaw, plus a side of hearty cornbread. I am feeling ready to tackle this one. So let's get started. I'm so happy you're here. It's great to be here. I'm glad that you want to learn to teach me foundational stuff because I don't know anything. Have you heard? I don't buy that, Savannah. Oh. I've been watching you cook and come. you've come a long way. So what do we do? What's our All plan? Right. Our plan for today is season the pork, sear the meat before braising, cut the vegetables and mix the dressing for the slaw, make and bake the cornbread, shred the pork, assemble the sandwiches, plate and serve. Our barbecue brothers are gonna get mad at us yes. for calling this barbecue. We are um, creating a version of barbecue in the house by braising. Barbecue technically is smoking something for a very long time until okay. it breaks down. Okay, no okay. smoking. Braising is, like, what does that mean, really? Very simply stated, we're gonna take a tough cut of meat mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to cook it uh, slowly with a little bit of liquid so all of the toughness breaks down. Oh, we're gonna cook the crap out of we're it. We're gonna cook the crap out of it okay. and make it delicious. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna mince an onion. Ooh. Yeah, so, um, I don't know if I've minced before. Have you diced? Oh, yes. It just means smaller dice. Okay. That's all it means. This is one thing I learned. Show me. When you have a round thing, do you, make, you gotta oh, make oh, a flat side. Oh, let me side. show you another way. So can you cut down, yeah. but not all the way through? Okay, yes, Just leave it, leave it connected. I gotcha, like this, okay. You're totally killing it. I'm... My, what a sharp knife this is. <laughs> Isn't that sharp, though? For yeah, real. it does make it easier, assuming you don't cut yourself. Now, we're gonna come inwards now. You see, we're gonna follow the lines. Yeah, here. okay. You lead with a tip down, and then and then rock. You know that rocking oh, motion, yeah. see? Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. See how that yeah. feels? Yeah, uh -huh, I do. You're a great cook. It's just all about believing you're a great cook. You're, you're killing it. You so. are a sweet talker. No, it's the truth. Look what you're doing. You're gonna make me cry, or maybe <laughs> it's just the onion. Yeah, okay. it, it's definitely the onion, okay. definitely the onion. Are these mincy enough? Those are beautifully mincy. And we're gonna teach you to do a dry rub. So dry rub is basically a, a seasoning mix that yep. goes on a uh, piece of beef for barbecue. We're gonna apply it to the braise. Okay. Uh, so. Brown sugar. Brown sugar, how about? Oh, you're one of those put a piece of bread in the brown <laughs> sugar. How much? Uh, we're gonna go three, two, one. So three tablespoons. Okay. So salt, two. Okay. And again, that you can. That's a lot of salt. And this is coarse salt, I uh, see. I mean, I know it seems like a lot of salt, but it is for four pounds of pork butt. I like paprika. Mm -hmm. That was coriander. Okay. That was ground coriander. This, this is, is like garlic. garlic powder, yeah. Yep. The one pepper. Yeah, one pepper, yeah. You can either whisk it or stir it or whatever you want. You Look can, at that. You just made a driver, so you gotta taste everything. Even the bread. Go easy, you can go easy if you want. Oh, that's delicious. What do you think? I Isn't like that it. nice? Sweet, a little bit of um, savoriness. Nice. Then we're gonna do 
Pork butt. I like to say pork behind. <laughs> you know, my mother watches this show. That's right, that's right. There, you, okay. grab it, you grab it, open it. We'll talk about the actual muscle. Pork yeah, booty. Want, the pork booty. All right, pork so Pork rear end. There are so many words for that part of isn't the anatomy. There, um, pork, pork tushy. The irony is it doesn't even come from that part of the pork. It doesn't? No. Well, why do we call it pork to uh, So if you look at the shoulder here, Right of of the four the yeah. four end the four inch shoulder two hoofs two here. hoofs right here so this is um uh there's two shoulder there's two pork shoulders mm -hmm. right the lower part is called the picnic which is more the upper arm okay right and this is actually up here it's the most versatile in my opinion uh, cut of the pork because it's got the perfect fat ratio mm -hmm. it's got the perfect connective tissue it's great for this okay and what we're gonna do is cut it into six equal pieces okay so I'm gonna take my butt right here. <laughs> Take that butt. Oh wait, we haven't had a sip. Uh, we always drink on starting from scratch. Cheers. Cheers to you. Cheers to you. We're drinking a um, French 75. Ooh, this is my good. wife's play on it. Nice. Um, it's a hibiscus flower. So gin, honey, mm. hibiscus, and champagne. That Cheers is to you. delicious. Cheers. And to Mrs. Tila. To, uh, to all family. Yes. Yeah, those will get you in trouble. Woo! Super easy to drink. All right, we're liquored up. Let's get the knives and the yeah, pork out. So I'm really just gonna cut six equal pieces. Yeah, you can do it that way. You can do it this way. Well, what would three. you do? I would. I, so in my mind, I'm always thinking a a tile becomes a slice, a slice becomes a dice. That's like my overarching guidelines. So it's a tile mm -hmm. right now, right? Okay. And the tile becomes a slice, which is only two long pieces, and then the slice becomes a dice. And look at you. You got six pieces right there. Even knife cuts are critical for even cooking. The tile becomes a slice, yep. which then becomes and a then the dice. And then the slice becomes a dice. And do it thrice. <laughs> there One, you go. One, two, three. See, look at that. Okay. And that way, um, you kind of, uh, it's a regiment mm -hmm. to, to tell yourself how to cut things. That's gorgeous. Is this good? Yeah, that's These perfect. guys aren't too big? Okay. Nope, not at all. I'm following your lines, but okay, this yeah. is fun. So now the spice robe. I like to kind of season in this tray. Show me your technique. I, I'll do one. So I'm like, I'm not being shy. Like mm -hmm. I can, you can use all, all this. There's sides. one way. Here's another way to do it. Let's it, go to town. Good. Can I ask a dumb question? There's no such thing, oh, Savannah. Sorry, another dumb question. Dumb question alert. There dumb question <laughs> alert. Well, like, could you ever, it's so tasty. Could I put it on a vegetable? A thousand percent. Okay. Is now, would fine? you like sprinkle the rest? You wouldn't you want to. Go, like, go, go, Yeah, like go. just sprinkle. Get See? in there. Um, okay. It's about feeling your way through it. And mm -hmm. if you didn't taste that rub, yeah. you wouldn't, you'd wouldn't. be a little nervous to apply some. Right, Here. okay. Like we can wash um, hands. Since wash we hands. touched raw pork, yeah. I will I clear and wash hands. Raw How's pork, rub. We're okay. doing great. And I'm gonna crank up uh, your Dutch oven mm -hmm. and get that going. Let's talk about braising really quick. First thing we're gonna do, <laughs> all right, don't leave me hanging, girl. Here. Cheers. Cheers. Sorry, together. I just wanna celebrate every step. Perfect. Okay. Um, first step is always going to be browning your protein. Okay. Right? Uh, Hot pan. This is not there. a cast iron. This is a oh, no. Dutch Say oven. It. Uh, it is. So I put those two together. It is a cast iron Dutch oven. Oh, okay. How's Great. That Lovely. Yeah. Um, enough oil. You can measure if you want, but I'm. I, we, for me today, we're going to cook by feel. Okay. I like that. Now, it's hot. Do it's, I wait for the oil to get hot and start bubbling or anything? You know, you can always wait for a little bit of white smoke. Yeah. You can actually do a test. So why don't you take a piece and kind of touch it. Mm -hmm. And if you hear the ch, we're in good shape. It's not a very wide tongue. Right? Okay. Here, no. You hear the ch. I hear it. I totally hear it. Now, how many, it. like, am I, is this a don't crowd the pan situation? This is cold. This is hot. It's always don't crowd a pan situation when you're browning something. Let's okay. talk about some basics while we're waiting for the brown. Number one, uh, don't we don't mess with it. Another thing we're building, a concept of fond. Have mm -hmm. any of your chefs talked fond. about F-O-N-D, fond? No, fun, fun. but not fond. Yeah, fun. Yeah. Fond. fond is fun. Fond. It's a fabulous. What is it? Um, if you lift that piece up and we look into the pan, you see the bits that are sticking? Yes. Those are gonna become beautiful, crispy bits mm -hmm. that later we're gonna pull up and incorporate into the sauce. Okay. Think about fond as foundation of flavor. Girls mm -hmm. just wanna have fun. That's exactly okay. right. Now, is this one of those deals That's where you gorgeous. sear on all sides? Is, is, you want and I'm gonna have to prop coverage. it up? Yep. Okay. Look at that. Look at that guy. That is now that's we're exactly what we want. Let's get the next contestants up. Absolutely. Can I put it right back on I here? I totally think you can. I think that's going to be somewhat controversial out in the world. Oh, okay. But remember, team, at 165 degrees, yeah. everything is, is And sanitized. just relax, everybody. It's yeah. Chef Tequila. <laughs> I like I think that. he knows what he's doing, See? okay? So don't get all worked trust up about us. it. Trust us. Trust. Don't trust me. Don't but trust, trust Savannah. Him. Okay, these look good. Let's start building flavor. So okay. I'll a little bit of that onion okay. first. Now you can... 
Start scraping that okay. fawn. Scraping up the bits is releasing of the fawn. There you go. It sounds more, it sounds sexier, doesn't it? Release the hounds. Release the hounds. Okay. We're gonna make the braising liquid now. Okay. Uh, and now we're gonna do red wine. Okay. Okay. Um, and you can be any alcohol, but yeah. red wine is gonna go with this kind of darker, richer braise. Okay. So whenever just, you're doing alcohol, just a really good tip because this might be hot and it might flare. There's a small chance. So take a half step back. I like to just put the lip of the bottle here oh. and just pour away. I yeah. don't know what it. Enough cup to is. kind of coat the bottom. Like, see how we're almost is at the that bottom. Good? Now we coat the bottom. That's it. Good. Okay. See how easy that I is. I do. Okay. Yeah. And now you can scrape, use that. Now you've deglazed, you're officially deglazing. Deglazing yeah. all the day long. Once you feel this pan smooth, yes. you've done a great job releasing the font. You're done, okay? Okay. Um, now we're gonna build liquid more. Okay. All right, and... Uh, this is fun. Is that fun? Yeah. Cola is excellent for braising. I will stand on I, that. So is that next, cola? Yeah, that's next. Yeah. Crack that can okay. and give us about a half cup or a cup. The carbonation, the caramel, the sugar, the phosphates. I mean, that's so interesting. Isn't that fun? Think that's more? enough? Beautiful, right there. How fun. Right? Um, and now... Did you I, just make that up? No, no, I use cola to braise carnitas, to braise uh, short ribs. Wow. Yeah, I mean, if you think about the, the flavor of, of, of the cola. Yeah. Now, all right. Now we're gonna add the, the pork back in and we're gonna add okay. more liquid. Okay. But we need a visual cue. We need to know okay. how much. So Here's now am I gonna put all of these guys now, in? Now all here? of it goes in now. It does. Because okay. we're not worrying about crowding the pan. Mm -hmm. See the rate of boil? Yes. I wanna simmer. There's hardly one any more. room for this big old that's, piece of butt. That's perfect. <laughs> okay. A fundamentals of braising. Liquid can never be higher than halfway up the protein. Okay. Okay, so that knowing that. We need barbecue sauce. Am I All tasting right. the barbecue? I think. Remember, Jatila says taste every taste layer. Taste everything. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Taste everything. So knowing, I'll get rid of it. Mm, I like that. And am I going to stir it around so it's yeah, everywhere? Yeah. Perfect, right there. You think we're halfway up the biggest pieces of protein yet? I don't know. I don't want to get the wrong answer, but I'm going to say. I'm gonna say yes. I say we're almost there. Okay. Because okay, now we're gonna account for three hours of braising okay. and some reduction. Mm -hmm. So maybe a, a touch of chicken stock. Okay. A touch of chicken stock. So I don't need too much. No. The chicken stock just sort of to get us to the level we want. That's exactly right, okay. Tina. That's All exactly right. right. We're done. Okay, but don't I need to stir it up? Or just anything? a little bit, because you know what's gonna happen at 325 degrees, mm -hmm. it's gonna simmer in, in the pot. So it's. This looks stir. amazing. I'd eat it right now. To I'm the gonna oven take it, it goes. Away. 325. I want to make sure that the uh, the brazier is in the middle of the oven. So set your rack. Oh. So when the when it's in, it's right in the middle. Okay. And then see you later, braise. Bye. Three good. hours to kill. What should we do? Uh, I think we need to make the Asian apple slaw. Okay. Which are basically in a cook's in a cook's mind, just how to make coleslaw. Okay. But we're gonna start with a, about a cup of mayonnaise. Okay. All right. What does slaw taste like to you? Flavor, yeah. Uh, like hot, little, sour, salty, sweet, or savory. Acidity. Uh, Ooh, yeah. Like acidity. Yes. Yeah. Why right. don't we start with sweet? Okay. And again, uh, we're so gonna you put be a little using, honey. How much? I'm gonna go two tablespoons here. Do you know your your um, 
your your conversions yet? How many T's into the table? Of course I don't. No big deal. We're just going to learn one today. Okay. I think three T's to the table. Oh, you know what? Huh. I never knew that and I've always wanted to know that. There you go. So we've got soy sauce and sesame oil. Okay, that's one, a tablespoon? One each. Okay. One each. And I'm using soy sauce here because it creates salt, creates um, a little bit of umami, the mm. savoriness. If you don't want a soy sauce, go salt. Okay. Now, sesame oil, same thing, one tablespoon, one cup of rice vinegar now. Okay. We're going to work that in slowly. I'm going to get the lumps out. That's wow, dressing. that's nice. All we right. taste it. But it's so important. Ooh, I love that. Is that nice? Toasty, yummy. Oh Good. my gosh, I love that. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you wanted more sweet, you know where to go. If you want more salt, you know where to go. Yes. Again, intuitive cooking. Chop, chop time. Uh, I'm going to start with the cabbage. Okay, this is the intimidating cabbage. We've had... We've had some issues with cabbage before. Talk to me. Oh, okay, great. Hold on, hold on, put it down, put it down, put it down, put it down. Yeah, tame the beast. If it's tame the beast, then it rolls around on us less. Okay, if, woo! If I were to think about everything as tile, slice, dice, yes. I would think this is the tile. Okay. And then what if this was the slice? Okay, I'm not sure I understand that. So but me, okay. I'm just saying like half the half. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. This is the spine of the knife, mm -hmm. right? You're bunched up against the board. If you took a half step back, mm -hmm. you give yourself more room to breathe. Mm -hmm. And if you made sure that spine was flat, mm -hmm. think about perpendicular, mm -hmm. you're mm -hmm. always gonna have straight cuts. Oh, you're just sort of using, I'm just a using visual guide. Yeah, that's it, it's a, it's a, like see. a landmarker. Okay. Julianne apple. Julianne apple. We're looking for about that eighth to quarter of an inch pieces. Is gonna this it, that I'm doing these round slices? Yeah, okay. because uh, the, we're gonna end up with a matchstick. So oh, we'll okay. take that round slice, which and is then our... make little matchsticks. That's oh, it. Oh, I see. I lay them on top of each other. The stack height is totally up to your comfort level. Okay. And then what I do is lay them up, and then same thing. We're uh -huh. done with apple. Okay, good. And now we're gonna go to carrot. I flatten round things, boom, like that. Mm -hmm. And then I lay them on their flat side. Mm -hmm. Now that, oh. that keeps us from getting cut. Okay. And and a carrot's gonna give you a lot of resistance. Tile slice dice. Tile slice that dice. That means first mark it out. Yep. Then slice it, then chop it up a little. That's it, because... Okay, now I see what you mean. So now we can toss it, right? Yep, mm -hmm. exactly. Okay. Would have been good if we had a bigger bowl, though, right? <laughs> so I would do just a good pinch of salt. You mean then... salt and then turn, salt yeah, and turn. exactly. Oh, just a good a good thing of salt right now. Done. And then we'll turn... And then turn it. But that's not going to make it all too salty? No, nope, like that's more. perfect right there. Yeah, because that's why we tasted the dressing first. Yes. So we know kind of how much salt we need. Mm -hmm. That looks awesome, Savannah. Okay, this really does look good. I think it. we can sesame now. Just um, like sprinkle, Yeah, just sprinkle. Zh, 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 and then do another toss. Okay, good? Yeah, looks okay. beautiful. Yes. So we're going to let it chill a little bit. Chill. Yes, chill. Yes, chill. Chill. See okay. you later. Bye-bye. Bye, bro.
pulse braising. Yep. Oh, we're almost there. Uh, the slaw is relaxing. And then we're gonna get to cornbread. I like to break it into different um, components. So we're gonna okay. do dry, wet, cream butter. We right? got the flour. Yeah, so why don't you throw cup of in a um, cup of cornmeal. Yeah. Here you do want to measure. Yes. Right? And That's one thing I do know from baking. Yeah. You kind of have to be on it. Okay. There you go. Four and a half teaspoons of baking powder. Um, you got it. And okay. I usually consider um, salt a dry. Uh, uh, yeah, I would. But here's a good tip. Like usually when you're creaming butter, uh, sugar is not a dry. Like your cookie recipe. Sugar right? goes with the liquids. There it is. Okay. One teaspoon kosher salt. Okay, these it. are dry. Whisk them. Let's whisk them together. Okay. Now you're going to do the wets now mm -hmm. in uh, that large measuring bowl. Okay, and so. You're going to start with eggs. Uh, one thing I learned is you don't do it on the edge. Yes. So that was one thing. Look at you, man. Mm -hmm. You got this. Now I did yeah. learn on one show how to do the one hand crack. Should okay, I try save, it? do that. Do the save the last one, please, okay. for one hand. But it's a real messy situation. There you it's go. not really. Yeah. Like, second hand got in there late. Okay, so work in progress. So let's whisk up those eggs okay. until uh, mm -hmm. totally together, where you can't tell if it's white or if it's yolk. Mm -hmm. Lovely, lovely. And then I'm gonna fly in your milk. Okay. There it is, one and two thirds cup. Mm -hmm. Pour it right in. Pour it right in, whisk that together. Okay. And you've basically separated your dries. Mm -hmm. You've got your wets. And I'm gonna bring in the mixer to cream butter. Have you creamed butter? I have not. Okay, this is important. This is a really good concept okay, to learn. Okay, so is this done enough? That's Good. lovely. Okay. We'll put it to the side. Oh, I love the mixer. Okay, creaming butter. Yes. Uh, or first, do we need to get acclimated with mixer? I actually know this mixer. Okay, good. I have this mixer. Okay. We're gonna go to the paddle. paddle. It says 12 tablespoons of butter. That's one and a half sticks. Yep, so yeah. save us half a stick for, for, for greasing the dish. Mm -hmm. Ooh, and I see this is room temp butter. Yeah, which is really important, team, mm -hmm. that you can't cream butter that's okay. at room temp. Then we need now a cup of sugar. sugar. Yep, okay. cup of sugar. Low so, first. Low. What we're doing here is using the sugar, mm -hmm. because it's coarse, to whip air into the butter. Okay. That's all we're doing. This is gonna give you a really light, fluffy Fluffy, cornbread. okay. That's period, so now you go higher. Okay. Now, what we're looking for is color. Oh. It's a pale yellow. Uh, it's gonna start to become one fluffy, beautiful mass. Mm -hmm. It's gonna get even more pale. Now, I can get obsessive about pushing stuff down Which, on the side, should thank, I? Thank you for mentioning it, because it's so important. So let's turn it off mm -hmm. every so often, scrape mm -hmm. down. Scrape down. Okay, good. So it's good to be a freak about this? It's totally, when it comes to okay. baking, yeah. when it comes to cooking, absolutely. I do. All so right. now I'm going in. We're whipping and again. I'm going to go straight up to fast, right? Yep. That's it. You're doing it. You could take this time and grease our baking dish. Okay, now I'm like, maybe I should just do this. Done. See, what we're going to do now is work the batter together by alternating dries and wet. Well, okay, so to do a little dry, a little wet. Yeah, maybe a third at a time. Okay, okay here we go. And then we're gonna do this a and little. Slow, nice and really slow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I don't want to bit it all in my face. That would be fun though. Now add a little. Add about a third. See how it just comes together? Now mm -hmm. stop, we'll go alternate oh, okay. back to. Yeah, the whole idea here is good incorporation mm -hmm. without over mixing. Okay. Uh, flour, when over mixed, will create gluten. Gluten will give you a very tight crumb, okay. and we don't want a tight crumb. Never so. want a tight crumb. Boo, boo tight crumbs. Pour a little this much. Yep, and like you can go rock. a little more now. So. Like that? Yep, okay. perfect. Okay. Should I be spatula -ing? Uh I think this is, is a good time good? to maybe stop and give it a scrape down. Yeah, I think so. I have a scrape here. It's not as bad yeah. though, because it's liquidy, it's You're but doing still. It. Okay. And I think we're at the point now that we're a third, you can just dump, dump it all in. in. Okay. Yeah, for sure. So we're at that point where the batter can handle kind of the rest of the ingredients. Okay. No problem. How do you know that? Uh, I'm looking at the mass it's become mm -hmm. and, 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 and it's stable. Mm -hmm. that, that's what I'm looking for. There you go. So How'd you get into cooking anyway? My family immigrated in the 60s. We had restaurants in China. So our grandparents had restaurants, parents had restaurants. There was really it's nowhere in, else for me to go. It's in your jeans. Yeah, it's, it's called not being good in school. No, did you grow up cooking? Yeah, so I worked in our grocery stores as a butcher, oh, as wow. a produce guy. Oh my gosh, that's how you know so much. So I did it all. Get in there and let's get all, okay. all kind of the... Just make sure I really yeah, got it mixed really in Really well. kind of a, like use the that blade and almost fold. There okay. you go. And now I'm just going to pour it in. Do you have that's any all. pouring techniques? Um, you know, not really. Okay. I, I, I don't. I just try to kind of cover and then tap, tap, tap. And if you're one of those people like chunky cornbread, mm -hmm. like jalapenos yeah. or corn, uh, this is kind of right before we won't go into the pan. You can, okay. you can incorporate all your, Besides what would you put in? I would, bacon? Yum. 
Oven wise, yes. 400 degrees, okay. 20 to 30 minutes. Okay. After 20, about 20 minutes, I would check with the little cake checker. Yeah. And we've done it. Shall I bake? Let's do it. Well, let's do it. Savannah, we've done so much. Oh my gosh. The slaw is ready to go. We got the cornbread. I think it's time to pull out like the brioche buns and start to build lunch. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go check on the pork. Okay. I'll bring it over. And then here we go. Wow! That looks awesome. It looks incredible. Oh man. Okay. Um, okay, so now we're gonna shred. Right? Shred, okay. Yeah, do you allow? Yeah, and I'm cool. putting on my plate. Just put it right on your sheet pan okay. there. All of them are, you take three, I'll take three. Whatever you wanna do. Whatever you wanna do. Oh geez, it's falling apart. Yeah, isn't that, well, first. Is that a good thing? Let's just enjoy how, how I mean, soft and tender it is. that is. Oh my gosh, it's like melting your mouth. Man. This is, what, this is what braising does. It okay. takes a tough piece of meat and turns it into something that feels and tastes really expensive. Okay. Uh, okay, lots of options here. The double fork thing. Just show me. So it's weird. literally just shredding. Okay. And oh uh, it's personal preference. I like kind of a, a chunkier pulled pork. Mm -hmm. Allie likes kind of a very fine pulled pork. Okay. So that's that's house rules, what okay. I call house rules. So what is Savannah's house, house rules? The house rules are what Allie says. Yeah, yeah, there Whatever you go. Whatever your wife says, I, I agree with. I just want to eat it right now. <laughs> Just oh, really? Savannah? Put a bib because on. I have your box of spoons. Oh. Oh. Okay, love it. All right, I get to taste it. Yay. You have to taste every layer because okay. it's going gonna, it's gonna to morph a little bit. Okay. Mm. Yes, yes. Really good. Mm -hmm. mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. I like it. So once it's shredded, mm -hmm. um, do you mind putting that barbecue sauce oh, yeah. into all this delicious kind of pan sauce that This we made? whole thing? The whole thing goes okay. in. Mm -hmm. I'm just stirring it up, right? You're stirring it up. And then we're gonna marry uh, the pork back in the sauce. So it gets almost like another base thing. I Great. can't believe I made this. What are you talking about? It looks so good. You killed. Okay. Savannah, pulled pork is ready. I'm gonna go get the cornbread. cornbread. All right, yeah. here we go. I'm gonna drink. <laughs> Ooh, that looks good. Save me some. Ooh, look at that. Gorgeous. That is pretty. I'm gonna put it on your trivet. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, of course. You can let this cool in the pan. You yeah. can eat it warm. You could flip it out and let it cool and get crispy edges, whatever okay. you want to do. But for today, I think we're just going to serve it as a side. So do you want to carefully take that butter knife and then cut it into squares? Yeah, should I? Yeah. Dial, yeah. tile slice dice. You go, girl. Yeah, and if you don't mind placing it in this uh, yeah. tin, and we've made honey butter. Mm. Which is basically room temperature butter. Yeah. Swirled honey in there and a little bit of flake sea salt I mean, on top. It sounds delicious. It's easy to make things fancy. Should we taste? Yeah, we're you always we have to taste every Yeah, layer. we don't need spoons for this one. No, here, I'll give you a little Thank bite. Thank you very much. Thank there you. you. Go. I'm mm -hmm. so good at that. Look at that. Look at the crumb. I mean, the crumb. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, the no crust. No gluten there. What? No, exactly. Yeah. What's gluten? Mm. There's no gluten. Mmm, it's like delicious. Mm. Shall we build? Yes. Okay, so here is the slaw that you made. Okay. Here is, this is a brioche bun. Yes. I kind of like to do a little bit of uh, sauce. You can go really big if you want. I'm gonna yeah. go manageable today. Me too. Okay. We have yeah. to eat on TV, so we don't wanna be like. <laughs> exactly. Okay, right. so you do that. And we'll just do some slaw on top. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then do you barbecue sauce the top layer uh, or no? Yeah, I totally would. Why I... not? Okay, yummy. Mm -hmm. Yummy, yummy. Making a sandwich, that is something I mm. know how to do. All right, Savannah, look These what look we good. did. That looks excellent. Load them up. Load them up. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm. uh, let's get to the table and, and, and kind of recap and eat lunch. Okay. All right, you got this. You want to, let me give you this. I'll grab this. Okay. Okay.
Oh, here we go. Come on. Go. Let's go. Pulled pork, slaw, cornbread. I mean, this is a perfect summer meal. It really is. Um, also, a lot of techniques to take with you. Yeah, for right? sure. Braising, I mean, that was incredible. Good. Okay, but let's eat. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Mm, I'm, I'm sorry with liquid food. I'm oh, yeah, sorry. exactly. I, I can relate. <sighs> you hit me with the piece of cornbread. I got you. Oh, I got to try some of that butter, you too. Absolutely. Do. This is my favorite. Really easy to kind of fancy mm -hmm. up. So good. Mm. This cornbread melts in your mouth. Mm. Oh, man, that, that when you cream that butter, man, it just really lightens up. Mm. Tell Allie I like her cocktail, too. Mm. I will. She's invited over. <laughs> this is delicious. Not good? Mm. Mm. I like these plates because they're, well, it's a messy kind of, it's like a trough. We need some of those wet towels. <laughs> I'm yeah. into that. Um, you know, it's very barbecue inspired, right? Yeah. And these are really inexpensive. Anyone can go to a restaurant supply store, uh, get what, what these are called like eighth sheet pans mm -hmm. or quarter sheet pans. Uh, you get some fancy decoration. And it's really just tiny little moments mm -hmm. that, that turn your dinner parties into something fancy. Mm -hmm. I can't believe how good that is. Mm. And you don't have to make a sandwich out of it. You could have just done some coleslaw, some chips, eat that, with a fork. That's the whole idea here is like mm -hmm. you have a little barbecue lunch without smoking things for 12 hours. Yeah. And the pork is savory, it's sweet, it's kind of luscious, the slaw with the acid. It's really a knockout combination. It's all working. Yum. Jet, thank you. Oh, my pleasure. You are a very patient teacher. No way, you're an it. outstanding cook. Mm. Thanks, Savannah. Cheers to us. Cheers to us. Over the years, I have been lucky enough to step into the Today Show kitchen and watch the best chefs from around the world teach us some incredible recipes. We had made that pesto, which was, oh, exactly. darn. Oh, Again, I almost got out of this one clean. <laughs> Turn it down. Oh my gosh, I had one job. None of which I mastered because I didn't know the first thing about how to cook. But those days are behind me for good and I'm finding some confidence in the kitchen. Now, my friend and all around superstar, Drew Barrymore and her chef BFF, Pilar Valdez, are gonna teach me a few weeknight favorites. We're gonna be making a watermelon salad with pistachio duca and shrimp scampi with bucatini, both from their cookbook, Rebel Homemaker. I am so excited to be cooking with these ladies today, so let's get started. Drew and Pilar, I need to know everything you know. Well, I know that I love you. I know that I love you. She really does, and we're so excited to be here. What's the plan, Pilar? So today's plan, we're gonna cut the watermelon, pickle the rind, prepare the duca, assemble the salad, cook the shrimp and pasta, make the pan sauce, plate, and serve. So first up yeah. for our watermelon salad, we're gonna break down the watermelons. I do love a good piercing, but now of course I'm stuck. Good. Wow, this Boom. Was... Savannah, you're doing great over there. Oh. It's Don't not a competition. Mad. Look at the difference between our two heads. <laughs> Look at your melons. Oh my gosh. And put the other half That's what I was aside. thinking. Why are we so too high? <laughs> When are we going to turn 14? I know. Okay. I see how this episode yes. is going to oh, go. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to lob off the top of it. We're going to just take off the dark green. Mine doesn't look anything like yours so does, So what Pilar. happened with yours, Drew, is that you didn't, um, you took off, you were overachieving. You took off the skin and the rind. Um, but our first step was just to do uh, the skin. So Savannah, you can continue on what you were doing and okay. now we're just taking off the rind. So exactly okay. the same kind of oh, okay. sawing and shaving motion downwards. Okay. And now are we keeping it off. this rind? We are, because that's what we're going to pickle, oh. actually. Mm -hmm. So you're going to take your watermelon, and you could cube this, but for this salad, mm -hmm. I actually like to cut it in irregular shapes. Okay. I feel good about this part. Yeah. That looks really good. Yeah, it does. So you're going to take your rind, rind basically, yes. and we're going to uh, dice it. Okay. You're going to flip it over so it has, yeah. Mm -hmm. Savannah, I can see the claw coming out, which is really good. I'm trying to learn. You want to yeah. tuck in those I like digits. to cut like this. I do too. <laughs> I'm like, I like to lop off. And this would Thickness. be a dicing, this not is a, a dice. mince. Nope. Because What's it's pretty What's the difference chunky. between dicing and mincing? Size. So the, absolutely. Size, <laughs> size matters. <laughs> I'm going to take a sip on that. What are we drinking? This is so good, by the it way. Is so what good. is it? It's a mocktail. It's a version of a Pimm's. It's based on a Pimm's cup, which is usually with gin. But this one is without. Oh, by the way, you would never know there was an alcohol in here. Oh my gosh. 
Drew what is loves, that? Very gingery, right? Yeah, so there's ginger beer and Drew, I know you love tea, so it's a combination of black and rooibos. Okay, that's a very unique flavor. Yep. <laughs> it's okay. so good. All right, so wait, what do right. we do now? Pickling anything is a flavor profile that I really love. Oh, me too. It is basically uh, equal parts water and apple cider okay. vinegar. So, Savannah, so three you're gonna add that. Three fourths cup water. Mm -hmm. Three fourths cup water, three fourths cup apple cider vinegar. Got it. Mm -hmm. And then one you can actually, um, and then one, mm -hmm. exactly. Ooh, I like the equal honey parts um, a lot. Yeah. It's just such an easy brain yeah. yes. ratio to remember. Yeah. yeah. Let's add in uh, the salt. What, are you sprinkling it on purpose? Uh -huh. or are you just trying? <laughs> no, I am because I don't like the dump. Is yeah. like then you have to work harder to get the solubility. If you shake it in, I feel like it's just a better. That's method. actually a very good pro tip. And right. then Drew, I'm gonna have you add in the fennel seed, which is on Half top. Half teaspoon. Half tea. teaspoon of fennel Please. seed. Honey, lovely. Sprinkle on in. <laughs> All right, you got crazy. It's how you Half usually teaspoon uh, coriander. There seed. you go. I'm and cooking. we're gonna do half a teaspoon of the cumin, oh. and then the last thing is half a teaspoon of the pink peppercorn. I love pink peppercorn, and I especially love it on green dishes. Yeah. Oh. Savannah, have you had pink peppercorn? No, I before? have not. So they're really, and you can actually take a little and take a little bite, and they're like very fruity and floral. Oh, yeah, but they're peppery. not super a little peppery, but not as pungent as a yeah. boss. It's gonna basically come up to a little bit of a simmer. Okay. And as long as the honey and the salt is completely dissolved, then you can pull it off. Drew, you're gonna carefully pour it into our one cup okay, of she water. Me too. Wow. She's like, you know that graceful <laughs> ginger side of yourself yes. that you don't have to try. <laughs> to just to pouring it. it right over. Yep. Then what happens? After 30 minutes, this is gonna be good to go. It's like so freshness. easy. Super easy. That's pickling. That's pickling. pickling. Boom. Boom. on to the pistachio dukkha component of our salad. Okay. Dukkha is an Egyptian condiment. It's usually a blend of like nuts and seeds and spices. You okay. should have some coriander, coriander. seed. Mm -hmm. Two, teaspoons Two teaspoons of coriander seed. Okay. Is this is this the cumin? That's cumin. Okay, mm -hmm. Ooh, absolutely. Going off. Oh. Going rogue. Okay, then it's she's one, rogue. So one quarter so cup sesame hold, seeds. Hold on, the sesame oh. seeds. Actually, Savannah, so you're gonna toast that. Can we first. turn it up? How high should it be? Um, let's do medium. Okay. Okay, and it's an empty plate. There's no oil or anything. No, absolutely okay. not. You want it in a dry skillet. They have skillet. oils on them, right? Yes, they do. So they're starting to release it, and you just have to shake it occasionally, not okay. constantly. Okay. Um and. You're gonna notice a change in color. They're gonna start to get a little darker, but really what you're looking for, Savannah, is the smell. Okay. It's gonna start to like release this like toasty smell. You're gonna smell the coriander. It's gonna mm -hmm. be very floral. It's starting. Can you smell yeah. it? Yeah. Let's give that a shake, actually. Oh, actually, yeah. Yeah. I can. Ooh, I like it. And yes. on the average, would you say about two minutes color? About two minutes. Okay. Yeah. Take it off because okay. I can see a okay. little bit of heat. Let's okay. turn oh, yeah. off the oh, pan. Geez. Okay. Yeah. Now what? Um, and you're gonna divide actually the spices between your and Drew's mortar and pestle. Habsy, habsy. What I like to do when I have spices is that instead of go in and like bash 
brush immediately. I kind of like to muddle, so a circular motion, and that helps it break down because okay. if you go in and you're bashing, it's yeah. gonna like firework spices okay, so everywhere. So I'm like just kind of stirring. So, yep. Can I start smashing yes, now? Yes, I think so. And you can apply a little more pressure to Savannah. Am I trying to get this to like a very fine grain? Pretty, pretty fine. So with the duka, we want a little bit of a mm. play on texture, so you'll have fully ground pieces and then some pieces that are just more broken up. So I'm happy mm -hmm. with where mine is at. How so do you like mine? Right. What do you think? Beautiful. Oh, Lovely. That's good. Good. Yeah. That's and nice. I think you, you guys can both pop uh, your spices, Savannah and Drew, into that bowl. Okay. Into one bowl. Into one okay. bowl. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yours is nicer. I and think. that's really nice because then you guys have a, a I, texture. Yeah. Yes. Play on I texture. went hard, you went soft. Um, well, so now we're going to toast the sesame seed. Okay, we need one quarter cup sesame seed. So mm -hmm. just let it go in there. Unlike, yeah, you can shake it a little, you can use the spatula. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sesame seeds, as soon as they start to change color, you want to take them off the heat. So keep stirring that, Savannah. They're going to go golden really, really quickly. I can okay. smell them, so I think we're almost there. Okay. And you definitely don't want to burn them. No. Burning bad. Yeah. Okay. Burning bad. <laughs> well, Savannah is... Uh, toasting the sesame seeds. Drew, I'm gonna have you add in um, our salt, our That's flaky a, sea salt. Is this a maldon? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. It's a One. tablespoon into that bowl where your spices are. I love a maldon. I do too. It's so different I than other salts. I put it on salts. top of my chocolate chip cookies. Yes. yes. Nice. Look at you. <laughs> I did not a little baking skill. And then Drew, you're gonna do, um, those are hemp hearts or hemp seeds, two tablespoons. And Savannah, yes, they're really great forms of protein and fiber and vitamins, actually. Okay. And again, it's like we're playing a lot with textures. Yeah. So that's a really lovely addition. Your favorite, Drew, half a teaspoon. I would say, Savannah, maybe 30 more seconds on that, and then we're going to be good. Mm -hmm. um, a pink peppercorn okay. and just a smidge, a smidge, smidge, smidge of black pepper. Okay. <sighs> smidge. That's more that, than that's a plenty. Smidge. That's definitely more than a smidge. Wow, you have a hot. <laughs> I love <laughs> spicy time. Everything okay. could be coated and rubbed in pepper. And All right, do you think we're good on these seeds? Let me see. I feel like they're mm. almost there, okay. right? They're almost turning golden. But <laughs> <laughs> like, we need music. <laughs> All right, okay. I think that looks really good, Savannah. Okay. So let's uh, turn off the heat. Dump them yeah. in. Dump it in. And now we have the pistachios. I can just kind of like Absolutely. do this like Savannah, Julia Child like stuff. That's great. You're kind of rocking back and forth. Am I making you proud, Pilar? You are making me so proud. This second. <laughs> I'm actually going to stop you guys right there because I really like the two textures that we're playing with. Okay. Savannah's on like a finer and then Drew's is on a rough. So we're, we've established this a is a really good combo. <laughs> we're going to scoop all those nuts into this bowl. Scooping the nuts. Yeah. Pretty colors, too. Really, really pretty, yeah. And Drew, you're gonna give it a good mix. No pistachio left behind. There. No pistachio mm -hmm. left behind, please. Okay, that looks amazing. Yeah, and I'm busting out something here that I was told. It's a gold box Savannah's tasting spoons. Do you have special spoons? They're just special, because you're supposed to taste your food. Did you know that? I didn't, and now I do. So just take a little Take a little and and then we can sort of play from there. So mm. it's going to be, it's going to have that floral from... Yes. I like it. I wouldn't yes. change one thing, would you? It's it has perfect. enough salt, enough pepper. It, it really, really does. does. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Success, ladies. The love story <laughs> continues. We made duka. We're going to assemble the salad, but when we're plating it, it's going to be a little bit of a friendly competition. Ooh. And then. <laughs> Let's go. You guys got this. All right, okay. so in your little jar um, is a simple lemon vinaigrette. Okay. It's just lemon, olive oil, salt, and pepper. Okay. And it's separated a little, so just give them a little shake. Mm -hmm. It emulsifies it, which is there you ever go, so Drew. important. If anyone's doing an oil and vinegar salad, emulsify it first, it'll taste 50 times better. Okay. Wrap in your knowledge. All right, so in your bowl, you have a little bit of arugula. So I like to coat a little bit of the bowl. I know, it sounds crazy, right, Savannah? But I'm not going to use all of that. No, no, you don't have to, and you dress the taste, but when you coat the side of the bowl, you're basically not dumping it on the leaves. And then now we can start building. Okay. So a little arugula on the plate. Remember, oh. you're making something beautiful. Okay. Okay. Oh, rule on the plate. This is where the competition comes. Yes. Okay, so and what's our next one? Your watermelon slices, you're gonna dip it in the duka. 
Oh, dip it in the duka. And however you want to <laughs> dip it is up to you, and you're going to lay it yeah, on you, the plate. Yeah, you duka you. you. <laughs> so there you go. So you're just dipping those watermelon slices. And oh, I like to leave a bit of it without the duka, just so that it has that freshness, and then you'll get the pop. Oh, so the some duka and some don't. <laughs> But I mean, I'm actually asking. I feel like they should be like late night comedy. I know. I know. Just <laughs> cheesy like Rodney Dangerfield. <laughs> By the way, uh, the best. Okay. Here, there's no rules. Okay. Don't forget to finish also with your pickled watermelon rind. You can scatter it around. How can I win? What if I make like a tower? I know. You can totally way, make I'm a tower. Thinking of a tower. A little like time. Jenga. Okay. And then you can finish with a little bit of Maldon salt also, okay. which just like brings all those flavors together. I learned from little that. salt bay maldon salt. Oh, I love it. I don't know. Shall we? Oh, uh, Vogue, <laughs> Vogue for the camera. Yes, let's, I think we know who's his best. It's yours. <laughs> this looks very pretty. Really? It, it really does. I like I, your little tower. I feel like they're both. They're both pretty. They, I also feel like these are three very extremely different, different approaches. <laughs> yeah. You went like just. Put it on the plate. No, actually, I feel like yours has like a, um, a, a, a Lines, strategic right? pattern. Yeah, no, it does. And yours is sort of abundant, <laughs> and mine is amount. I love it. All, All right, right, shall Cheers. we? Shall we walk? Yeah. Let, oh, Cheers, let's it, guys. Yeah. We're doing one of Drew's favorite recipes. Scampi. 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 Who's going to devein and have their way with those shrimp? Well, they actually are already peeled and deveined, although Drew is killer deveining them. <laughs> All right, but we've got the water boiling. We've got the water boiling. Did, did we salt it like the sea? I love that. Say it again, Savannah. I salt it like the sea. Thank you. Okay. So Drew, what I'm gonna have you do actually is season the shrimp. So that's actually baking soda. Mm -hmm. And so we're gonna do just a quarter teaspoon, Drew, and you're gonna sprinkle it all over the shrimp. And the reason why we do baking soda, mm -hmm. I love it, is that it basically helps no the shrimp brown and get this really beautiful color. Oh, okay. And then we're gonna do salt and pepper mm -hmm. on your shrimp. I feel like you should be doing this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Season it with salt and then we'll uh, give good. it a good toss. I love okay. a little flour, a Look little it, I egg wash. I'm there shimmying you go. my salt. No not dumping, dumping over here. <laughs> no, not anymore, I'll never dump a again. Little. So we're gonna let the shrimp that has salt and pepper and baking soda sit for about like five or 10 minutes. And meanwhile, we are going to attack our garlic. Okay. Um, so today we're gonna slice the garlic fine. We don't wanna crush it because that's just gonna burn in our sauce. Mm. So what I like to do is just take the tip off. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of 
brown this. And you're gonna spin it, we're gonna cut it lengthwise. Not okay. Fast. You have some olive oil. We're gonna do three tablespoons. Happy to eyeball it. There's also a measure if you'd like, but. Well, they, like, I've been encouraged to eyeball, I so I'm gonna try. Eyeball. I think this is one tablespoon. I think that's good. Two. Yeah. Three. Beautiful. Do you agree? Yeah. Kind of, sort of? That's really, really great. And then you're just gonna rock it. Our baby's all grossed <laughs> up. <laughs> She's eyeballing! Oh, no. yeah, I eyeballed. Okay. Okay. And what you're gonna do, Savannah, is add the garlic. Mm -hmm. Put it right in there? Yeah. You don't want too high of a heat yeah. and to end up like me who burns their garlic. And okay. Drew, you're gonna add the red pepper flakes. Okay. <clears throat> and having enough oil helps you not burn the garlic. Okay. Mm -hmm. How many? Half a teaspoon, so just that measure. And if you want things spicier, you can go more. You, you know, know she again. does. Miss Spicy she, she likes. It's gonna start to change color. It's gonna go kind of translucent, translucent. and sticky. I, I have feel it like in... you can start pulling. Okay, um, you do this. So we were just ooh, um, infusing the olive oil mm, basically with good. that garlic and pepper okay. uh, flavor. Okay. Okay. So what? Throw this in. You're gonna throw it in, and then you're gonna give it a good stir. And we're using bucatini, um, which is basically like a, a thicker spaghetti with a hole in it. Okay. Um, but you could use any sort of long shape of pasta, and you're gonna cook that pasta until just al dente okay. because we're gonna finish it off in the sauce. Okay. Um, do but sauce. you're gonna lay the shrimp down in a single single layer, okay. and you're not gonna stir it, you're gonna shake it, you know, lay occasionally, it lay it down, yeah. Actually, will you hold, Savannah? You don't think it's hot enough? Yeah, so. Stand back. How are you, what are you looking at to know if it's so hot enough? So you want a, a little bit of ripple, you do not want smoke. We're not okay. like, trying no. to. And no bubble. <laughs> All right, let me. Just... You want that sizzle and you're not getting it. Oh yeah, it. I'm definitely wanting, I can see it a little bit here. Let me, can I borrow that? There you go. Here you go. There oh. you go. There you go. Oh. So let's start. Yeah, interesting. I stepped away. <laughs> Everything started functioning. <laughs> Meanwhile, my arm is going to fall off. Um, holding these. Oh, uh, yeah. Shrimp. That, you know what? I hear what you're talking about yeah. now, Pilar. Yeah. There's a definite sizzle. That's sizzle. why she wanted to hear this. No wonder. Yeah. All right. People always talk about, talk about cooking, you know, like smell and what you can see. Mm. I'm always like, I'm like, I can hear my water boiling. I can hear it sizzling. Oh, like, I like that. She brought in the strongest sense of them all. <laughs> exactly. The color will start to tell you when pink. it's cooked. It starts to get pink. Its and tails are already pink. Yep. Do it's, I need to flip them over ever? Not yet. You know yet. what, let's, I think it's a little too early, but you, let's peek at one and basically the color will have changed and it's gonna have a little bit of like kind of, sp ooh, okay. That was so good to me. A little more. Okay. And you can give the pan a little bit of a light shake but we're not. You like, don't mess with them. We're not trying. Yeah. them. So Savannah, when you flip them, you're gonna kind of move them to a different. Okay. Uh, They're gonna go in different, different spots. Moving in different neighborhood. Yeah, because it does. You know, some stuff will have heat dip spots. Could I change. know. I'm gonna have you add two tablespoons of that butter. So that's one, one two, two. Beautiful. Just into that pan. Uh, Ooh, now lovely. we're talking. The reason why we put just the two pats of butter right now is that you're basically starting to build that flavor. All right. You touch it with your finger right now. You see Pretty how firm. firm it is? Yes. Is okay. that a good thing? That is a really good thing. Okay. So we're almost there. So we're just going to rescue the shrimp. Mm -hmm. Take them out? Take them out, leave the butter in and cook in. Okay. And oh, they're, I... they're basically like That's almost it. done. Mm -hmm. We're going to finish them off with the pasta and the sauce. Drew, will you actually, speaking of pasta, stir. I've forgotten. Um, please stir it. Test and it. then maybe just uh, try and no, very far. Nowhere All near. Right. All right. Hard as a rock. <laughs> Al dente. Stiff right. as a board. This is like, can I, pencils? Sure. Uh, that's great. So no, that's, oh yeah. So in this little carafe here, mm -hmm. we have a uh, white w wine. Wine, okay. Dump it in. Dump it in, and then you're gonna take your wooden Ooh. spoon. Deglaze? Deglaze. What is deglazing, Savannah? Scraping the nasty bits off the bottom. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. The, I know, the flavor bits. Yes, absolutely. I did learn a deglazing. I um, love that. All right, you're gonna do um, not the, all that butter, actually. You're gonna do four more tablespoons, basically. One, yeah. two. Oh, look yeah. at you eyeballing Three. it. Yes. That's impressive. Four. four. All right. And that goes into the pan. Look at Yeah. This is hey, right here, duty. this is graduate school. <laughs> We're gonna dump in the cooked garlic, all that oil, and mm. the chili. We're gonna let this go. I want you guys to taste it. 
where it is. There's Savannah's golden oh, the box. Golden spoon. That you so have. there's no lemon yet. It tastes lemony to me now. Really? Oh, from the white wine, right? Oh. And that's going to reduce in Oh my! What do you think? Oh, it's incredible! <laughs> I'm actually just going to come in. Mm -hmm. What's and this lemon juice? So it's two tablespoons of lemon. We're not going to do all of it because I want to do kind of to taste. Mm -hmm. So let's start there. Okay. I think. What do you think over there? Mm -hmm. that, that. No, not done. Still not done. Well, actually, I like Pilar to test this. Because happy to noodles keep cooking. Yeah, and, and we're gonna finish it off in the sauce as well. So this maybe might it's actually be almost pretty good. there. Mm -mm. Still one more minute. Yeah, yeah, almost there. Should I turn it down so more? Yeah, let's turn it's that really down. Really going crazy yeah. here. And how's that here sounding now, Pilar? Yeah. <laughs> now we got it. That's on. the sound I want. I like to pick herbs too for like yeah. salads, but oh. for something like this, I'm like, no, that's totally fine. Okay. So you want to get it again. What did like, you do? Did you cut off the stems? I put the stems underneath. So I cut oh. them, cut the stems. Mm -hmm. See, mm -hmm. by the way, I'm oh. grabbing this like before this? Yeah. I forget everybody and then just tuck them so you under see it. Oh. oh, she's saving her pasta water. <laughs> I like your today's show theme. Pasta water. Okay, and then I put the stems under. So, yeah. I yes. know it's uncomfortable, but yeah. just like you okay. can go slow and you're going to do a rough chop. Because it's ready. Okay. Drew reports that the pasta is ready. All right. Okay. And Savannah, you're going to start putting that pasta in. Mm -hmm. And it's Ooh. totally fine that it has the liquid because yeah, that's just going to make a, a, a nicer emulsified sauce. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Look how beautiful that sauce is. Oh my gosh, this is, looks right? incredible. And I think you do need a little bit more of pasta water, Drew. Would you oh, think? Just, aren't you just glad a you little. saved it, a Drew? A little bit, a touch. Give me a little splash. That's okay. great. Wow. Yeah. And is the shrimp just the very last thing I put on there? Yes. I like this big old skillet, yeah. too. Mm -hmm. It's fun. Makes me feel like a real chef. Um, Savannah, you're going to kill the heat. OK. Done. And then you're going to garnish with your chopped parsley. Right in the bowl, huh? Right in there. And I don't want to go crazy, right? Just a little like that? Just a, just a little for color, and then okay. you can give it a toss again. It's, with, uh, the shrimp oh gosh, is this looks so good. perfect. <laughs> like, wow. it's ridiculous. And Perfect. how are we gonna plate it? We got a bowl for you. Okay. Yeah, okay. This, part, this is gonna be a little tricky. Um, because this thing weighs six billion pounds. Oh, watch out! Watch out! Okay, look. I think we did pretty good. Cool. Yes. Oh, I think we did perfect. Look at it. Wow, and then you. By the way, bowl. I feel like you should Lion King that now. <laughs> the ball. Oh! <laughs> wow. And then you can serve it with a little bit more fresh parsley, chili okay. flake, little lemon. Garnish. Love it. Garnish it up. Just a little bit. We, yeah. we chopped those. Let's go. Yeah. Guys, shall we? Let's chow down. Ah! Let's do it. I mean, this is our garden party. It's so pretty. It is really chowy. Yes. Okay. Please. My first duku. I've never had a duku before. Duka. The duka. <laughs> exactly. It's so good. Mm. You really get those spices. You do. It's delish. 
in the back of the palate and through the nose. Mm. But mm. it's so cold and refreshing. Also, right? And then you have the pickle that comes through that is just like I a little floral. And Listen, Ooh. I love that pickle rind. Yeah. I never knew I could feel that way about a watermelon rind. I'm really excited that you're saying me that. Me too. To this is a whole new world for me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I want to show you, um, some people call it a nest. Um, I'm really going to focus on the pasta. If I catch a little shrimp in there, I catch a little shrimp in there. So be it. What are we doing? We're going to make a little round ball. Well, you're supposed to make a pasta nest, but this is not working. And then oh. my tongs also won't go all the way to the... God darn it. <laughs> <laughs> Here, you know what will really help? Let what? me try this again. Let me get it with a fork. Okay. Because that... Um, like a fork spill. I feel oh. like this is gonna, yeah. yeah. There you go. should work much nicer. Do you nest there me? you go. I wanna nest you. Okay. Oh, that's so pretty. And then you just kinda dip the ladle. There you go. Oh my gosh, fancy And then you pants. can unfork it. And then a little bit of shrimp. You're so classy. <laughs> Here. Thank there. you, yeah. Third All right, time I need it. Third, third time's a charm. I believe in you, Drew. Okay. So. Let's see. I oh, no, you're, you're nesting. Oh, there That's you your go. best nest yet. There you See? go. Third time's the charm. Gonna, oh, and that then, is beautiful. That's so pretty. Oh, there you go. I'm chowing down. I can't wait yes, anymore. Yes, yes. This is delicious. Mm -hmm. You guys cooked that shrimp, like, perfectly. The shrimp came out real good. Real right? money. Yeah. Perfect. I agree. Money shrimp. Proud of us. And that like little pop from the shrimp mm. too, that baking mm. soda like really affects the texture, so it feels like super fresh. It does. Ladies. I'm so proud of us. Can we raise a glass? To friendship. To friendship. To, to friendship. Cheers. Over the years, I have been lucky enough to step into the Today Show kitchen and watch the best chefs from around the world teach us some incredible recipes. And we had made that pesto, which was, oh, exactly. darn. Like, you know, I almost got out of this one clean. <laughs> Turn it down. Oh my God, I have one job. None of which I've mastered because, well, I actually don't know the first thing about how to cook. And unfortunately for today's culinary coach and my dear friend, Siri Daly, she's experienced my kitchen chaos up close a few too many times. The biggest step is slicing it. Oh boy, come on, oh my gosh. Well, I'm ready to put that behind me. Now, Siri's gonna teach me some kid-friendly favorites, including mac and cheese and chicken tenders with a few special ingredients. Plus, I'm gonna learn, finally, how to make a perfect grilled cheese. The real test will be to see if our kids love what we make, and they are a tough crowd. But I'm excited to give it a try, so let's get started. Hi, Siri. Well, hello. Thank you for having me. We meet again in the kitchen. I know. Although usually you're doing the cooking and I'm doing the staring. Not today. Or the my drinking. Friend, not today. Well, you know that my kids don't have the healthiest of eating habits. I really do want to learn some basic things so I could feed them a decent dinner, maybe sneak in some vegetables. We can do that. Our plan for today is, first, Savannah will learn how to make a perfect grilled cheese. Then we'll cook the noodles for the mac and cheese, make the cheese sauce, bread and bake the chicken tenders, prepare a special sauce, and serve. Every Saturday, okay. Charlie wants a grilled cheese for lunch. Oh, and easy. I try to do it, but I end up, try I put it on the griddle, I put butter, then I end up, it, the cheese doesn't melt, but the outside is burnt. Right. I end up putting it in the microwave. It's a disaster. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna start with our bread. Okay. I'm gonna use some classic whole wheat, but we have sourdough here, Italian. I've even done it with English muffins, which is mm. kind of fun. I love that. And cinnamon raisin bread, because I know Charlie has a hankering for that. <laughs> you choose what you would like. I'm gonna okay. go, like I said, with just the regular kind of whole wheat. I'm gonna try whole wheat too. We have salted butter here, just one side of the bread. Okay, okay? we'll see, I do both sides. This is the sides. side that's gonna go on the griddle, and okay. that will get it all nice and gooey and buttery and golden brown. You just basically wanna kinda smother it and make sure you get it all the way up to the edges so that not a single piece of bread is without. But now if I did wanna do your mayonnaise trick, I would do butter and then mayonnaise. Yeah, and, and oh. then maybe just do like a little less butter, a little okay. less mayonnaise so you're not you know, smothering it, but I have found it does tend to enhance the flavor a little bit, but hmm. okay. there's nothing wrong with salted butter. All and right. you always keep your butter out on the kitchen counter, which I, shocked me. I thought you had to keep it in the fridge. I keep salted butter out. Salted butter tends to last longer 
on the counter. My grandma did that, my mom did that. And then it's nice and soft, exactly. you're not like, you yep. know. Okay, I did mine. Okay. I beat you, did I do enough? Okay, now we're gonna use about two ounces of cheese, which is roughly like four slices. And this is a pretty gonna... thin slice, like yes. some of my so white American that... cheese is thick. Right, so if it's thicker, then maybe two slices. Okay. But, um, I'm gonna try four here, and again, okay, now, 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 what, we're gonna what? turn oh, shoot. this over, because we wanna do it, that's Ew. that's the side that's gonna go on the griddle, right? Okay. Okay. So, eh, already, already screwed right. up. It's all right, it's all right. This is pretty, like, forgiving is recipe. Is it okay that it's, like, hanging over the edges? I get kind of obsessy about that. You wanna get them just kind of right up to the edges, but okay. it's okay if it hangs off a little, because honestly, that's the best part. I don't know if your kids make you cut off the crust, um, but my kids do, and then, like, pro mom tip, you just eat it. <laughs> Exactly. So, and that's your lunch. <laughs> yeah, and that's your lunch. Um, Enjoy. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so now we're gonna put it on the griddle carefully because it's hot. Wait, what did we put on this? Nothing? No. Nope. No, because... No, no oil, no, no cooking the, spray? The butter is, is, is basically your cooking spray. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna not touch it for about two and a half minutes. You kinda wanna go slow and low, and then I'm gonna show you a little trick after that, oh, by the way, we have some. Oh, what is this? Some, some spiked lemonade, if you if you would like oh. to cheers. Now we're to getting our closer to cheeses. our reality. Yeah, exactly. Mm. We'll, have, we'll have regular lemonade for the children. Yes, but, um, there exactly. We go. Okay, so this is going on. Yes, we don't want to move it because that will disrupt the cooking process, and we're really trying to get the bread nice and. That's funny because I, what I'd be doing is pressing this down. Press, press, yeah. press, press. press. Another thing, yeah. make sure you use a plastic spatula oh. because anything metal will scrape your griddle oh, or even okay. your nonstick pan. That's key. Okay. Then, let me show you our little trick. Okay, you have one over here. This is called a burger dome. Okay, so after we flip this, we're gonna cover it with our burger dome for another about two minutes. Okay. And that's gonna ensure that the cheese melts and gets oh. nice and ooey gooey and the bread still crisps. Could I put just like a glass lid of a half or a pot? Not glass, I would use again like a metal bowl or a pot, you could use a pot. Okay. Yes. Whatever you use, if it doesn't have a handle like this, use pot holders to remove it. Why is everyone warning me all the time about the pans are hot? Well, you know, I know. Listen, I have I, I have burn marks from all my times in the kitchen, so you're not alone. Okay. Um, I know. Right, we're hot. gonna flip them now. So See, I find that you hard. You need to use yeah. your fingers. Oh, is that okay? Sure. Yeah, that's Ooh, that looks look. good. Look how pretty. Oh, wow. perfect. But now the now cheese is not melted. down a little bit. So that's why now we grab our burger domes. Mm -hmm. So our... right away goes the yep. burger dome. I'm going to get one of these. Right. That's it. I wonder where I've been going wrong. Maybe you're trying to do it too fast. I feel like a lot of people just want to crank up the heat. Yeah. And that will just burn your bread and your cheese won't melt enough. What if like, I wanted to add like turkey or ham yes. or something oh, like that? A, this is just like your basic grilled cheese. Now you could add tomatoes, bacon, ham, turkey, anything. When would um, I add it in this process? In the beginning, right? right oh, yeah. okay. When you put on the cheese, you would add whatever else you want. All right, I think we're ready. Okay. Let's see. Ooh, look at, oh, look at that no! meltiness on the side. Yours is meltier than mine, but it looks good. Well, sometimes it depends on the cheeses. Mm -hmm. I think that looks great. Okay. All right. Ooh, I mean, this truly yeah, does look, look great. Just mm -hmm. slice it. You know what my mom used to make? Do you do triangles or rectangles? I we like triangles, rectangles. rectangles, or strips. Um, my mom used to do fried bologna a lot. Ooh. I know, it's very 70s. Mm. Mm. It's so good, mm -hmm. though. So good. Oh, my gosh. I'm a culinary genius now. We did it. Grilled cheese. cheese. All right. I needed to know this. On to the next.
We're gonna make a baked mac and cheese with a special ingredient. There's going to be cauliflower blended into the sauce. I'm telling you, your kids will not know. Okay. <laughs> Sneaking in vegetables. Yep. Is the not name above of the it. Game. Not above it. So we have boiling water over here. Yeah. We want to always season our oh, water yes. before, so you can generously season All right, with I'm the salt. I'm trying to get better at being generous. Okay, because you're um, a very generous person. Yes, but not with salt, <laughs> and thank you. Thank you for the vote of confidence. I mean, like, I would normally have thought that's enough. More. Should we taste it? So the reason you want to salt it so generously, especially in this case, is the pasta's only cooking for six minutes, so it's not going to have a lot of time to absorb I think that. I need more. Let's just do more. I mean, you can... It should taste real salty. Yeah. Instead of using your finger, yeah. just like pour some in. Oh, that just seems so excessive. Oh, I can't. Okay. All How about right. that? Okay. Good, All good, right. good. Okay, pour in. This is a pound of elbow mac. A pound of elbow mac. So just take that wooden spoon and give it a stir a couple mm -hmm. times just to break up the pasta. You don't want it to stick together. Do I keep the heat on high? Uh-huh. Okay. You should be good. Okay. Now, for a nice little shortcut, mm -hmm. I have this cauliflower that you can steam in the microwave. That is cheating. It's not cheating. We are busy mothers. There is nothing wrong with it. <laughs> We're microwaving? We're microwaving it. Put it this side down so that the... Scandal! Microwave. Just do five. And that'll give us a good uh, timing on the pasta. I mean, if you want, you can always cut up your florets and steam it. Like, I've done that, obviously, but... You know what? I on know, a busy night? I know my way around a microwave. This is Monterey Jack, which mm -hmm. I'm going to take. That is cheddar. Okay. Eight ounces each. Okay. We are going to... I use the... Yeah, the I big like side. I like the big side. Yep. I'm good on the grating until we get to the very end. Right. That's when you kind of just want to, you know, scoot your hands back as much as you can. I'm not going to lie. My tricep hurts. I know. So then I, you don't have to go to the gym either. Oh, geez, this I, is like your fingers are getting awfully close. Just keep going with this. Put it down. Are you I'm scaring you? <laughs> yes. I'm scaring you a little bit? I'm scaring myself. Okay. See, like when I get to the very end, honestly, yeah. this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to break it up because, again, okay. like little pieces mm -hmm. will melt. Oh, see? Yeah. Okay. I don't know why. I don't know why people are nervous. <laughs> Does the recipe call for blood? <laughs> I can't tell. I think my arm's going to be sore tomorrow. Yeah. All right, well, now, there, what we're going to do okay, is yeah. we're going to reserve three-fourths cup of the cheese. Can okay. it live together? Yep. Okay. Okay, we're going to put our cheese on this same sheet okay. pan to just make some room. Mine can come over yes. here. Oh, there's our cauliflower. So the cauliflower's I'm going to let it sit for just a second because it's okay. hot. And why don't we drain the pasta? Okay. All right. Let me guess, hot okay. pot. Ooh, it's heavy one too. I know. So right into the okay. drainer. Just pour it all in. Yeah. Right? And then put some cold water, rinse the pasta because that's gonna stop the cooking process. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cold so water. So just cold water, it'll just stop the it? cooking. Yep. Okay, it's not gonna get too soggy? No. And then you can kind of just shake it, let it drain in the sink, and that's it. We'll leave it there while we make our sauce. So do you wanna go grab the cauliflower from yes. the microwave? Yes, I better just, bring it in case it's hot. Yeah, just Hold on to like the edges of the bag. Okay. Ah, just kidding. <laughs> Look, it says pick up here. Yeah, well, that's helpful. So convenient. That's friendly. Okay, now we are going to cut that open and we're gonna pour it right into the blender. So All right, that. so now we're going to add one and a half cup of milk. One we have whole milk here. You can okay. use 2%, but I wouldn't go any lower than that just because it's gonna add yeah. flavor. Right. And it's helpful if the milk is at room temperature, if Oh. It's not. You can always like microwave it for like 15 to 20 seconds. It'll just help when you make your roux that everything's kind of consistent. I fear kitchen machinery. Anything with blades is a little scary. Yeah. Does that seem good? That seems good. Okay, then what? Okay, so on. on. And then what? And we'll probably hit the puree button if your okay. blender has that. Wow. And we're going to let it go just for a little bit. I always feel I have to hold it. Okay. All right, that's looking pretty good. I think we can stop it and just... We want to blend it until it's really, really smooth and silky and creamy because any chunks might, you know, sound off the children <laughs> alarm. Alert, vegetable, <laughs> alert, vegetable. Okay, Ooh, that How looks milky. Look? That looks very I good, yeah. I think it does. Why don't you grab that butter All right. and we're just gonna butter our casserole dish. Just How am I doing here. Okay. We're gonna, I mean, you can like use I would your just hands, go, like, take but the stick I just like and to stick it around. Uh, yeah, you could do that. Or I, or you could just kind of like scoop it up with this and let's get the sides Your way seems what? classier. <laughs> I just don't like mess. I'm just you I know, don't so OCD. You really you are. Go. Is that good? Okay. Yeah. But that's a little more. Seem you like can do more. Yeah. yeah. Like I like to. Yeah, get I would in get there. a good goop. I usually just take the stick. Perfect. Am I getting the sides? There's nothing too? wrong with taking the stick. Yeah, sides okay. and and bottom. This is where my Type A personality yeah, really comes yeah. in. I'm like, I don't. Want, I want every side done just yep. right. I don't want to mess it up. You know, I want to get it in. 
I want to get it A in. plus on buttering the casserole dish. Okay. okay. That's over. Now we're going to measure out one more cup of milk. Okay. There you go. Got it. Three tablespoons of flour. You can measure out and put in that little bowl. Okay. This is mise, gonna be or mise en place. Absolutely. Wow. Or mise en place. <laughs> then we are going to start our roux. Um, I'll put the cheese over here just for okay. later. Um, okay. The first thing we're going to do is get four tablespoons of butter, mm -hmm. and you can kind of okay. eyeball that. I, you know. Well, I can't, but I know that a, one stick. It's about is a half, half of a stick. stick. Yeah. So it's like that. Perfect. And okay. Just throw that right in the pot. I enjoy this part. Yeah. I just like to see how the butter skates around. It, you know? Right? It's really pretty. It seems like and it's having it a good time. It smells good. Yeah. This is what cooking should be. <laughs> you can add the flour. We have to whisk constantly. That's why we love to have everything ready because this is kind of something you have to babysit. Yes. You don't really want to walk away at this point. Okay. Just make sure that you try to mm -hmm. avoid the clumps. Okay. Crop and then. Up. When add we the, add the milk, we're also going to do it sort of slowly. We don't okay. want to add it all at once. I like to dump it in, so don't do that. Because we want to activate the flour and the starch. Does that look frothy we, to you? It's looking good, yeah. See how it's starting to bubble a little? Yeah. I like to, I, this is awesome. I'm so impatient. I just am like, let's get in there. Perfect. Now you can add some more. Mm -hmm. Wow, this is coming together. Yeah. And then next, we're going to add our milky okay, cauliflower I, mixture. But don't I want to get this a little smoother mm -hmm. first? That's good. Woo! <laughs> God, this is worse. Not since my Jane Fonda aerobics routine <laughs> have I worked out this hard. Yeah, but you probably okay. did that this morning. Right? I know, I'm like, yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Add the cauliflower puree and stir to combine. Is this as little at a time Switch. thing? Like no, this? You, or can you, I just since dump you've it already on? added, the, yeah, you're good to go now. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And Wait, it's this start is, to thicken. This is so right? sneaky. You would so never sneaky. know this is cauliflower. Yep. And then we're gonna add our cheese. Bring to a simmer. Now is this a simmer? Yeah, because see of, the bubbles starting to yeah. form. Okay. Yeah. Whisking constantly. Cook for one to two minutes until thickened. Do you think that's thick enough? It's getting there. Another like way to tell is if like once you kind of lift it, you want to just see some of it some of the remains on the spoon. I mean, this whole constant stirring. Yeah. It's like it a is, baby. You always have to be watching five it. five minutes of, of, like, babysitting. Yeah. All well, right. This seems cooked. Yep. So now let's add our cheese. Okay. All right. I'm just going to dump it in. Okay. Yep. And then just continue to stir. I want to have a big splash. Okay. Perfect. Now I'm going to get my stirrer out. Yeah. Goodbye, whisk. Goodbye, whisk. You've done a good job, but we're moving on. Okay. Mm, this is my favorite part, Yeah, too. this looks pretty so yummy. cheesy. Season with salt oh, to taste, but and I'm not there ready for that. Here's yet. where we grab the nice. magic, magic spoon, spoon box. box. Do you want to taste it, or are you trusting me? I'm gonna trust you. I trust your palate. I think it's a little salt. Some salt. Go for it. Okay. Well, not a lot though. Okay. It's pretty tasty. There you go. I mean, there's salt in the cheese naturally, and so you know that's good. I mean, okay. I don't know. The salting thing is very um, perplexing to me. Now, I'm gonna grab. Like, I don't want to oversalt. The but pasta. I, don't I know. That's why you can always, you know, you can. Now what happens? Put some on. Now I'm gonna break this pasta up just a little bit so mm -hmm. that it doesn't clump together. Oh, you add the, the pasta yes. to here, but uh -huh. it says remove from the heat. So I think I need to okay, turn it off. Okay, you want to turn it off? Yep. Okay. And then it's off. I kind of declumped the pasta so oh, okay. we don't splatter ourselves. I mean, this is starting to look Stir real that good. Up. We're gonna I would eat it, it just like this. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it's gonna get so nice and baked and crispy on the top, mm -hmm. and because we're gonna add that cheese that we reserved. Mm -hmm. So I'm just basically trying to coat as much now. This is just about yep. stirring and coating. And then we can just pour it in because we can also kind of stir it up in here. Mm -hmm. oh, All right, I'm gonna transfer it. Are you ready? Yep. Do you feel ready. good about that decision? Ready. Oh, I didn't taste I will it again, have a but sip I'm just gonna while trust. you transfer. Okay. I kind of like this. I'm not doing any work. <laughs> You are. <laughs> Trying to explain this to me is work. Okay. Mm. Okay. Okay. You got Ready? it? Yeah. Yum. Ah, it looks so good. Okay. Now Yum. just sprinkle the top with this remaining mixture oh, with of the cheese. remaining cheese. Just okay. I'm gonna just eat some. Yeah. While you do that. I love that. And this cheese will get kind of brown probably, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So now we're gonna bake it in a 350 degree oven for about 45 minutes. Mm -hmm until it cooks all the way through, gets nice and hot and gooey. The sauce will thicken some more in the oven. Great. Perfect. Now, if I wanted to just stop it right here, cover it, and then bake it at a later yes, day, could I do, do that? that? You could absolutely do that. Okay. Put it in the fridge, even in the freezer if you wanted to, but in, in the fridge, just make sure, you know, you kind of let it sit at room temperature for a little bit before you put it in the oven, and it's good to go. Should I put it in? Yeah. 
Top oven. Okay. I'm so proud. Me too. <laughs> Remember that time? <laughs> okay. Good job. All right. High five. Yay! and cheese is in the oven. Mm. Now we are going to make some Parmesan crusted chicken fingers, Yum. chicken tenders. My kids live on chicken fingers. Right? And so first we're going to set up a dredging station. So first why don't you grab the flour mm -hmm. and we're going to add three fourths cup to this pie pan. Mm -hmm. And I like to use pie pans mm -hmm. because it's just the perfect shallow dish yeah. with, you know, the ridged That's sides. a good idea. Yeah. Now we're going to use three egg whites. Have you ever separated I have. I okay. think I do know how to do it. Three do egg whites. Do you want me to do one with you? Or well, do you let wanna... me try okay, and you great. can grate me. And then, yeah, you can put the... Um, egg white. Egg white make. will go in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well. Egg yolk. Go. Oh, shoot. Okay. You got any extra eggs? <laughs> Just... And it's I know. okay. So it's this not isn't pretty. Like, this it's isn't... not pretty, but I can do it. Yeah. That's perfect. But I'm going to give you a little tip. Instead of cracking the egg on a side, crack it on the countertop. Oh, really? It'll it'll give you a more even shell. Sometimes when you crack it, there you go. Oh. When you crack it on the. Oh my gosh, that's shoot, so much right? better. There you go. Wow, game change. Uh huh. Um, okay, so now the panko, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we're gonna use about a Is cup that the of panko. Yep, that's okay. the panko. You can use breadcrumbs too. I just like panko because I feel What's like the it difference? Gets, gets a little crispier. This is a Japanese breadcrumb. Oh, okay. Um, breadcrumbs tend to just be more fine. One cup. And okay. I like the crisp that panko offers. Okay, good yeah, to know. So I, one, I actually always wondered what the heck yeah. the difference was. Okay. One and cup just of sprinkling that. it around. Okay. And then a third cup of Parmesan. Okay. Right there. Mm -hmm. And then you can use that whisk to kind of. Perfect. Okay. And just kind of combine that. So now our dredging station mm -hmm. is all set. Okay. Um, chicken. We have five or yeah, five chicken tenders here, which you can find at the store. Mm -hmm. If you don't find chicken tenders, you can always buy breasts and kind of just cut them into strips. Okay. So now, what am I doing? Just laying just it on the pan. Just lay it on here because it's just gonna be a vessel for us to season the chicken. So I'm not. This isn't the pan I'm gonna no. cook it. No. Okay. So I don't need to grease nope. it or whatever. Okay. It. So it could be a plate, could be anything. Yeah. And then um, season generously, the word of the day. <laughs> Both sides? Both sides. So you can okay. use those tongs to flip it over. Because this is really the only point other than like the Parmesan mm -hmm. that we're seasoning. That That's great. That looks great. I'm getting Perfect. more yes. like yes. liberal with I like my it. Okay. That's salt. Good? Awesome. Yep. And then turn it. Okay. Perfect. And I guess you could okay. do pepper if your kids liked it, but 
It's always a little yeah. it's questionable. Exactly. What they do. Is that good? That's great. Okay. That's perfect. All right. Okay. Now we are going to spray our sheet over there with some baking spray. Okay. Because then we're going to put it right on to our Are we baking these? Dish. Yes, we're going to bake them. Oh, we're not frying? We're not frying. Oh, that's I mean, healthier, you, right? You know, yeah. Okay. So first we're going to coat in the flour. You can just do one at a time. So just dropping mm -hmm. it. How much? Just make sure just it gets a little just bit? coated on both sides. Like that's good? Yeah, that's okay. great. What about the sides? And no? then, okay, then to the egg whites. And I'm just coating both sides uh -huh. too? Okay. Mm -hmm. Perfect. You can kind of like let some of that drip off because mm -hmm. sometimes it can get a little goopy. Perfect. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then into the panko. Okay. Get that nice and coated. Yeah, this is the good stuff, yes. right? Yes, and you can, can yeah, then. perfect. Okay, that's good? Yeah. Okay. And just set it there. Set it down. And okay. Then and then here we go. Repeat. Ooh, it's the last one. There we go. This lucky guy is going to get all this good stuff. Okay. All right. Into the bottom oven. All right. 425 convection oven. How long? 450. 450, like I said. <laughs> About 10 minutes. Smell the chicken, it's almost done. Yeah. We're gonna make a really quick special sauce. You can call it Savannah's special sauce. <laughs> so, this is a cup of mayonnaise. Okay. We're gonna add um, a fourth cup of ketchup. Okay. Any old ketchup? Yep. And okay. you can, like, you know, taste this if you like less ketchup, if you like more, mm -hmm. if you don't want ketchup. It's just kind of a fun. It's, it, it just looks like the sauces you get at like fast food restaurants. Through. This is uh, a, tablespoon? a tablespoon of mustard. You can use yellow, Dijon. I feel like the Dijon can be kind of spicy for kids. So yeah. I stick with yellow. Kids like sauce. They like to dip. Yes. And just mix Dipping it up. Dipping is key. Yep. With the whisk or this little spatula? You can use that. Whatever. Yeah. Until okay. it kind of gets that like pinky special. Oh my gosh. It is the stuff that's yeah. on your fast uh -huh. food burger. Savannah's um, secret Savannah sauce. Savannah's secret sauce. <laughs> okay. So why don't you spoon that mm -hmm, into, mm -hmm. yep, there you go. Okay. And then, oh, perfect. That's good. Okay. Perfect. All right, now, why don't you go check on the mac and cheese? Okay. Because it's probably done, mm -hmm. but what I like to do sometimes at the very end yeah. is just broil it. It's done. Okay, well, let's, let's, let me see. Let's just broil it for like okay. a couple minutes. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Because it'll just get nice and caramelized on the top. You just have to How make long? sure you watch your broiler because every oven's different. It could be like 30 seconds or it could be two minutes. What am so, I looking for? Just to get that kind of brown caramelization. But okay. while, while, why don't you grab the chicken because I think that that's done. Here, okay. Janita. Oh, you got it. Okay. When you tell me to watch the oven, I am ready to do it. <laughs> I'm ready to stare obsessively. Stand this there. looks good. Perfect. I can't believe we made this. You made this, Savannah. Correction. It looks yummy. Right, here, put it right oh, here, okay. and then you can just take the tongs and okay. throw them on there, and then we'll check on our mac and cheese. It should be done. Ooh, nice and crispy. Perfect. Mm -hmm. and they look really good. They actually do. Okay, now we can grab the mac and cheese. Okay. Ooh, yeah. Does okay. it look good? Mm-hmm. Okay. Ooh, look, I have that little golden top. Perfect. Yeah, just gets it nice and... I love the crusty edges. A little broil. Okay. All right, you grab no, that. I still haven't learned this technique. I will well. grab that. That was pretty good. Okay. I'll grab this. And we can eat. Yum!
Okay, we Yum. did this. We did it. Let's eat like toddlers. Okay. <laughs> this actually looks very good to me. I'm excited. Okay. So be careful. Can That's I serve, hot. Serve you up some. Yes, please. Look at how. Oh, do you see? It's good. And look at that. It sounds all nice and mm -hmm. crusty. I'm gonna see if I can taste a okay, cauliflower. Yep, flour. that's the real test. Well, the real test will will come. Will come. Let's see. Okay, I'm just gonna use my hands. Take some chicken. Put some mm -hmm. Siri Savannah special sauce. Yep. No, this is all yours now. You get to take credit for that sauce. <laughs> okay. Smells good. Bon appetit. Cheers. Bon appetit. Cheers. Okay. Here's the test. All right. I'm going for the cauliflower. Me too. First. I just want to see. So hot. Hot and delicious. It's really good. It's so good. You can't tell. You cannot tell. Not one bit. Mm -mm. I'm just okay. going to get into this chicken. Should I dip Even it the way my kids would? No, yeah. Let's go classic. Whatever. You're right. You're right. All right. Mmm. It's good. So good. There is it no tastes right. good. There's no right or mm. wrong when it comes to kid food. You are actually a delicious chef. So thank you for doing this silly kid food with me. But this is what I actually need to know. Mm -hmm. It's not silly. We have picky eaters combined. Yes. And so this is what we have to do. I mean, we have to have fun, interesting meals for them. It's good, and now I don't have to feel so guilty. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a triumph. There's only one thing to do now. You know what we have to do. Put it to the test. Put it to the test with the kids. Right. An I think excuse we'll... to get together. Exactly. <laughs> Let's do Let's it. Let's do it. Good luck. <laughs> to you too. Over the years, I have been lucky enough to step into the Today Show kitchen and watch the best chefs from around the world teach us some incredible recipes. We had made that pesto, which was, oh, exactly. darn. Oh, Again, I almost got out of this one clean. Cool. Turn it down. <laughs> oh my God. I had one job. None of which I've mastered because, well, I didn't know the first thing about how to cook. But those days are behind me for good, and I'm starting to find a little confidence in the kitchen. Now, culinary superstar Bobby Flay sharing his love of seafood from coast to coast. Today, we're going to be making crab cakes with an orange chive tartar sauce, and then try a West Coast-inspired crispy fried fish taco with a mango black bean salsa. I love tacos. I have a lot to learn about seafood, and I cannot wait to give this a shot. So let's get started. Bobby Flay. Bobby Flay. It's really Bobby Flay? It's really Bobby Flay. I mean, we have a long history together. Yes, we do. We've, we, we've made lots of food on the Today Show together. We have, and you've even been called in to try to teach me to cook a long time ago. Yes, and we're, we're back. We're back. <laughs> okay, guess what? It didn't stick, but now it is. I'm learning a few things. So I've been brought in to teach you, um, you know, a couple of things. Seafood, but also frying seafood. Okay, so what, what, what's our plan today? So the, so the plan today is, first we're going to shape the crab cakes make the tartar sauce, fry the crab cakes, make the mango black bean salsa, prepare the batter and fry the fish, plate and serve. We're gonna start by cutting a shallot. My instinct would be to cut off these edges. Yes, exactly, cut okay. off the edges. And then exactly. I know, I've learned that you should, when you have a round thing, you need to give yourself a flat edge. Yeah, so cut it in half. We're gonna make cuts in, in two different directions. First, oh. we're gonna go like this. Are we mincing? We're gonna, yeah, we're gonna make them very fine. Okay because this is actually going to be in the crab cake and we're not going to take it out. So we want it oh, to be good um, little easy bite to, size. Exactly right. The one thing I always tell people when, they're, when, they're, when they have a knife in their hand, don't daydream. Just think about exactly what you're doing at the very moment. Why exactly. would I daydream when being with you is a dream? Oh my goodness. Okay. Ding. Crab cake is over. Okay, I know. <laughs> I would, so I did that and now I may just chop chop. Nope, nope. Oh. And then you're gonna and then you're gonna take your, your hand. Oh and, right. Do you remember this? This kind of this thing, right? Hold yeah, it together. Exactly. I hate this. You hate <laughs> I hit too hard. And I have to hold it like this because otherwise it's splayed yes, out. That's ex that's okay. Exactly. And you and that and that's how you're gonna create a like a the fine little, dice. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. This is so unnatural. It is. You look, look, look how beautiful. Seat. It's gorgeous. Cute. Now, so if, if you know, a couple of months ago, if somebody handed you a shallot, do you think you could get it diced like no, that? No, definitely yeah, not. Yeah, exactly. So we're gonna put our shallots in here. Okay. So neutral oil, like canola or something, or vegetable? Canola oil, vegetable oil. You know okay. what I've been using a lot of avocado oil. With. Whose big bit is this? I think that's mine. It's definitely yours, Bobby. I'll it's take not credit mine. for it. Okay. Okay. There's two different um, ways to sauté. Uh, so, like in this case, we're sautéing the shallots. Yeah. With color, it's sautéing, and sweating it is cooking it without 
color. Okay. So what we, what we want to do is sweat this. Okay. So we're, we're, we're softening the shallots. Mm -hmm. We're bringing out all the natural flavors. You can smell how delicious it that is. It smells so good. Because. Dumb question alert. How do I know it's soft if I can't touch it? It's too hot. Well, you're, you're feeling it with your, yeah. um, you, can also, you can also taste it. Oh yeah, they're big on tasting. <laughs> they're big. It really opens up the pores. It still tastes hard to me. Okay, so then keep sauteing that. Okay. And they're starting to get a little color, so let's be careful. Okay. All right, I think that's fine. Okay, cool. I'm turning it off. Great. All right, so we're going to put this into our bowl. Oh, we forgot to have a toast. Oh my goodness. Bobby! We're drinking already. I know, that's how we do on this show. Ginger beer margaritas. Okay, mmm. Mmm. Whoo! Got a little kick to it. Yes, I like it. Does. it. Yes, I it like does. It. All right, now that we're liquored up, what do okay. we do next? You, how are you with zesting? Well, I mean, I think, I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> okay, just be careful. You don't want to like zest your fingers. This is an ongoing thing. I don't know if I'm right or left. Can I can I can I show you can please, I show you something? Would you okay, please? yes, okay. So you can do this one of two ways. You can actually do it like this. Oh, I've never seen that. And what happens is the zester then captures the zest there, and you can go just go oh, like that. Oh, I like that. that. You like that? Yeah. Okay, let me try that. Try that. Well, just be careful with it. They are sharp. <laughs> this is painful for you, isn't it? No, it's not at all. How much? Can I be done That's zesting? Enough. That's okay. enough. Well, now we, we need lemon, lemon too. Okay. Yeah. Can I be done zesting? <laughs> oh I've God. had enough of zesting. Zesting. <laughs> Death by zesting. Has the, the zester ever killed anyone? Okay. I don't know. All right, that's enough lemon. Okay, good. <laughs> I can't watch it anymore. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? Avoid all recipes with zesting. There will be no zesting. Who okay. needs zest? No. Okay. Now, um, we're going to take all this mayonnaise. Okay. And the mayonnaise obviously is going to give it some richness. Mm -hmm. Every like mayonnaise always tastes good, and yeah. also it's going to help uh, bind the uh, the crab cake itself. Okay. We're going to take one tablespoon, which is that measure yes. of of horseradish. Okay. Horseradish has a good zesty flavor to it. It does. Make sure sinuses open up. Exactly it does. I love horseradish. Me too. Uh, How much of that? The one tablespoon of uh, whole grain mustard. Okay. And the thing I like about whole grain mustard is obviously it's going to have that little mustard bite. Yes. And um, <laughs> I just. I, you know what I love about you? This is like the measuring is a guy, which honestly, I, I actually like that because we're not baking, so it doesn't have to be well, exact. That's funny because that's one of the hardest things for me to get used to is that it doesn't have to be all perfect. Especially when you're not baking. Yeah. Okay. okay and half then, tablespoon of whatever this is. Uh, what it's is actually this? Half, half tablespoon of Calabria chilies. They're hot. Mm. Yes. Toss all this crab in here. Oh, okay. Exciting. Okay. Now, where did you get this at the store? This is uh, Maryland Jumbo Lump Crab Meat. Mm -hmm. It's already cooked and it's already clean. Okay. It's, it's not cheap, but it's it's a great product. Yeah. We don't want to mix it yet okay. because we want the crab to stay, you know, in, in pretty big pieces. Okay. You know, you paid money for that texture. Yeah. We don't want to destroy it. Okay. Right. How are you with seasoning? I think one of the things that separates a home cook from a professional cook is how aggressive they season. Okay. And, I, and I'm talking about just salt and pepper. Okay. Okay. So this is kosher salt, which is what I always use. Mm -hmm. And when you pick up kosher salt in your fingers, you mm -hmm. can feel it. Yeah. And when I season with kosher salt, I crush it in my fingers and then I just go like this. Okay. Should and I add more? Add some more. Exactly. Ooh, and more then, or no? And then pepper. pepper. Okay. And like. How's that? More. Oh. Now we're going to take two tablespoons of Wonder Flour. Now what is Wonder Flour? What one, is so it's one draw. Oh, it's one not wonder, wonder. Wonder. Flour. I wonder what wonder yeah. is. There you go, wonder flower. Jump it in. Yes. So wonder flower is kind of sprinkle it around. Wonder flower is um, it's already steamed and cooked, so it's oh. going to dissolve a lot easier than say all-purpose flour, which is still raw. Oh, okay. Okay. And this is what's going to help bind our crab cakes. Now we're gonna we're gonna you can you can start to fold it in, mm -hmm. and I want you to fold as opposed to stirring. All right. I remember folding from baking. Exactly. See, this is starting to look really good. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things about these crab cakes, Savannah, is that we walk a tightrope in terms of whether or not they're going to hold together. And what we're doing is we're giving up the idea of adding lots of breadcrumbs and lots of filler mm -hmm. and keeping it about the crab. But at the same time, we want it to stay together. So we're not using those crutches. We're not using the crutches. So we want flavor. So this is where um, we're gonna get we're gonna have to get our hands dirty. How do you feel about that? I, I feel good if I'm wearing these gloves. Oh my goodness! Bugs it's not me, very so. glamorous, but I'm gonna go with okay, it. Okay, no, I I know. Okay, so I'm just making a little ball. So yeah, so you, so you make a ball like, like this. A round ball. Okay. To I start. It would be flat. Almost like a meatball, but then what I do is I I make it into almost like a burger. Oh. Okay. 
How's that look? Should I make it a little flatter like yeah, yours? Yeah, like that. See if you can make it like that, yeah. Well, it's kind of like that. Okay, let's see if we can tell who's this who's. Okay, that's definitely the professional. Yes, we can. Yes, <laughs> yes, we most certainly can. When did you start cooking? Like, how did you learn? I started cooking when I was 17 years old. Huh? I dropped out of high school. Wow. And I went to work in a restaurant because I needed a job. And I've been doing the same thing every day. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> it's 10 years later. <laughs> wow. It's been a decade. You look so young. <laughs> Thanks. Do okay. these cook or chill or what? They're gonna ch <laughs> they're gonna chill. Okay. So and, and chilling them is actually one of the things that's gonna help hold them together. Okay. Okay. So you want to put them in the refrigerator? I will. They look so good. Beautiful. All right, tartar sauce time. Let's All right, do so, it. so chives are in the onion family. Mm -hmm. um, I love chives, and I like to I like to cut them, like I like to cut the edge off. What edge? Like I just I like to cut the edge off like yeah, this. Yeah, I don't like those friends. And then okay. and then start here. Okay. So then you have a nice 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 even edge. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then again, just kind of that rocking method. Mm -hmm. That's what I gotta work. I'm trying just to hide my fingers like you. Talk. Very very as fine as you can get them. Okay. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're doing a great job. Okay. Don't daydream. I know. Trust. That's really good. Thank you. And also incredibly consistent. Oh, good. I'm so delighted. I mean, look at that. Okay. That's really, really good. I love it. And do we have enough? Um, yeah. Okay. Between the two of us, I think okay. we have plenty. All right. Just throw it all in? Yeah, toss okay. it in there. So sure. now we're going to stir everything okay. together. So we're going to start with some orange zest okay. now that you're a professional exactly. zester. Exactly. Uh, we have some capers that are chopped up. Mm, okay. Okay. Good, nice, salty flavor. It seems chunky and, for a sauce. But it's a, it's a it's a tartar sauce, okay. and, and and it's it has texture, which is great. So these are the um, cornichon or oh. gherkins, as you like to call them. Gherkins. They're, they're pickles. They're oh. baby baby pickles. I love a baby yeah. pickle. Chef's chef tax. Orange oh, juice. Orange, orange juice, really? Orange juice, yeah. Okay. And then salt and pepper, always. Oh, okay. Sprinkle, sprinkle technique. Crush. Crush and sprinkle. Two tablespoons of that vinegar. Mm. Just do it by eye. Okay. I can't do it by do eye. It. Do it by. You do can you do promise? it. I promise. I, I'm right. I'm standing right here. Okay. Perfect. That's one. A little more. That's two. Good. Really? God, <laughs> I feel like a pro. Killing the game. So you're just gonna mix this all together mm -hmm. um, until it's well incorporated, mm -hmm. and then. You know, we'll, we'll let this sit for like a half an hour. We have a lot of flavors in there. They, we just want all the flavors to kind of melt together. It looks Here, good. You, you have to taste this. Okay. Oh, yeah. You make sure you're happy with Especially all the seasoning, seasoning. etc. Okay. Oh, that's good. Ooh, that little, that thing. Yes, exactly. That, that's, the, that's the pickling. Uh, that, that's the, um, as you like to call them, the gherkins or the cornichon. <laughs> we can leave it at room temperature. Okay. Um, you just put a little in the, ser in the serving bowl mm -hmm. so it looks nice and pretty. Yeah. And we can save the rest for later. Okay. If there's any leftover. Well, that's great. All right, perfect. Let's make some crab cakes. Okay, should I go get them? Please do. This is so fun. You're doing so much of the work. <laughs> we're gonna take some Wondra flour. Wondra, okay? how much Wondra? Let's make sure we have I wonder how much Wondra. <laughs> okay. Salt and pepper. Okay. And, and this, this is something that you should know in general. When you're doing a dredging station, like yeah. if you're making cutlets of chicken where it's like yeah. flour, egg, 
breadcrumbs, mm -hmm. you season every layer. Okay. Otherwise, it's going to be bland. Okay. Exactly. Interesting. Yeah, stir it around. So it's just seasoned. Mm -hmm. And then, so basically what we're going to do is now this is, you have to be very gentle here, Svenna. We have the crab cakes. They're nice and chill. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to kind of go like this. Very just top and bottom or should I get the sides? You can get the sides too. Okay. Okay. You're going to drop it right in there? We're going to drop it right in. Let okay. me show you. So basically, a good, a good way to do that is like this. Okay, and they're gonna fry. The so that's you wanna why do the I same thing. Back. So okay, like, gentle, yeah, gentle. very gentle. Treat them with kid gloves, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Okay, you does know? that seem good? Yep. Put okay. it on there and just very carefully. Don't drop it. Don't be mad. Beautiful. What we're trying to accomplish is creating a nice crust on the outside on all parts of the crab cake. Okay. And it's gonna take about three minutes on each side. Okay, I was gonna say, I'm gonna have to flip these over. because. Yeah, at some yes. point. Okay. We're gonna flip this in a few seconds. Okay. Now, again, you wanna be careful here. And what I what I like to do is kind of like turn it away from me. Oh. So if it splatters, it goes that way as opposed to this way. Okay. See, look, nice and crusty. Looks nice. And we didn't it didn't fall apart. No. Or yeah. If this falls apart, I'm gonna die in No, shape. it's not gonna fall apart. Just be a good crab cake. All right. Hey! I know, but you did it right at you. Oh. Just be careful. Go, go, you know. Oh, okay, okay. All right, so move move this one over here. Okay. Okay. Okay, now this guy. So this guy, here's what you can do. You can just use this guy mm -hmm. as the as the uh, as the as the background. Okay. Right, exactly. But, use him to flip it over. Okay. And then well, oh, come on now. Now they're friends. They All don't right. want to get apart. Okay, now flip it this way. Flip it. This way. Yeah. But I find that to be harder. Okay. Oh no, it's falling apart. I knew it was too good to be true. Oh, Bobby, we got a loose crab piece. No, it's okay. What do we do? There's one little crab piece. All Don't right. worry about it. You know what? Whew. Here's the thing. They'll know they're homemade. Yes. That, and that's really good. That's a really good thing. That's true. All right, so basically now we're going to start to take these out and we're going to put them on a paper towel yeah. so that they just drain a little bit. Drain it. Okay. Should I go for it? Yeah, go for it. Can't lose another one. Gorgeous. This is Bobby's. The good one. The good one. Put this on your plate. Can I use my finger? Yeah. And then this is the number two. Yep. That. Yeah, hold on. Okay. Nice job. Mm -hmm. This is the problem child. Okay, this guy wants to fall apart. Don't do it. Don't fall apart. It looks apart. great. It does. It looks it's great. It's gonna taste good. All right. A little salt and pepper on top mm -hmm. while it's still while it's still warm. I'm doing your is that too much? I'm no, doing your that's fine. We have crab cakes. Um, and then we're going to put them on here. Okay. Come on, bring them on over. Oh, don't break, don't break, don't break. Nice. Gosh, these look really good. Don't they? Yeah. Nice and crusty. Oh, and hot. Look at that. Okay. I'm going to put Gorgeous. this on Gorgeous. Yes, put it on the table. Are you so proud of us? I am very proud of you.
up, we're gonna fry some fish. But before we get into that, let's make our black bean mango salsa. Prioritizing what you do first, second, third, etc. Yeah. in any meal is really important. But we, we know that we can make the black bean salsa, the black bean and mango salsa ahead of time, let it sit, have it done, because the fish, when we cook it, then we wanna eat. We're gonna start by uh, dicing an, uh, an onion. We need half of a red onion. Okay. That's gonna be good enough for government work. Here we go. Exactly. I'm not gonna beat Bobby Flay today. No, you're not, but these look really good. Well, let's do the mango next. Okay. Mango yeah. is a very tricky fruit. It's a very tricky fruit. Um, first of all, when you pick a mango, you want it to be ripe. You want it to have some give as you kind of okay. push your thumb into yeah. it. Making these stand up is really important. And then you're gonna go up down both sides of the mango so that you get these two lobes. One like oh. this. And then one like this. No pit, no pit, no pit. Yeah, the okay. pit is in there. Okay, and then you, I'm trying and then, to avoid and, the pit. And then of course you can you can go around the sides to get these little pieces as well. You don't want to lose. I can't see where that pit And then basically this is like the pits in here, but I just eat this. Oh, mm. I like that. So good, so ripe. Mm -hmm. We're gonna make like a, almost like diamonds in the, in, the, in the mango. You don't want to mm -hmm. cut all the way through, just to the skin. Mm -hmm. Then you're gonna turn it and you're gonna go this way. Oh, I'm making like a little, I actually cut an avocado sometimes like this. Yes, exactly right. You can scoop the, you can scoop the mango mm -hmm. right with a spoon. Oh. Look okay. at that. Okay. There's a handful of different ways to cut a mango. I think this is the, I think this is the prettiest way and, and the easiest way. That's now some cool. of my pieces are kind of big. And Don't funky. worry about it. Okay. We're making tacos. Everything's gonna be fine. Exactly. I use canned black beans all the time. They're always cooked perfectly. Good. Strain them out, throw them in there. Good, because I didn't want to make beans. Okay. okay. I didn't want to make beans, so you're not gonna make beans. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we pour have... the margarita. No, I'm no, no. Okay. <laughs> well, Might close. Good. Yeah. Close. The lime juice. Lime juice. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now, now a couple of more things we're gonna mm -hmm. put in here. Some honey. Okay. How much? Um, I don't know. Open it up. Let's do this. Oh boy. Let's do this. Uh, pour some in. Gonna, pour some in. Yeah. What does that even mean? That's good, right? A little more. Really? Yeah. Okay. That's good. Whatever oh. you say, honey. I've actually I forgot one more thing. Oh. We, have, we have we have to put the, the jalapeno in. Oh, there. okay. We have to we have to dice that. Okay. Okay. Let's cut the stem off. Cut it in half lengthwise. Okay. okay. You're gonna take the inside pith mm -hmm. and the uh, and the seeds out. So now we just have the the flesh of the pepper. Mm -hmm. And then you're gonna turn it upside down. Yeah. Flatten it. Push it down, and then yeah. you're gonna dice it. Put some olive oil in there. How much? It says one quarter cup. Fire away. Can I measure Go. it? No. I want okay. you in the bowl. Okay, okay, I'm in I the bowl. I want you in the bowl. I'm present. Exactly. Because that seems this, like, okay, that seems like a, is that enough? A little more, because you feel like you're doing it, okay? Yeah. That's good. good? Okay. And then and then you're gonna season this with salt and pepper, because we season everything with salt and pepper. Yes. Look at okay. you. Look at I'm doing your technique. A little more? A little, little something salty, and then, and then that's good. Okay. And then some black pepper. Okay. And stir. Stir this up. Okay. This is looking good. All right. Some of my big mango chunks are a little aggressive, but it's good. It actually looks very good. I'm gonna add some cilantro. How do okay. you feel about cilantro? Um, I like the flavor. I've never chopped it or anything. Okay, so let's do this. Okay. Make a little room on your board. Mm -hmm. You're going to take the flowers off the stems. Okay. Like all these leaves, you mean? The leaves, yeah. That's the part of cilantro that you want to eat. Okay, that's good. Okay. So then just kind of make it into a pile like mm -hmm. this, and you're going to coarsely chop it. So you put your hand on top of the knife and you just kind of rock back and forth, right? And, you, and then you kind of go this back and forth that's this fun. way. This makes me feel like I'm on a cooking and just, show. And, and, get, and put it back into a pile. Mm -hmm. Okay, oh, it sounds good. That's coarsely chopped herbs. Okay. As opposed to finely chopped, okay. nice and coarse. Throw them in there, okay. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna we're gonna stir this up. Stir it. You okay. taste it and tell me what you think. Okay. Mmm, I like it. Do you think a it needs anything? Underneath. I okay. think it needs a little more salt. Okay. And this is the way you cook. If you're not chewing, mm -hmm. you're not cooking. Mm -hmm. It's also beautiful. It is. It's gorgeous. Gorgeous. Okay. Next step. Next step. Let's let's fry some fish. Let's do it. And what I like to do before I deep fry, what? take a big deep swig. Okay, let's do Should it. Should we do it? Yes, absolutely. It's the deep cheers. fry swig. Okay, so instead of the deep <coughs> beer batter. I love that you drink first and then cheers. Well, <laughs> I didn't know we were cheersing. You, you were prepping, okay. Like a bad okay. form. So let's, let's, get, let's start okay. with rice flour, okay? okay. How much? So we're gonna do equal parts. We'll do one cup, two equal parts of water, and you're going to okay. whisk. Lee. What we're trying to achieve here mm -hmm. is a very light batter mm -hmm. so that it has some crispiness, but you can 
definitely see and taste the fish. Okay. Okay, that's the key. Now you told me that fish, that fried doesn't have to be bad for you. But I mean, isn't frying like just terrible? Well, well, f frying can be bad for you if, if, like for instance, the the oil is is not is not hot enough mm -hmm. and it and it seeps in throughout all the protein. Oh. But if it's just crisping the outside of it and repelling it, then mm -hmm. it's totally fine. Okay. Now how's that? Okay. So that's fine. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little bit of of this of this rice flour mm -hmm. and we're gonna use this as a dredge, kind oh. of like. You know, like, we, yeah. we don't even have to measure it, all right? We, just, we can just, and then we're gonna season every, every layer, as mm -hmm. we said, remember? Look at my heavy hands. I know, are you seasoning more now than ever before? Yeah, especially with your eyes on me. I, yeah. I don't wanna get in trouble. <laughs> How's that? It's good. Uh, season now the should fish I, too. do I need to whisk? Oh my season gosh, the fish. Really? Yes. We don't, want, we don't want bland foods, man. No, I do not, but geez, that's a lot. I would, be, I would just be afraid it'd that's be good. like over salted. That's good, no, nope, Pepper too? Yep. Okay. That's a, that's a thick, dense piece of fish. We, okay. want, it, we want it to taste it. But I didn't through. have to do both sides. That's fine. Side. That's okay. totally fine. So, okay. So we're going to dredge this, mm -hmm. meaning we're going to take the fish, make sure, and, and hit it on all sides mm -hmm. on the flour, on, in the flour first. Flour first and then. Oh, yes, I would have done because, this, then this. No, because this is actually going to hold on to this. Okay. All right. So should I do these tongs or just do my you, Use your hand. Okay. All right. So roll dredging. It yeah. Roll it around. All sides kind of yep. deal? Okay. Tongue. And then, and then pat it so that you get the excess off. Mm -hmm. That's enough. Like that? Yep. And in here? Yep. I want to be careful. Okay. Let's just do this. Yeah, with me. Okay. okay. 365 degrees. Okay, there's Let's, that thermometer. Now you can, okay. do the, you can do the rest okay, of them. Okay, let me do And this is going to be a very, very light batter. Nice and crispy. I hope you don't like that shirt because I'm okay. getting flour all over. No problem. Okay. Well, send me your bill. I'm just gonna keep drinking. <laughs> That's what I recommend. I love coming to your kitchen. There's always alcohol. In it. <laughs> I know. Savannah's syrupy kitchen. You're doing great. I love the technique. Okay. And also, like, you're 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 moving really well in the kitchen. All right. So we're gonna let this cook for about five minutes. Okay. Total. And then we have a wire rack there so that the oil drips through to the bottom. Okay. Just be very gentle and also be very careful. It's very hot oil. You can't even see anything. I don't even know if I'm getting one. Okay, wait. wait. Yeah, see? Okay. See, it's like a stealth-like batter. Just yes. touch that. Okay. Nice and crispy. Right. Let's did let's I get enough on there? You did great. Let's get the fish out of the pot. Okay. <laughs> it's been five minutes. Does this Beautiful. look right to you? Yep, put it on the uh, tray. Looks great. Look okay. at that. That's gorgeous. It Ooh, I didn't stick the landing. Down. So great. Okay. It so looks light nice. and crispy. It really does. Here are your two favorite friends. Oh, geez. Here we go. A okay. little salt and pepper. Okay. Just on top while it's still hot and the oil's still warm. Oh my gosh, I really overdid that one. Well, that's a salt. It's okay. And also, when you season, you want to season from up here. Why? Because otherwise, you're going to have clumps of salt. Well, that's what I did. Too get. close. You're right. Exactly. Well, that's what happened. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Nice. Can we Done. eat? Yes, let's eat. You get okay. the fish, I'll get the salsa. All right. Let's do it. But it's not, it's not just your TV. I actually learned something today. I know, today. I know. How are you gonna do 
create your fish taco. Okay, so we have some tortillas here. Yeah. Nice and warm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that looks like a nice tortilla. Um, I'm going to teach you a secret. Don't okay. take the one on the top. Take the one in the middle because oh. it's more pliable. Oh, how interesting. You see it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I take a little avocado relish. Mm -hmm. And then you can take a piece of fish. Mm -hmm. the fish on top. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. A little mango salsa. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh my gosh, this looks so good. All right? Yeah. And then what I like to do is just kind of squeeze a lime on top. Oh, yeah. That's good. And then you can take a little cilantro, mm -hmm. maybe just a sprig, and put it on top. You can just pick up your tortilla mm. and you have a fish taco. Oh my gosh, this is a big bite. Turn the camera away. It's well, not you, pretty. you taste, taste the fish. You know, it's okay. like. Okay. Mm. Oh my god. <laughs> it's so good. Don't look at me. It's but it, so good. It's light and crispy. Mm. You did a great job cooking the fish. And this is obviously great for, you know, to make a taco. But also, like, you can also do, like, serve it as, you know, fish and chips. Oh, my kids would love that with this ketchup. Yeah. Just remember this. Flavor is very important, but contrast of texture is, is just as important okay. in, in eating and cooking. All right, I gotta try this uh, crab cake mm. now. Mm. That is so good. It tastes like crab. It tastes like crab. And that's the cake. I gotta say, that's the best crab cake I ever had. Best crab cake you ever made. Yeah, that's true. Oh. Only crab cake I ever made, but yum, that is delish. Mm. And I love this chunky tartar sauce. This is delicious. I am so proud of myself. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. Thank Cheers. Thank you. You've been on a long journey with me, Bobby. Savannah, invite me back anytime. I'm here to teach. I Over the years, I have been lucky enough to step into the Today Show kitchen and watch the best chefs from around the world teach us some incredible recipes. We had made that pesto, which was, oh, exactly. darn. Oh, you know, I almost got that, out of this one clean. Cool. Turn it down. <laughs> oh, my God. I had one job. None of which I've mastered because, well, I actually don't know the first thing about how to cook. But I'm putting those days behind me for good. And I'm starting to find 